Call the meeting to order. Please, everyone, check in. I believe everyone is here. We've got two that are not present in their seats that I know of. Okay, well, if we could all stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Supervisor Powers. Recording in progress. Are you on now? Can you hear me? No, mine is. Is it? I'll take I'll take Ponzers. I'll try it. Oh, turn it off. No. <laughs> uh, I ask your indulgence. I've been asked to remember three members of our county family whom we lost in the past month. The invocation will follow. We lost retired supervisor Bill Wingren from District 18. We lost Brenda Keller, wife of retired supervisor Robert Keller from District 32, and Lynn Hintz, mother of supervisor John Hintz. Almighty God, we remember before you this day your faithful servants, William, Brenda, and Lynn, and we pray that having opened to them the gates of larger life, you'll receive them more and more into your joyful service, that with all who have faithfully served you in the past, they may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. And now the invocation. Great Creator, in whose name the founders of this country won liberty for themselves and for us, and lit the torch of freedom for nations then unborn, grant we ask you that, that we and all the people of this land may have grace to maintain these liberties in righteousness and peace, we also ask your protection of all highway workers and thank you for the continued recovery of Cameron Soley, um, our county um, highway worker recently struck and injured while on duty. Remind all drivers to slow down in construction areas. Amen. Supervisor Albrick. We have a minute agenda. Is there a second? second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. As opposed say nay. <laughs> Carried. This time will be allowed for any person present to express their opinions on any resolution or ordinance that uh, appears on the agenda, as well as any matter other than which this body has jurisdiction. If there's anyone in the back that wishes to speak, please go up to the microphones and state your name and address and what you'd like to address the board about. There you go. <laughs> All right, good evening. Wrong one. Uh, my name is Trisha Rathermel. I'm the president and CEO of Greater Oshkosh Economic Development Corporation, located at 100 North Main here in Oshkosh. Um, I am wanting, I know a few of you in the crowd, and hopefully get to know a lot more of you as well, or at least some of my staff members. But tonight, you are going to be considering an action regarding Whitman Regional Airport. And I just wanted to speak a little bit to the economic impact of that project and other projects that we're doing within Whitman Regional Airport. So. The T hangar project falls in line with the recent project, which was our general aviation terminal. Um, the general aviation terminal served our transient guests coming in and out of the airport, whereas this T hangar project will serve our airport based aircraft. Uh, you know, as we continue to invest in the aviation industry, it reflects well back on what is synonymous with Oshkosh and our aviation history. So obviously this, this project can bring in, uh, immediate results within our um, increased airport usage and also our in, increased fuel usage, which has direct impacts to the airport. However, beyond that, it also 
continues to invest in the aviation industry, something that we are focusing on greatly. Our organization has been working directly with the city of Oshkosh as well as the Whitman Regional Airport team on promoting new businesses to attract them to come into our airport park, our business park within the airport, something that was established a while ago and, and we've continued to invest in that area. Years ago, a DOD grant and study identified additive manufacturing, especially in the aviation industry, as a key industry for us to, to invest in to create resilience within our, in our community, within our region. And finally, more recently, Fox Valley Tech and the Department of Workforce Development applied for grants specifically for Winnebago County to help increase our upskilling within our aviation uh, training and skill set. So why is this all important? Why does this relate to tea hangers? <laughs> um, in the past 20 years, economic development has really acknowledged a fourth wave of economic development, which is placemaking private private and public partnerships that make it a place where people want to live. We are no longer in the situation where jobs, or people go to jobs, jobs now come to people. And as we invest in our aviation industry and we do these other pieces, people who are training or working in the aviation industry are aviation enthusiasts and want amenities like hangar space and other amenities within our airport. So this project not only serves kind of our current wait list, what we're seeing, but also potential new workforce that we'd be recruiting to our area. So I just wanted to share some of that impact that it would have beyond just what you see on your papers today. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to speak to the board tonight? Anyone else wishing to speak to the board tonight? Anyone else? Not seeing anyone else wishing to speak to the board tonight. We'll call that part closed. Communication, petitions, memorials, accounts, and commendations. Thank you, Chairman Egan. Uh, so tonight we have a couple of resolutions, uh, actually the same resolution from two townships, the towns of Wolf River and Winchester both submitted to you uh, resolutions to support NACO's position on defining the waters of the United States WOTUS and regulations with agricultural considerations. So these uh, will be referred to the legislative committee. Um, you also have a couple, we put, Julie passed out and put on your desk a copy of a letter one of the scholarship recipients had sent um, from Max Seth, uh, what is it? Stern, I'm sorry, Max Stern. Anyway, it's a lovely letter, kind of long, so I didn't know if you wanted me to read it. We thought we'd just provide everybody with a copy, but he's extremely humbled to have been selected for a scholarship and very uh, happy that uh, you, you've recognized him. And, and uh, so anyway, he wanted to express that in his letter. We also got a thank you card from Haley Fox. Uh, she sent us a note that said she would like to sincerely thank uh, the board for awarding her the scholarship. She has a passion for public policy, and the scholarship will help me pursue that passion as she's going to school for political science. Uh, political science. All right. And I believe the only other thing we have is the commendation for Daniel Averkamp. Here it is. Commendation for Dan Averkamp. Dan Averkamp began his career with Winnebago County as a janitor watchman in 1989. He was promoted to a class two operator in 1990, then to bridge maintenance assistant in 1996. In 1997, he was promoted to paving foreman, a job he really enjoyed. He held that position until 2018 when he accepted the position of highway maintenance superintendent, which he held until his retirement. Dan had a good sense of humor and provided comedy relief on what could be an otherwise stressful job. With 32 years of county service, Dan retired from the highway department on June 2nd, 2022. He plans to enjoy his retirement years, spending time with family and working in his shop. Please join me in expressing our best wishes as he enjoys his retirement. That's it. Thank you. Next is the uh, boards and commissions. Any reports on boards and commissions? Supervisor Stafford. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I have uh, just a couple uh, couple updates. The first is uh, 
we had a resolution um, come to uh, Judiciary and Public Safety uh, from the May session uh, regarding uh, committees and the ad hoc uh, committee uh, structure. Uh, we discussed that at JPS and uh, the committee decided that uh, the, the, the most prudent way to proceed is to establish a, a workshop um, for JPS uh, to um, uh, look at this and further investigate um, this, uh, this option. Um, that has to yet be uh, scheduled. Um, it'll be an open workshop and uh, we are looking to get representatives from WCA and uh, other um, uh, subject matter experts to kind of help us uh, discern the information that was presented uh, to, to us in that initial resolution. Um, when we have more information, I will be um, sharing that information. Thank you. The, uh, the next is, and we'll be talking about this uh, in a resolution uh, this evening, but just a reminder that uh, the 4th of July, we will be, uh, Sheriff Motts will be, um, uh, reciting the Declaration of Independence. Um, and I believe that's at 8 or 8, 8 a.m. Um, July 4th at the steps of the County Clerk House. So again, um, just as FYI for everyone. Uh, and that's it, thank you. Thank you. Supervisor Norton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, a couple things. First off, um, I'd like to invite and remind again people of the annual Winnebago County uh, wheelchair wash, which will be this Saturday, June 25th, from 10 a.m. to noon at 629 North Main Street at JNR Auto. We're going to have Frankie Joe, who's going to be a musician, who's going to be singing. Also, Larry Longstocker, former supervisor, will be cooking up um, good eats. Um, the second thing I wanted to um, alert people about, and you got an email about, is uh, tomorrow the Parks Committee will be going on our annual uh, Parks Tour. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, anyone who can come, uh, meet at the Coggan Building at 8.30 a.m. I do want to warn, we only have one van from Parkview, so um, it only seats 10 people, and I have to guarantee that the five supervisors will get in. So if you want to come, you're all invited. Um, if you want to take along and follow behind, you can. Um, or there is a schedule of what we're going to see on the tour on the county calendar um, webpage. And if you want to meet us at, whether it's the Wacaw Dam or the um, Grundman boat launching or that, you can come there. So again, I do want to remind people, invite anyone to come to the parks tour tomorrow at 8.30 a.m., meeting at the Coggan Building. Thank you. Thank you. Supervisor Powers. I was gonna announce the wheelchair wash, I'm done. Is there anyone else? It's not showing up here, so I gotta watch for hands here. Supervisor Defferding. Supervisor Defferding. Supervisor Defferding. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The uh, uh, National Counties Association Judicial Public Safety Committee had their uh, monthly call, and uh, um, they have a call uh, um, pretty much every month. And um, at the last uh, f uh, phone call, they had uh, uh, Dr. Elizabeth Falcon, who serves as the CEO and president of Falcon Correctional and Community Services, um, and is a corporate partner of NACO. Uh, and she, um, she discussed uh, um, how elevating uh, mental health services for those uh, that are incarcerated actually helps reduce recidivism. And, uh, um, and following up was also a professor from uh, George Mason University to discuss how um, on policies that uh, focus on criminogenic factors such as, um, such as uh, having a job and transportation and having a roof over your head actually does um, have a better impact on reducing uh, violent crime and reducing recidivism uh, rather than other policies. Um, and uh, um, this is kind of a segue into uh, uh, this upcoming July uh, 20th to 24th, the National Counties Association will be having their annual conference, and uh, both me and Supervisor Norton will be attending uh, that conference, and that's gonna be in Denver, um, in Adams County. Thank you. Supervisor Sestero. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, last week, I participated in a 40-hour training for a mediation training through the courthouse. Um, I found it to be very useful. Um, attorney and mediator Mike Root uh, was my uh, teacher. There were about 16 of us from all parts of Wisconsin. Um, I will need to volunteer five hours a month for uh, a year um, at the, in either the Winnebago County or Fond du Lac County um, courthouses for um, participating in mediation, um, but I did finish that. Um, I was pretty excited to hear how Winnebago County has uh, been at the forefront of mediation services, which really does alleviate the, the, court, the courtrooms and the judges. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? I see no one else here at this time. So we'll close, pardon? Is there anyone on Zoom? No one on Zoom? No one's on Zoom. Okay. So the next thing is the approval of the May 3rd, 2022 special order session and May 17th, 2022 regular session board proceedings. Second. Motion was made and seconded. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Not hearing any. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed say nay. It is carried. County Executive's report. Thank you, Chairman Nagin. Hello. Tonight I want to address how the county administration works from a table of organization standpoint. As the executive form of government, I'm responsible for the direct oversight in the operations of our appointed department heads. My direct reports are human resources, finance, corporation council, facilities, information systems, solid waste, airport, highway, parks, land and water, planning and zoning, child support, veteran services, park view, human services, public health, emergency management, my executive assistant, and soon to be the medical examiner as we transition from coroner at the end of this year. That's 18, soon to be 19 direct reports. Furthermore, I'm responsible for offering support and coordination to the Sheriff's Department, the District's Attorney's Office, the Treasurer, Register of Deeds, Clerk of Courts, as well as the County Clerk. This is not an efficient model for any organization, especially an organization that operates a budget just shy of $190 million with over 1,100 employees. My responsibility is to hold our department heads accountable to the policy directions you set. This is an enormous task for a single person to manage, and failure to do so creates silos and departments that run themselves. This is not the first time a county executive Winnebago has brought forward this inefficiency. In 1986, the Winnebago County commissioned Arthur Young to review the operational efficiency of our county. This tracked the statutory changes to the forms of the government at that time. That report recommended greater department head alignment and to include functional area, area administrators. It listed four main groups, county administrative, health and human service, safety, law enforcement, and legal, as well as public works, facilities, and property management. It suggested multiple division heads that would represent these groups in a typical organization, as well as an administrative manager to help coordinate efforts. Several, several other counties have since followed similar organizational cart, charts that Arthur Young proposed in Winnebago County over 30 years ago. I once asked Alan Beekle, the late county executive from Fond du Lac County, an executive that had over 20 years experience in that position, if he could do his job without his director administration, and his simple answer to me was no. I have brought forth a resolution today to address some of the inefficiencies in our administration. Later on, you'll be voting on a resolution that could add some needed support to the administration of our county. I want to be very clear. I am not asking for you to create a position to do my job. I'm asking that you make a decision to help coordinate our efforts better. This is purely about operations and capacity. 
Director of administrations are extremely common in other executive forms of government, especially executive styles. Brown County, Fond du Lac, Washington, Waukesha, Kenosha, Dane, and Milwaukee all have director of administrations. Racine has multiple division administrators. This is not a new idea. Adding this department will not take any budget or oversight authority away from this board. None. Adding this department will not change our style of government. This would simply add capacity to our administrative functions to increase oversight of operations and to help find the inefficiencies and spur innovation. It would be crucial in helping us implement the strategic plan I hope we set and will be developing this year. It would be crucial to, for this department, I'm sorry, furthermore, this change would not remove the ability for this board to accept or deny the appointment of finance, human services, or IS director. This board will also be responsible for approving or denying the appointment of the director of administration. Again, this is simply adding capacity to a very lean organization for operational purposes. This ask is not for me. This is for the benefit of our county as a whole. This is to enhance collaboration and innovation in our county. This is to ensure more and correct information coming to this county board. This is to keep our county operating smoothly no matter who is elected as the executive, well beyond me and well beyond all of you. This is to offer more support and information to this board as needed. This is for our citizens. This is not about politics or personalities or power. We have some very large challenges on our horizon. I'm asking you to please consider the operational needs to, that we need to meet this challenge. We commissioned a report that determined this model was inefficient 35 years ago. We have grown in every conceivable metric since then, yet our function of administration and oversight of the operations remains the same. Change is necessary. Change is hard. And I'm asking you, the County Board of Supervisors, to have some trust in your executive and grant me this request. Thank you. Is there any questions on that before he goes on to his appointments and that? Because just, I want to just tell you to enlighten you, once the county executive steps away from the lectern and that and goes back and sits down, we're not supposed to be asking him questions. This is where he is. Same way in the budget. I'm just letting everyone know that's his budget and that. She agreed with me. Yep. Thank you. Supervisor Albrecht. County clerk, the treasurer, so you're, they're all accountable to you? I thought they, were, they weren't accountable to the, only to the elected. They, they are not um, at all, uh, but I do help them uh, facilitate some of the things, um, lateral transfer policies for sheriff's deputies, for, for instance, um, trying to get Sue some, some help when, with, with ballots when we have paper issues. Um, or uh, currently, uh, it just sounded yeah. like you were her boss, and that's oh no, happened. not at all. Thank you, Supervisor Ellenberg. Thank you, Chairman. Um, just a quick question. So this position would be a neutral position. I like the idea of um, you know when you're not here, the next one, and so forth. It's nice to the thought of the consistency of of how that would go, um, and then, but. As I read this, it would be, for example, uh, instead of, it's kind of like an umbrella, right? So you have all these underneath and they would just, it would just be a somewhat of an oversight, but the power would remain, if I'm not mistaken, in each of the individual places, but it would just be an oversight just to make it more efficient in a yeah. neutral way kind of thing. Correct. Uh, just the oversight to make sure that our HR and our finance, when we're doing these things, that it makes sense. Um, currently, we have a payroll uh, that's, that's ran by one person. 
Um, and we have a, a program that works really well for finance, but it doesn't work well for payroll, so we have to balance that out. Um, could you rephrase the first part of your question? I'm trying to remember the first part that you said. As far as consistency, no oh, matter who's here? consistency, yeah. So it would be um, consistent. That's When I was reading this, I thought, oh, that makes more sense the way you just explained it, where you know, if you're not here, the next um, county, because I'm assuming you're not going to be here for you right. know, 30, 40 years, maybe. No, I don't I know. Not. I don't know what your plans yeah. are. But um, I like the idea of the consistency. I, I hadn't thought about that when I read this. So I thank you for pointing that out, too, with um, someone in there. Because I think we've talked about that on the board in the past when all these new supervisors came on that you need to have um, someone that has knowledge. So that's that makes more sense to me for that. Yeah, so. I'd, I'd love to address that. I think that's a, the perfect thing. This is not a decision maker. Mm -hmm. um, this is somebody who, who helps to implement the policies the board sets. It's, it's to help for the things that maybe the elected official doesn't have the technical expertise. Right. I mean, when Andy Phillips came here and gave everybody a presentation that says that board members, all you have to be um, is over 18, live there and not a felon. I have mm -hmm. the same things. And that's great. I mean, that's why, you know, we have people uh, without uh, college degrees that serve on this board and do a fine job offering their opinion. Um, and as far as the consistency, I, I can't imagine uh, where Fond du Lac would have been when, when Al passed away. Um, I know their director of administration helped things go um, until they had a new uh, person appointed and now, now elected. So it really does help with that, uh, that consistency. And when somebody does get elected, to this position, say a pizza chef, they have somebody there uh, with the technical expertise to help guide them um, so they don't step in the mud and, and to tell them to slow down and take your time. Um, I could have used that when I first got here. Um, but absolutely, it's that, that consistency, that professionalness uh, above it um, that kind of oversees everything and, and helps the transitions. Can I ask one more question? Or? Yes, ma'am. Um, the other thing I was thinking of too when I was reading this is when I was on the school board um, we have a district administrator also and um, she was extremely efficient I, I, I think I was surprised when we didn't have one here to begin with because I thought oh so if somebody gets reelected each time a new person how is the consistency that was the big thing but then I was thinking um, so you have finance over here, and then you have human, maybe they're going for the same grant. How would they know right now? How does that work? I don't even know. You know, if they're, if they're applying for the same grant, we're using multiple resources for that one thing. You know, I, I, I don't know how that works now because I'm trying to stay in my lane as much as I can as a supervisor, but I was just curious. Uh, I wanna, that's a good point. Right now, uh, we, need, we need a system. We're trying to do that. We never know when grants are coming from and where they're coming from. We have departments that apply for grants and we don't find out about it until uh, it's, it comes to PNF, or we don't find out about it until it comes uh, to their, their committee of jurisdiction. Uh, I'm not saying that, that we don't wanna do these things to fund some of our programs, but we should know. We should have a collaborative effort on it so we, we know we're not stepping on each other's toes. We just had one with the Connect program where uh, the district's attorney office had a, a peer support specialist paid for by a grant um, that could have been paid a lot higher than our actual peer support specialist we hire in the county. So it created a little bit of tension there. We have to coordinate on those things. Could that grant have paid for our already existing peer support specialists in the county to do the work? Maybe it could, maybe it couldn't, but we have to collaborate a little bit better on that. Um, and I do want to mention one more thing to the accountability. I think that's kind of the, the reason why we made this its own department. Um, so it doesn't sit under the executive. This is a department in and of itself. So in the future, if this doesn't work, the board has uh, the ability to pull the funding from it. Um, it, it. It makes this position more vulnerable to the people instead of putting it as some, some, somebody that the county executive just selects, if, the, if that makes sense. Right. Thank you. Supervisor Dowling. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I guess that was my first question. The director of administration would answer to us, correct? 
Say again? Would the director of administration answer to the board? I guess I don't really understand the, the question. Um, I'm just, I guess it's more of a checks and balance question. Um, if something goes awry, do we have any input other than just pulling the plug on their salary? Well, operational, I mean, that's why we work together. Okay. You, you, you set the, uh, I just want to make sure I'm addressing your concerns here. So if I'm not, please let me know. Um, so the board sets a policy direction and then I say, okay, this is what we want to do. And then I help, I get, I get the director of administration. You help figure out the technical aspects and I will go work with the department heads and our shareholders in the community that are affected by this so we can come up with a plan. Um, so in that case, yes, and, and, and just like any other department head, when you guys have questions, you can feel free to reach out to them. Okay. Um, if, does, does that answer your question? I just yes. want to make sure. Okay. Yes, it does. And then okay. my second question is that I see the job description listed in here. It's very lengthy and seems very specific, which I could understand. Um, would the job description be updated if our new hire, for some reason, doesn't work out, moves, leaves, whatever? Um, I'm just, some of the items in here, again, just very specific. Yeah, sure, and, and that was something uh, I wanted to put in here and um, that I had been advised from others not to, because um, job descriptions aren't a function of the board, that's operations. Um, it's policy and budget. You have X amount to carry out this task. Um, but I wanted to be very upfront with everybody to show you some of the things that a director of administration would do. Um, and it would be lengthy. Um, I think of Fond du Lac County, what their director of administration does, or in Brown County, what their director of administration does. Um, now, th those are larger. The, a lot of department heads uh, report to them. Um, this is more the functionality on, on, the, on the top end to make sure that when we get our wage study in, we know the best way to, it, to, to go after that. Now, how do we bridge the gap between finance and HR to make sure that we're actually finding innovative ways to pay for this? Um, if we want to look at priorities through our county, how do we measure those? What are the outcomes? What are the metrics to do that? Um, somebody who has a technical expertise to do that um, is, is what I would be able to use this position to, to help me, to help all of us with your policy directions. Did Wonderful. I, Thank you. I, all right. Good. Supervisor Zestera. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, so, so this is the Arthur Young study, and I, I appreciate you referencing this because I've studied this as well for um, judiciary, and I found it very, very interesting and inspiring because it's, it's an objective study. Um, I guess I, I don't know if um, this is the right time, but I'm real curious to know what the department heads that are here might say you know, like um, we have a lot of, you know, corporate counsel, uh, uh, Director Collard, Habeck, Sheriff Motts, Mike Elder, um, and so on. I'm just wondering if that, if this is the time to ask them or if it would be a later time. What, if they have any input? They should have, if they wanted to, in the beginning, they could have talked or whatever. It's, uh, he's at, we're on the, his part of it now. Just, so. yeah. just uh, Executive right. Damel. Okay, so uh, Executive Damel, do you do you have any feedback as to what their their input has been to you that you could sure. share? Okay, I didn't I didn't make this decision by myself. We get together our department heads in, in three different ways. We have department head as a group where we get together like we did this morning, as a whole, everybody together. We get together in small cohorts, so we get together with like land use or public safety. Um, or human services. Uh, we get together that way. Then we also get together one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I think a lot of you uh, see the agenda item reports and there's one thing that you might notice is they're all kind of a little different. That's because currently all of our d department heads are responsible for writing their own agenda item reports. And we're trying to make sure that we're giving them the oversight to make sure it's consistent. We're getting all the information needed. Um, and we're struggling to do so. Um, so this was a decision that we talked over at length with department heads and, and came to an agreement, including with our uh, administrative group and my management team, which is uh, uh, department heads that get together um, that, that help me when I have decision points to make so I can make sure I'm getting as much information possible. So out of the Arthur Young report, um, we kind of do those divisions right now with nobody really leading it. Um, but the director of administration we felt was the most important piece, 
the one that we absolutely needed to make sure that we're doing uh, the best we can. Now, as far as those small cohorts, uh, those are really nice because I have the ability for a director like Mike Elder, who's been here for a long time, to be able to bring a new highway commissioner, Bob Dable, under his wing and mentor him mm -hmm. as, as far as being a, a department head. Um, so that's really kind of worked out. So we have a couple that aren't necessarily those department leaders, but they have stepped out. And Mike, thank you for that leadership. Um, but yeah, no, this was a team decision. This is something that we debated and talked about for a long time. Is that, does that answer your question? Thank you. Okay. Supervisor Powers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, um, I, I'm probably going to vote for this position. But I will say, um, Mr. Executive, that I am concerned that in the last two years, the executive office has increased with some substantial um, outlays of salary and, and benefits. And while all the departments are asked to keep at a zero uh, budget line, and they cannot even count the 4% increase on salaries, so you add the 4% in there, then to get it back to zero, you're going to start cutting programs and personnel, uh, or maybe the sheriff can only give us deputies five bullets instead of six. I don't know where they're going to come up with, with, with keeping a zero budget. But um, our, our department heads, the sheriff, Dr. Topol, Dr. Garrett, I mean, I, I, their, their salaries are not commensurate at all with the kind of jobs that they're doing. And I'm just concerned that the, exec, that the executive office is getting heavy in um, in outlays of money, I, I see the needs for it. I'm probably going to vote for it, um, but I am I really am concerned. Thank you. I just want to clarify so I make sure I have it right. So the the concern is we're adding an administrative level when we're asking everybody else to cut and tighten the belt. Yeah. That's a concern. Um, we're going to have to. I mean, our people are. You know, this wage study is going to come, and we're going to have to find a way to pay people more. If we don't find a way to, to pay uh, Dr. Topol's uh, social workers more, we're not going to have people to do programs, and the programs will cut themselves. We're going to have to make some hard choices countywide so we can make sure that we come up with a decent pay plan for, for our people. Now, not top of market, but we at least have to be in market. Um, when we tell everybody 4%, we got to find 4% in our departments, there's 8.5% inflation last year. So even with a 4% raise, we're asking our employees and our own people to find another 4% cut. So if we can't do that, we shouldn't be asking our employees to do that. And I feel for you, we have a lot of really tough decision points to make, uh, which is why we need that oversight on the top so we can really study what our programs are so we make the right decisions. So we go into our budget with a scalpel and not a hatchet, if that makes sense. We have to make sure that we are making uh, intelligent, informed decisions when we figure out how we're going to fund uh, a new comp plan. Because we have to fund it. We can't just put ourselves in a hole year after year. Um, it needs to be sustainable going forward. Um, I, does that answer your question or concern? Well, yeah, it, but I'm still saying as long as we're putting in these new positions with exorbitant, I don't want to say exorbitant salaries, but they're, they're considerable. Mm -hmm. I'd like to work for that kind of money. Sure. Um, while, while Dr. Topol's social worker is getting a 4% increase, which is actually a 4% cut, it, it's just, it's too heavy. If we're trying to tighten our belts, then adding these positions that have been added in the last two years seems um, full foolhardy in in terms of finances all right that's a great point okay we've had some finance directors that have applied for our county um, a lot of them have very little experience not a lot of experience um, little amounts of experience and that is the kind of finance director we're going to attract with our range being 99 to hundred ten thousand dollars so we had a, a director of administration that had a little bit more expertise in that field we, we could afford to have somebody with a little less experience to come up. And I'm not saying somebody who's not qualified, just less experience. Um, it'll free us up to really look at some of these inefficiencies. Chainsaw training, for instance. I found out that we do chainsaw training for a highway department. Uh, we do chainsaw training for airport. We do a chainsaw training for parks department. 
um, and chainsaw training for facilities. We do four separate chainsaw trainings. Um, now that's not the fault of our risk management because he's just trying to balance this out by himself. So these are some of those inefficiencies that we can clear up instead of paying $2,000 per uh, training times four, we could probably get everybody in in two and do that over and over again. We're gonna, we're gonna be able to find some inefficiencies. So without that kind of collaboration over the top, um, I don't know how we get to a new pay plan. I don't know if that answers your question really. I'm trying. I think you have, I, I'm, I'm just troubled as I said, I'm probably going to vote for this, but I am troubled with yep. the increases on the executive level when others are taking pretty major cuts. Yep. Supervisor Peschel. I'm going to myself down. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, right. Supervisor Peschel. Uh, executive, County Executive Damo, um, question for you. In, the, in, in how the org chart works right now, if you become ill, and you're incapacitated, who makes the decisions? Your chairman. All right. Now, if we add this position and you become incapacitated, you're unable to make decisions, who makes those decisions? Your chairman. Okay. So I just, I just wanted to be clear in regards to that, that, that direction. If you look on the org chart, the county board, the county executive, it goes back and forth. So that's not changing. That's being very transparent there that that's back and forth. So, and that's typically the only time when that would happen is if you're inca incapacitated, correct? Correct. So, um, so thank you for that. My next question relates to strategic planning, uh, more specifically a, a, a strategic plan. So do we currently have a strategic plan for the county? No. Okay, have we ever had a strategic plan for the county? No. Okay, so in your view, as you've built this job description that's here, what type of role will the, um, the director of administration have in creating a strategic plan if the board decide, decides to create one, which is my strong hope that we do, so. Well, I think some of the information gathering, um, currently right now we're going through the county and we're doing a, um, core values workshops to find out from our employees, what are your core values? We do the same thing with department heads, what are your core values? We're, we are gonna be coming to the board, what are your core values? What are the things that are your principles that you will not waver on that we need to stand for? What is the role of Winnebago County? So help facilitate some of that data gathering and help put the plan together. Um, putting the strategic plan together it will be me and you working together with our employees and our stakeholders uh, in the community, including school districts or municipalities or townships. Um, all of us figuring out what our strategic plan for Winnebago County is. The role of the director of administration helps us to carry that out. Make sure that we are staying on the tracks and how do we do that? What are the tools we need, need to accomplish our goals? Um, I'm pretty good at, at uh, holding people accountable and making sure that we are doing what we're supposed to be doing. Um, but personally, I don't have the technical expertise on, on some of these things I deal with on a daily basis. Um, so I, I think you, yeah. you want to know what the role is for a strategic sure. plan. Yeah. yeah, so thank you for answering that. Okay. My last, uh, I think, comment is, um, sorry, is, um, you know, I, I myself personally have been involved in, in multiple governments, and so, and so have many of us in this room. And I think when I look at um, the organizations, the organization charts of those organizations, um, there is consistently someone that's, that's in this role that does that. Um, and, you know, and I, can, and I can honestly say that as a citizen before I came here, I sometimes questioned, you know, why was there not more collaboration on grants that are coming out of the health office that may be better suited to come out of uh, Department of Human <coughs> Services um, and, um, and, and stuff like that. And that's what, you know, this person does in other, in other, for, in other governments and other organizations um, is creates those cohesive elements so that, uh, you know, you have efficiencies. And that's the ultimate role of, of, a, of a Department of Administration is to, is to create efficiencies 
within within your organization. Um, and so, um, from that perspective, the only thing that we're missing, and this is this falls on us, is a strategic plan. You know, and and for me, this that role, that action of this board providing that direction is really, really important. And I think is, is if we have someone in that role, it, uh, it creates some real direction of where, of where we want this role to go and where we want the county executive to go um, and, and, and prov provides us the opportunity to hear more from our citizens of what direction we want to go. So um, I would say that I, I'm, I'm fairly supportive of this, of this direction moving forward because I do believe it creates some efficiencies and um, provides those better opportunities for services uh, within our departments and within our community. So, thank you. Supervisor Cox. John, this is the wrong timing. It's the wrong timing for what we have to spend out of the budget for all of directors and to put something else out there and have to dig and scratch to build a budget for the administrative office without, without mentioning all of the different shifting and shape, shape shifting things that we've gone through since the director of finance left, okay, and how many different desks are we gonna move around in order to find Mike a new job? And, and that's what this all boils down to. It is not, no. If we find a director for finance, and put the director in place, Mike now doesn't have a job. We need to give him a job. So we have, voila, the administrative position. I don't understand why we can't smooth this whole thing over, put some education in this for the direct, for, for an administrator, if not the director of finance and give us somebody that has a CPA and a master's degree as we had with Ms. Fitzgerald, okay, and put that person in finance and put Mike back either into personnel or let him oversee. But we don't have money for this. The budget is, is crushed now with having to give, what, 4% raises? You're not gonna give 4% raises to, to directors this year and keep a zero, keep a zero budget. Uh -uh. I, I can't vote for this. I will not vote for this. It has to be beefed up. So we have some people out there. You're looking for the right people. You've got to look for the right people for finance. We've got a couple of things in there that, you know, the CAFR, the, CAF the investment portfolio. You need a CPA. All right, am I, I'm gonna try to address that the best way I can. First of all, this isn't about a person, this is about a position. And if it was about a person, that man would be more than qualified. That man has been a county administrator, he has been a corporation counsel, he has been a finance director, he was our HR director who was doing a fine job, so I'm gonna defend my employee for a second. Second of all, as a board of supervisor, you guys are policy and budget. You let me know how much money I can do with what I have to do. Your role is not in any of the descriptions of what my organization does. That's my role. 
And it's Bill Topol's role to, to figure out how many human service or how many people is working for him. It is Mike Elder's role to figure out how many janitors he needs. It is Bob's role to figure out how many people need to be on the road plowing. It's not your role. And the thing that I've been trying to do to help you when I have no capacity is figure out an ice arena. And I'm there for you and will be there for you. And this director of administration would be there for you to help figure out those things. We're out of capacity. I'm telling you our finance director is out of capacity. I'm telling you our human services is out of capacity. We are struggling hard and mightily on the top daily to make sure that we are doing the bare minimums to get interviews done, to get references checked, um, to still find time to work on differentials for our highway guys or our nurses because they need it desperately. Um, and if not now, when? And I'll tell you, if not now, it'll be in the budget. I'm pretty sure you know that I am pretty consistent on this and I'm gonna keep trying because that is what my departments are talking to me about. And they're telling me that's the, the help that they need and I'm gonna keep fighting for them and I'm gonna keep fighting for everybody that works for Winnebago County because if we have happy people, they will serve our people. If we have happy people, they will find a way to make it work. Um, and we're gonna have to get real creative if we wanna find this budget. It's not gonna be easy. It's not gonna be easy. Supervisor Nichols. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. When I read through the information provided, the lines between what the county executive does and what the proposed administrator would do become blurred mm -hmm. for me. So could you help me better understand uh, the, the differences between the two roles? Sure, um, they are pretty similar uh, because we'll be working on the same stuff, whoever that person is. Um, me so, more so on the uh, fact-finding relationships side with our, our uh, shareholders. Now, how do I get to uh, the city of Menasha and talk to you? How do I get the school districts to talk to you and then come back and say, okay, here's the mission. Uh, the director of administration will work on that to see how it, how it works uh, technically, the technical side. So me so more vision um, to figure out uh, how we do the operations and the director of administration for the technical aspects um, to, to follow uh, board direction. I just want to make sure I'm, I'm getting that right. Um, so the difference between the two, if there's a reason why it's gray, it's because we will kind of be working on the same things, um, just more the vision side and the technical side. Does that, sum it, does that answer your question? Not really. Maybe could you rephrase it for me a little bit? No, it answers my question. Okay. It answers it quite well. Um, it, Mr. Chairman, is this the appropriate time to ask questions specifically about the resolution, or should I save that for when we're actually talking Just about Just on this, it? no. Any questions you have of him? Okay, thank you. Um, then I don't know if this is a question for you or just a question for the board in general. Um, since, since you're talking about sharing responsibilities, working on the same things, then when does it become appropriate to examine the county executive's role and salary and all of the things that go with that? I believe that happens in two years. Is that when, when they set the, you do set the county executive's salary. Um, that, that is a function of the board to set the, the salary and I believe set the job description too. Just before you take out the nomination, yeah. So, so that is a function of the board. Okay. And that's all the questions I have for right now. Thank you. Thank you. Supervisor Horan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I've been writing down a few things. One of the things that when I spoke with you, you told me the budget, and, and this was, 
I love that ad where your head's exploding. Poof, $190 million. How does any person grasp this? What I am hearing you say is that you need to have somebody who's going to keep focus. And this is what this job essentially is going to do. It seems to me that you have recognized your weaknesses in this job. And, and I, I have understood that you've had a difficult time because things have changed dramatically with you at the helm. And this is to help you with those tasks that you are unclear of to get you onto the page that's going to, oh golly, dare I use this word, diplomatic. It's going to help you become more diplomatic in how you address things that are going on. I want to say way to go for recognizing your shortcomings. I don't know you well, but you know, you know how stuff gets around. If there's a way, and, and, and not only $190 million, my dear Lord have mercy, you've got another $33 million on top of that to start taking care of. My question is, will this focus start to address some of the budgetary items? Because you were saying we've got four classes of chainsaw at $2,000 a pop, and you could potentially drop that in half. Now, I understand that $4,000 isn't going to make up what this person's salary is going to be. I got that. But if that happens several times, essentially you will be getting to a place where it's addressed. Their salary is addressed. That's, is, is that a, a correct and, a, boy, another wild word, assumption? Or am I going to make an ass of myself? <laughs> I'm going I'm to try, let me know if I, if I address, I want to address some of the things you said in your question at the end. Absolutely. I would expect a position of, of this stature and this salary to be able to find uh, inefficiencies and in saving for three to four times their salary. And this position doesn't pay for itself annually. It's not doing the job. Um, but it doesn't just support me. It does support our department heads. It supports our finance, it supports HR, it supports Corporation Council. It supports the fact that we will make sure we have the oversight that when we have item reports that come to you, we don't have to make uh, edits when we get to the, the floor of the board. It's gonna make sure that we have the oversight, the capacity to make sure that we have the morgue for 1.5 million and not 1.15 to catch that. It's gonna make sure that we are having the right voting mechanisms um, if we're bonding or not, to be two-thirds or three-fourths or majority of the board. It's my job to make sure we're getting that right. And we're not. I mean, I'm trying to say that, that uh, we're doing a terrible job because we're doing a heck of a job. I think you have more information now than you ever have, and we want to keep up with that. We want to have more and better information. We want to make sure it's consistent. We want to make sure that we're doing the right things for you. Um, and so I think this position would, would help me, it would help Corporation Council, it would help HR, it would help all of us um, on the administration, and it'll help uh, facilities. Um, and again, at this position cannot find at least triple, if not four times, its pay and inefficiency. It's not doing a great job, and I believe it will. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Supervisor Bender. I guess, John, my concern is, will this position work with personnel? You know, like Parkview a year ago, we were 25 CNA short. Now we're 39 and a half. Mm -hmm. We're 10 RN short. We're down to 129 residents. Mm -hmm. We got 36 empty beds. It's about $400,000 a month, which is over $4 million a year. 
if this person can get me those 39 CNAs and 10 RNs, and we can get 165 residents in that nursing home like we're supposed to have, mm -hmm. I had two citizens call me. They couldn't get out of the hospital because there's not a nursing home available in Oshkosh. Yep. You know, we need to address this issue, and if it takes hiring an administrator, that's what we have to do. I mean, we're going to lose over $4 million this year in our budget just from Parkview. <laughs> if this position is going to pay 135000 plus benefits, it's just a small compared to the $4 million we're losing right now. And we owe that service to our residents to get them in that nursing home. And we're not addressing it. You know, like I say, we were 25 CNA short last May, and now we're 39 and a half short. You know, we, we need to address that issue. And I looked online, there's incentives at other nursing homes. There's a $500 if you refer somebody. There's a $2,500 and a $5,000 signing bonus. Our personnel maybe doesn't have the time to, to check what other places are offering for employment. And if we're not competitive, we're not going to get anybody. So will this person actually help us to do that? Because that's what we need. A absolutely. Uh, first of all, I do want to address that. We had two fantastic interviews for uh, Administrator at Parkview uh, last week. Um, so I can't wait uh, to see how that plays out. But yes, it'll give us capacity. Think about what we have in our budget. I want you to look at our budget and see what we do to adver advertise for positions. We have $7,000 a year on a $190 million budget. $7,000 a year is our budget to advertise for open positions. Our HR is so uh, above capacity, they do not have time to even consider going to job fairs. Sheriff does a great job. He goes to job fairs. Uh, and and I, I believe those are successful for you, even though I can't ask you that question, um, to actually get out there and recruit. You know, if we did a, 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 a better job of being able to communicate and tell people um, what life at Parkview is actually like, that you're not responsible for 10 residents like some people are. We're not responsible for 10 residents per nurse, are we? Are, no, no. So it's less than that. I just want to make sure I'm giving factual information. Um, that life is a little bit easier for a CNA at Parkview. Um, and, and if we can do a better job of, of expressing that and free up some capacity for HR to go after them, Absolutely, because you're right. It was three and a half million dollars we took out of Parkview's fund last year to keep it balanced. That is not sustainable. It is not sustainable. So if we can get a way to get out there and recruit these nurses and bring them in so HR can get active, um, that would pay for itself right there. Supervisor Stafford. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. A uh, couple questions on org design. Um, so it's two questions, and I'm not going to throw them all at you at the same time. We'll, we'll do a part. Uh, first is, how many direct reports do you have? Uh, we counted this today of 18, 18 about to be 19. Okay, and then uh, overall org, what's the count for the entire county? For, for employees? Yes. Uh, 1160, we have 90 some vacancies. I'm not comfortable giving, I don't want to give you a number well, that's, that's not right, that's but fine. it's so between roughly, 11 and 1,200. Okay. Will that we'll, just be, say, we'll just say 1,100. Okay. We'll, we'll go down. And then you'd said how many for your direct reports? 18? For me? Yes. Eight, 18, about to be 19. 18, 19. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the easy questions. Yeah. I appreciate it. And I've got some. Okay. Number one, um, I just wanted to know why you didn't wait to bring this into budget time because it's only four months away. And I think that would have because I hear every, or not everyone, but a lot of them saying, well, how are we going to be able to give raises to all these other people that have been working all this time? And now you want to bring in a new person and how are we going to be able to afford this? Are we going to say, oh, we can't afford them, so now we're going to take them away in four months? Him, her, whatever it is? I would say we can't afford not to. We're about to have our first ARPA commission meeting, which you know about. We're about to start appropriating $33.2 million, and that comes with a whole lot of reporting, and our finance department is not ready for that. Um, so it, it would give us capacity to be able to bring in another finance director to help and capacity above that. Um, and until we can start looking at some of these people that are applying for our finance director, and currently we cannot uh, because of the, the TO, there's nobody with expertise above them to make sure um, so we need to find somebody who's seasoned right now. Um, so I would I, I don't know if they, how do we afford to do it now and why not wait? I would say it right, should have... You just said a little while ago, you said, well, if we don't get it now, I'm, you'll be back in at budget time anyway. Correct. So that's four months away. Correct. Oh. So I'm just asking why you just didn't bring it in at that time and be done with it. 
because we can't, I, I don't believe we okay. can wait operationally. All right, and the other thing is on budget, you said this person will be in charge of like the budgets. It used to be, yes, that was one of the things yep. that they would be in charge of the budgets. Mm -hmm. It used to be like you would be in on it, the finance director, mm -hmm. um, the heads of the department, and used to be the chairman of the committee all used to be in on it. I don't know if that's the way it is anymore or not. Uh, if the chairmen of the committees are in on it or not, uh, just keep all the board involved. Yes, correct. The exact same thing for all our budget meetings plus the direct administration. Okay, so um, that's, nothing's going to change there. Correct. Except possibly one more person will be sitting in on it. Correct. Okay, so you've got another repeat of a person there again. And then the other thing, I know it's just jokingly wise, but hopefully you don't mean that we're looking at this so four people don't have cutting, tree cutting demonstrations or whatever. That was awful poor, I thought, on a, for people out there looking that it was just something that was just another thing that was brought up that right. um, I'm sure there's going to be other things that you can study on for that. Sure. I mean, it was just a, a piece of collaboration, um, things to, to help look for the big picture of what are some of the efficiencies we can do within department heads um, so that we're actually saving money, I guess is what I, was that the question? I just wanted to point that Hopefully somebody don't think, well, they're just hiring somebody so they can go ahead and study this tree cutting business. Correct. Right. No, that's, that's correct. Supervisor Ellenberg, this is your second time, so. Am I allowed to keep speaking? Or go ahead. It, it was, a, you guys are bringing up money and how to pay for this quite a bit. Um, just low-lying fruit, a little observation. If we went completely paperless and we actually used our iPads, we would easily pay for this position. Just saying, if we all want right. to be collaborative and we actually want to um, afford this position, I mean, you think about how much we spend in um, just mailing out our packets, the paper, the ink, the person that takes to actually put this together. I mean, there's your low-lying fruit if you want to pay for this position. Just saying, so. Thank you. Supervisor Powers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I realize this is my second time, too. Quick question. This person gets hired today, tomorrow, next week, and then is there a 4% increase in January 1st after he's had the job for six, five months? I don't, I don't know the answer to that question. I know there is a time that, that there is a cutoff to where they do not get it, and I'm not sure where that is. Uh, I believe we're close, and I don't want to... I would just write that down and, and ask that question during the, the resolution debate. Thank you. Thank you. Supervisor Gabbert. I wasn't going to talk on this, but we might as well start the ball rolling here because I'm going to talk a lot. So my question to you is, is your plan to advertise for this position very soon? And then the caveat here, perhaps if Mike would get that position, then you lose your finance director. So how are you handling this when we're going to be getting into budget time where all the departments are going to put their budgets together and have them reviewed in August? How will you handle new hire, Mike leaving the finance if he gets it, which I'm saying he's going to have a good chance, okay? <laughs> Um, or a new person that's green is going to come in. So how is this all going to flow in the next four months? Sure, that's a great question. So how are we going to make sure we're handling budget? Um, if, if, let's just say, my current acting finance director would get this role. Um, two words for you. Carol Blackmore, somebody who we almost let walk away from this county because she didn't have the degrees necessary um, to do the job, but she was more than capable of doing the job. Um, she was our, our budget director before. She is now our deputy finance director, um, and it is in good hands with her. Um, if uh, Mike Collar were to, to apply for this position and get this position, he would still be acting, but we would be able to actually call in for interview one of the five finance directors we've had apply um, that don't necessarily uh, have the, the county government expertise um, to be our finance director. Government's tricky. I think we all know once we're elected officials, you can't have somebody buy you a stake anymore, right? Everybody does knows that, right? That we have different rules that we have to follow in government. We can't get a 5% return on an investment. We can't, there are things that we can't do. I think, Doug, you explained it to me once that there's 
we, we have lower percentages. There's all these technical things that have to do with, with government. And maybe you're a really qualified banker and you're really good with numbers, but you have something to learn with county government. If, with a director of administration, we can actually uh, hire one of those people that would be great uh, counting the beans, if you would, but not necessarily have the knowledge of, of county government. And I would say there are probably five applicants we've had to pass over um, because they didn't have that experience. We could bring them in uh, real quick uh, because they're still interested. Point, point to be had here. Sometimes you have Talk to into your mic, please. What? Talk into your mic, please. Sometimes you have to hire without get people out of the box. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So as long as Carol's still here, which I knew you'd say that for an answer, <laughs> then I feel confident that we can get our budgets put together and have our meetings in August with the department heads and things should flow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I thank you for your answers tonight. So um, now we'll go to your appointments here for your Board of Health. All right. Um, board of Health first, right? Okay. Yes. Appointments for the Board of Health. Um, do we need a motion for this? Or yes, you'll need a motion at the end. Yeah. At the end, after you do Oh, at the end. Okay. Thank you. Um, uh, appointments for the Board of Health, Supervisor, Supervisors Rachel Youngquist, Ralph Harrison, Jeff Beam, Karen Powers, Mike Norton, and Dr. Eric Smiltnik. I hope I got that right. Reappointments of Louis uh, Grusmacher and Toby Vandenhuvel. Uh, these terms expire July 1st of 2024. Is there a second? Motion made and second for the approval of the appointments for the Board of Health. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Not hearing any, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those aye. Opposed, say nay. Housing Authority. All right, for the Housing Authority, uh, an appointment of Supervisor Betsy Ellenberger. This term will expire April 19th of 2027. Do I hear? Is there a second? Motion made and seconded. For the Housing Authority appointment, any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Not hearing any, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed aye. say nay. Carried. Thank you. All right, thank you. <coughs> okay, I have a few things tonight. Um, first off, I want to give uh, Supervisor Hintz the board's sympathy for the passing of his mother. Um, tragedy there. All right, the other thing I wanted to bring up about, we had a highway accident here this last week, which I think most of you have heard about. I want to thank the county executive for getting out uh, his crew for help out there, and I want to uh, thank Supervisor Nussbaum for being out there as quick as they could be and, and helping in any way that they could and talking with these people, which means a lot just to talk to them. So um, it's, they were lucky. I, from what I had heard at the highway meeting is that the guy saved himself by <coughs> grabbing on the bumper and sliding along underneath the truck. So that's how they saved themselves. There's three of them. The other two jumped, one jumped to one side, one to the other, I guess, and that's how that gentleman saved himself. So uh, tonight, um, Supervisor Buck and Supervisor Eisen, I do not believe is on. He's going to call in or be called in because uh, he wants to talk on something. But as of right now, Supervisor Buck for sure is, is absent, and I'm not sure about Supervisor Eisen. I have. Uh, couple appointments tonight for the East Central International Trade and Business and Economic Development Council. I'd like to appoint uh, Supervisor Doug Nelson and citizen appoint Paul, Paul uh, Sunquist. Motion made and seconded. Any other discussion? Any other discussion? Any other discussion? Not hearing any all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those, opposed aye. Say, those opposed say nay. Carried. At this time, I'm going to go down and present our, our um, <coughs> people here with that one of the scholarships. And we're going to have um, Julie is going to be reading off the names here. She's our assistant clerk here, so she's going to be doing that. And I'll be handing out their books and their, their um, scholarships.
Good evening, everyone. If all the scholarship winners want to come forward, I think that'll be easier. <coughs> After you get announced, if you just kind of want to come up and tell us a little bit about yourself and what your plans are in the future. And I'm going to call you in order of the alphabet. So Carson Clark. Hi everyone, I'm Carson Clark. I went to Nina High School. Um, I'm planning to go to Madison and uh, I'm going for a degree in accounting and possibly chemistry um, as a minor. Nolan Kubiak. Haley Fox. Hi, I'm Haley. Um, I went to Oshkosh North High School and I'm going to UW Milwaukee for political science. And next is Logan Pinkerton. Hi, I went to Oshkosh North and I'm going to Michigan Tech for construction management. This one, is it Annika Nestrick? I'm Annika Nesterik and I'm a graduate from Oshkosh West High School and I'll be going to Madison next year to study genetics in hopes of becoming a genetic counselor. How about Anna Porter? Hi, my name is Anna and I went to St. Mary's Catholic. I will be attending Madison and I'm hoping to double major in computer science and data science. Emily Cole. Hi, I'm Emily Cole. I graduated from Winnick County High School and I'm going to UW-Madison, unfortunately undecided. <laughs> <laughs> and then Francesca Verich. I'm Francesca Verich, and I also graduated from Winnick County High School, and I will be attending Madison to study chemical engineering. gave each one a, a plot book and their check. So that's what we, they received tonight. So we want to congratulate y'all. Let's give them all another big round of applause. <laughs> okay, we have no zoning ordinance tonight. So right on moving here. Resolution 5905-2022, amend section 22, committee meetings of the rules of Winnebago County Board of, Su of Supervisors by correcting section 2211, it should say. Supervisor Dowling. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I move that we amend section 22 of the rules of the Winnebago County Board 
um, by correcting section 22.11. Motion yeah. made. Second. Yes, did you want to say something? Um, as Chairman Egan knows, prior to this meeting, I had gotten a call from Supervisor Eisen, um, and I, he had indicated that he is traveling, as many of you know, and he asked to make a point of personal privilege due to connectivity problems when we were at Judiciary. Supervisor Eisen is a member of Judiciary. He was also traveling, and we, he was coming in and out. I think he's in Wyoming now. Um, a point of personal privilege is basically an opportunity for him to speak right now, not, not, to, not to vote, but to give everybody his opinion uh, regarding this resolution so that we do not run into the issues that we ran into during Judiciary when there were connectivity problems. Uh, so do we have him on yes. the line? Yes, Supervisor Eisen. So the motion has been made and seconded, so yes, I'll call on Supervisor you. Eisen. Can okay. you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Originally, resolution number 59052022 was originally designed to tweak the needed updates to County Board Rule 22.0. It was converted by the Information Systems Committee and the Judiciary and Public Safety Committee amendments to mandate the county and all committee, commissions, and boards meetings be hybrid. That is to say, in person and remote and recorded. I oppose mandating hybrid meetings, and my hope is that some savvy supervisor attending in person can point to the impracticality of the expense of performing and adhering to the Wisconsin records retention laws. This essentially, my friends, is an unfunded mandate. You have no idea what it's going to cost, and I will let my peers speak the rest. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Eisen. Supervisor Powers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, well, I guess I'm, I'm it's right there with, with uh, Supervisor Eisen. I'm not in favor of this. Um, one of the things that, for instance, one of the things that gets posted every year, except during COVID, is our December holiday party as a, as a uh, full board meeting, because we're all going to be there. So is our Christmas party, is our holiday party now going to be uh, live streamed and open and have, have uh, be recorded and have the owl looking at us and people making comments during our holiday party? Good question. Supervisor are deferring. Paul, that's what's going on. Let me, let me go around and catch these other and come back to you then. Is that okay? You can come talk on, you can talk on mine. <laughs> Supervisor Dowling. See, yours isn't coming on now either. Let's see how it 
didn't have even Super Supervisor even Cox, is yours on? No, you're still done on here. Why don't you tell us? I know. Don't at the bottom. Mine is still on. Don't there? Yep. You clear all requests to speak and let them try it again. Okay, now let's see. No, still don't go on. <laughs> Guess you're just going to have to speak up loud, Brian. <laughs> just hold on. Just hold on for a minute. She might have a different way here. Brian, you want to use mine? I'll, I'll speak really loud. Um, the podium is on. Yeah. She's doing something over here now. <laughs> County's best bloopers reel. Um, uh, so, uh, 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 Supervisor Powers, I, um, that was actually something that I brought up as well, um, because that, that was a concern too. Um, and so, it, uh, um, you know, one of the things that we have to look at is that uh, we look at what is considered a quorum and what is considered a, a committee, commissions, and board meeting. And uh, so, in, uh, in particular instances like the county board tour, that is considered a quorum, but not a committee, commissions, and board meeting. And uh, this, was, uh, uh, this was something that was brought up from um, both uh, the clerk as well as Marianne Mueller Corporation Council. So in that particular case, this, uh, those, those instances of uh, get-togethers where a quorum is actually um, happening, it is not considered a committee, commission, and board meeting. So we, uh, so we adjusted the nomenclature on it to look at to, to address that very thing of committee, commissions, and board meetings. So, uh, uh, so I hope that, that an answers your concern because it, it, uh, that was the concern that I brought up as well. There you go. Well, we'll try Supervisor Cox again. Did you come on? We'll just have to hold on a second. Sue's got to close out. Point of order, Mr. Chairman, can we take a 10 minute recess to maybe restart the system? <coughs> Happily. Is that okay? We're excused for 10 minutes. Yes, you do. Paul, we had to, we're taking a 10 minute recess. I'll call you back, okay? The Winnebago County Board is currently in a break. For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. This is GovTV, opening accessibility and understanding of local government, helping you to be informed and involved. Also streaming live and on demand at oshkoshmedia.org and radio simulcast on Oshkosh FM 101.9. Like us on Facebook at our Oshkosh Media page. For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. Please stay with us. Coverage will resume shortly. County Board is currently in a break. For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. This is GovTV, opening accessibility and understanding of local government, helping you to be informed and involved. Also streaming live and on demand at oshkoshmedia.org and radio simulcast on Oshkosh FM 101.9. Like us on Facebook at our Oshkosh Media page. For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. 
Please stay with us. Coverage will resume shortly. For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. This is GovTV, opening accessibility and understanding of local government, helping you to be informed and involved. Also streaming live and on demand at oshkoshmedia.org and radio simulcast on Oshkosh FM 101.9. Like us on Facebook at our Oshkosh Media page. For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. Please stay with us. Coverage will resume shortly. is currently in a break. For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. This is GovTV, opening accessibility and understanding of local government, helping you to be informed and involved. Also streaming live and on demand at oshkoshmedia.org and radio simulcast on Oshkosh FM 101.9. Like us on Facebook at our Oshkosh Media page. For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. Please stay with us. Coverage will resume shortly. Board is currently in a break. For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. This is GovTV, opening accessibility and understanding of local government, helping you to be informed and involved. Also streaming live and on demand at oshkoshmedia.org and radio simulcast on Oshkosh FM 101.9. Like us on Facebook at our Oshkosh Media page. For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. Please stay with us. Coverage will resume shortly. County Board is currently in a break. For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. This is GovTV, opening accessibility and understanding of local government, helping you to be informed and involved. Also streaming live and on demand at oshkoshmedia.org and radio simulcast on Oshkosh FM 101.9. Like us on Facebook at our Oshkosh Media page. For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. Please stay with us. Coverage will resume shortly. For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. 
This is GovTV, opening accessibility and understanding of local government, helping you to be informed and involved. Also streaming live and on demand at oshkoshmedia.org and radio simulcast on Oshkosh FM 101.9. Like us on Facebook at our Oshkosh Media page. For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. Please stay with us. Coverage will resume shortly. board is currently in a break. For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. This is GovTV, opening accessibility and understanding of local government, helping you to be informed and involved. Also streaming live and on demand at oshkoshmedia.org and radio simulcast on Oshkosh FM 101.9. Like us on Facebook at our Oshkosh Media page. For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. Please stay with us. Coverage will resume shortly. County Board is currently in a break. For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. This is GovTV, opening accessibility and understanding of local government, helping you to be informed and Now, any of you, those of you that wish to speak will have to punch in again. Push their mics. First is Supervisor Challenger. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I have one question about this, uh, which is quite timely, uh, given this. What would happen if we pass this resolution and the computer that was supposed to be the Zoom medium, stopped working, needed an update, wasn't available, or the internet went out, the router broke, the power in the building was lost, would we then have to stop? So I guess this question is for Corporation Council. If we pass this resolution, would any of those three conditions require us to, to, to stop the meeting? way this resolution is worded it specifically says recorded all right so that means in order to comply with this if something went out like the power you would have to pause things because then you would have to follow the mandate of this of this rule now i want to be clear when we're talking about this that in wisconsin there is no law saying you have to record meetings. Here, via this rule, the board talked, said, recorded. The other piece you need to remember is when something is recorded, that is a public record. So that means that you have to save that public record. And we say, oh, well, maybe we could just save the audio and not the video. If it is a Zoom recording, you have to save audio and video. You can't pick and choose. The other thing that you all have to keep in mind is under our record retention policy, it does not address how long you need to keep 
video recordings. So therefore, you would go to the default, and we addressed this, I believe, during judiciary. If not, I know I've spoken to the chair about this. Um, and the default is seven years. So since you do not have anything in the record retention policy now, um, if this stood, you would need to keep recordings, recordings being video and audio, for seven years. Just, does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Um, one more. So, you know, rule, rules are rules, and sometimes they're broken. I under, I, most, of our, most of our board rules, I feel like, have a natural correction mechanism to them within the, the way our board meeting or a committee meeting might flow. What would happen if someone forgot to hit record on a meeting and a, and a, and a committee meeting was held but not recorded? in violation of, of this rule? Um, open records is, is a serious uh, component of Wisconsin law. And there would certainly be ramifications, and I can't remember what I had talked, but I know there could be fines or penalties. Um, we, we have to maintain access for the public. If, and if, again, with the word recorded, if something were to happen, then again, if that word recorded stayed in place, we would have to pause it and try to get something fixed. And I know IS is here. Maybe they could perhaps be more um, articulate than I am um, regarding this. Um, I guess what part of the question isn't answered yet is it depends on what equipment is down and what aspect, if it's the Wi-Fi, if it's the Internet. You can still continue and do it local and upload it later. Um, but if power is out, if the device that's doing the recording is out, um, that's a whole different story. I'd also say though this resolution does require both the live streaming and recording, so we, we would need both pieces of that. Yeah, thank you very much. That's really helpful. Uh, I, I, lastly, my comment is I think, you know, I think it is, with that said about the record retention, um, I don't think it's fair to say that this doesn't have a, um, a financial cost. I agree with Supervisor uh, Eisen about, about this, this having a, um, uh, and, uh, however you put an unfunded mandate for uh, for our for, for for data storage. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Supervisor Dowling. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just did also wanted to go over cost real quick. Um, I handed out these sheets before the meeting started, and they address the four most common questions that we received um, most recently through the JPS. Uh, cost. We can throw out this entire resolution right now, and we still have to deal with storage. This resolution was originally passed in April by our board. So again, we can throw out this entire resolution and we still have to deal with retaining the records. However, I do want to point out that in digital media right now, I do not believe that there is a minimum file size or resolution of the video that we need to keep. So we could keep zip files of the recordings and we would still be compliant. That's my understanding. Um, the other, I guess, big thing I want to talk about right now, one of the changes we made was meetings in buildings. If we do not have this in this rule, we will incur huge costs. For example, tomorrow morning at 8.30, our parks board is going on a meeting throughout our entire county properties. Um, if we do not amend this rule right now, we need someone from IT to follow us around and record the meeting because the meeting is not in a building. So that would be a cost. Um, I can answer other questions if people have them, but for right now, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Supervisor Nichols. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to go back to the idea of the unfunded mandate. Um, as it relates to storage of recorded meetings. Uh, Director Francoeur, 
um, have costs already been incurred related to the storage of recorded meetings? So far, we simply have about $1,500 into storage. Um, so everything that gets uploaded to YouTube will remain there, um, but it is subject to their policies and their decisions. If it is something that could be taken down because of, uh, for example, a copyright infringement, YouTube has the potential to take it down. So we have a device with storage currently um, that cost us about $1,500. I don't have enough history to project how long that will last. Um, and if we do abide by the record is a video with audio included and do not separate it, those are big, those are big files and it's gonna fill up um, repeatedly and seven years is, is gonna be big. And any, any public record really should be in at least two places. We, we can't have it disappear and everyone knows it was there and if somebody asks for it, we face the potential penalties. So we are um, copying what we can now to our second location. Thank you. Um, and that started um, with recordings in mid-April? Um, maybe or May. May, okay. So from May until now, we've already invested $1,500. It's going to be very difficult to budget for the future because we don't have a history um, of meetings. And, and right now, this is simply an unfunded thing. Is there going to be a resolution coming back to us to, to pay for anything regarding this rule? Um, we, we utilized equipment we had, um, however, IS paid for it, and we have requested that it come from the board budget, but um, it has not uh, okay. happened yet. All right, thank you. So given the concerns um, expressed by corporate counsel regarding um, re the open records policies, the implications of recording these meetings and then storing all of those. Um, I would like to offer an amendment to this resolution and strike the words and recorded from line 10. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Well, I got to go through here first. Supervog Supervisor Cox on the amendment. <coughs> Supervisor Cox on the amendment. I have comments on the resolution itself. Okay, we'll go on the amendment first. Supervisor Norton on the amendment. Uh, yes, my, my question would be to, to the Corporation Council. Does this amendment apply just to, how would this apply to the general, the rule that we passed in April to have all means screen and have all means portable? Would that alter the battle? That's my first question. As you may recall, in April, when the county board was looking at this, there was a recommendation that this uh, rule be forwarded to judiciary as well as to information systems. And the, hopefully the copy you have shows the references that IS made in pink and the recommendations the judiciary made in green. Um, given the fact that the board had referred this to judiciary and when did IS. They do that? When did they do that? Let me ask. At, I didn't. I don't remember that. I remember just passing the rule 2088 to do it. I don't remember referring. I'm referring. I understand the, the, this rule change. This motion last month was sent to judiciary and sent to the IS committee. But I don't remember that. I'm sorry, uh, Corporation Council. I don't remember well, that. I would like to know where that is. Okay. Okay. 
Just hold on, let her finish now. You asked her the what, question. What I would say is, I would not think that judiciary or information systems would look at this on their own if they were not asked to review it. And my recollection, <clears throat> Oh, May. That but that had to do with the motion that Supervisor Dowling and Supervisor Custom brought forward. That was nothing to do with the original rule. That's a big oh. difference in my right. Okay. Right. But Thank okay. you. I t and I'm I it is, it was May. It was not April. It was May. Right. Yes. <clears throat> Anyone else have anything on the amendment? Thank you, Supervisor Powers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As long as you're taking off the and recorded, we should also take off the ED and recorded because broadcasted isn't a word. Is that okay? Yes. I'm going to have the clerk read that back. Oh. Okay, so the uh, amendment was on line 10 to remove the words and recorded. And then Supervisor Powers asked that we just make a, I'm assuming a friendly correction to make it broadcast instead of broadcasted. And Supervisor Nichols went along with it. <laughs> okay. Supervisor Dowling. Thank you. A uh, question on the amendment. If the rules don't say and recorded, are we still bound by keeping record of it? No. no. Okay. What, tr what triggers keeping the record is the words and recorded. Now, it certainly should, again, the way it's writ written now, it's available, you know, held in a hybrid mode in person and live streamed or digitally broadcast. But the word recorded is what triggers the public record. So can you read it back one more time, please? The whole thing, the way they want it written. Okay, whereas section 22.11 shall read as follows. All county board, committee, commission, and board meetings in buildings shall be held in a hybrid mode, in person and live streamed or digitally broadcast. The live stream platform must include an option for the public to make a video appearance with speaking capabilities during the appropriate time for public comment. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Winnebago County Board of Supervisors that it hereby amends Section 22.0 of the rules of the Winnebago County Board of Supervisors by correcting Section 22.11. We're still on the amendment. Supervisor Cox, amendment yet? Amendment. Okay. That does, <coughs> that does include... Uh, the minutes, or the minutes itself, are separate. That does not include the minutes. Where I'm, the minutes are one, one transcription of one recorded meeting. The Zoom, without recording it, okay, does not. You don't have to. You don't have to hold the recording of the actual meeting for any length of time. Am I getting that right? I think maybe Corp Council, I mean, we take minutes at all meetings because we're required yeah, by law, I, so those will still be retained. Right. Is that correct, Corp Council? Is that Mary, correct? Mary? I'm sorry, I was. All right, the minutes that we normally take the meeting those those may be recorded or they may be they may be transcribed those minutes will naturally be held and those would still exist and yeah okay but the actual video does not have to be recorded or if you take out the word recorded right then Correct. It we're does. not. We're not. We're not by doing that, eliminating 
The transcription? The transcription in some way. No. All right. That's all I want to know. Supervisor Peschel. Sure. Um, and I think my, sorry, thank you. My question relates into um, how other governments do this. You know, I, I think, I think we're, I'm lucky enough to live in Oshkosh and have been lucky enough to be able to utilize Oshkosh Media Services, which does a lot of the video recording and live streaming of of uh, government videos and community or community events and such like that. And so, and I, and I guess I'm just wondering, I know that they record those sessions there. They must have, they, they must have some data backup for that. Um, but, and I, and I guess my question is, do we have an idea what it would take for us to, to fully back that up? You were talking about how much you invested just in recording for data backup. Do we have like, do we have an idea of what that bigger number looks like at this point? Projecting out what we will have to save going forward. I just, I don't have the history or, or an idea. Um, we've had a couple recordings come in that are super large compared to others. So something might have happened, for instance, possibly the record button was clicked a half hour early or a, a different method was utilized if they couldn't get the Zoom record working or um, sometimes the, the record button has been stopped early, you know, and there, there's things so we, we don't have a good history to project what kind of space will be needed yet. Okay. And you know, Oshkosh Media just does the board, no committees correct. or anything. Yeah, and, and I guess my question for that is, they record that meeting, correct? Mm -hmm. so, so does this, if we were to amend this, I don't know what this question is for you. Um, if we were to amend this to take out the recording, then um, we're also we're also amending a service that we've already exist already have existing with um, with another government to provide that service to us. So and and I guess the question to us as a board, um, does it make sense to make that to take that step and disrupt that service which our whole county has become to rely upon? Or does it make sense for us as a board to say, before we move forward with this, would it make sense to table this, put it back to committee, and think it over a little bit more? That's what my gut's telling me to do, is that there's, there's some repercussions from this action here as, a, as it regards to uh, service expectation in regards to our meetings being published out into the community and what that is and as that relates to the retention of, of a public record, which in this case is, is a recording of our, of our monthly meeting. And Clerk Erber was kind enough to just send me, give me this information, which said Oshkosh Media retains all of Winnebago County's information right. and, and provides a DVD, but is that for committees or just, just for board for meetings? Board meetings. <laughs> just for but board the way meetings. this rule is written, it extends to that, yeah. So may I, may I follow up to that? Yes. Chairman, thank you. Then, and I guess if that's, if that's our existing relationship, we might want to entertain what it would take to expand that relationship as well then. And I, and I guess this brings me back to this, you know, the point is, are we really prepared? Do we have all the right information that we need right now to even make a decision on this resolution? So, um, I guess I'm gonna wait to make a potential motion to let others continue to talk on the amendment um, and to kind of go from there. Okay, just wanna remind everyone we're on the amendment. Supervisor Norton. Thank you. Um, a couple of follow-ups to Supervisor Peschel. First of all, are you telling me that the city of Oshkosh, Oshkosh Community Media Services that have been broadcasting city council, county board, school board meetings and city committee meetings for over a decade, more than decades, they can't give you any um, 
thoughts and how much storage they needed, uh, what, what they've had to do all these years, and or Marathon County that records not just the county board meetings, but also they also record four to five different other committee meetings. They, they haven't given you any kind of ideal patty of how many storage you would need? Um, I spoke with Oshkosh Media. They do not record all the meetings. They don't have enough staff to do that. So no, 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 you misinterpret me. I know that they don't, that was my second point, but I'm saying they record four or five of their city committee meetings, right? And, and when they record them, they have to keep a record of them, keep them in storage, as you say. They didn't give you an idea of how much storage they need over all these years, and or Marathon County, which not only just broadcasts the, the county board meetings, but also broadcasts four to five of their committee meetings from the same, same, the same room. Okay, that's what I'm asking. And also, I understand, and you know, Mr. Peschel asked you, I, when I investigated this before the, uh, the April meeting, I talked, I did con confer with the Oscar's community meeting, they said, Mike, we don't have the staff to um, staff every meeting. I understand that. They did tell me, I don't know if this is the, the way we got out of it, yes, no, or maybe. They said, if someone gets us a disc or, or a broadcast or a tape of the meeting, we'll play it. That's what they told me. I don't know what they told, I know you had a, your own meeting with that, Patty, but that's what they told me. So yes, I understand they don't have the staff to do it. You know, about the cost, I don't know what the cost is. Uh, I mean, I, I agree with Supervisor Petro, I think we have to investigate it more. I think it's worth it. Um, I, that's why I think we should still record them. I think it's gonna be unique. You know, I think other communities, government agencies might do it if we start doing it. I think um, the big issue, I see is whether or not all meetings should be or not. I think that's, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Treasurer Dahlia, I think that's one reason why, that with all meetings recorded or just certain meetings, I think if it's a business meeting or a program, I think educational, yes. You know, all this nonsense I hear about whether it's a, a, a Christmas party or a tour. We're talking kind of, about the amendment now. Okay, okay, but that's what I'm gonna say. I think we should leave, defeat the amendment and keep it in recorded. And that's concentrate on the original one that was presented. Thank you. Supervisor Parry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, a couple questions, if I might, for the IT director. We seem to be discussing and actually hung up on the words and recorded uh, in regard to this resolution. Uh, and you have referenced the cost to maintain those recordings. Correct, is that my understanding? Yes. From the period last term, from the period of March of 2020 to I believe somewhere around January of this year perhaps, many, many, many county board meetings were by Zoom. Where are they kept and what is the storage capacity needed to keep those and at what cost? I assume you have them, correct? Mm -hmm. I, I'm not certain on what percentage were all recorded. We had all the ones that we recorded, we, we backed them up. Yeah, we what's been up. submitted is definitely mm -hmm. kept and, and So kept. you have that, mm -hmm. and how are they kept? <laughs> they were on, well they're on a hard, we've got them backed up on a hard drive, but they're on one of the servers as well. Yes. And they're on the laptop. So they're because on your we servers. Don't really have an option. And what is the cost to keep them? Because you mentioned this fifteen hundred dollar cost. Right. So well, my, my reference is, we did that before with no concern, uh, no complaints from IT, and now I'm hearing concern from administration uh, about how we're going to keep these records. I, I really don't get the point currently. So. Uh, I think I'm not going to go along with this amendment here. I think it is wise to record them. I think the public benefits from that. Supervisors, if you want to go back and look something up, you have that availability, and I've used that many times throughout my years. So I would urge you to keep the recording in there. Thank you. Supervisor Cox. We were talking about this earlier. The committee chairs and other supervisors and, and directors 
haven't had a chance to sit down and actually go through the security issues, the abuse issues. The public comments, the closed sessions, all of those things are part of what we deal with on a business program where we're recording and where we're saving. But we have a way of shutting down abuses by you know, cutting the mics and doing those sort of things. I don't know that everybody's aware of how to go about doing that. And this program of recording each and every committee and they're small committees. They're not, they're not large gatherings. Still face the same sort of security and the same sort of abuses by people you know, getting in the way with the recording or people not wanting to speak on, in a recorded environment. And I don't think anybody's given that any thought before throwing this motion out on the floor and actually putting this statement in our rules. And I think we need to actually get together, and Mr. Mr. Peschel's right, get together and sit down and figure out what and why we want to go about making a rule to record everything and store it forever. That's all I got. Supervisor Albert. Supervisor Stafford asked to use my mic. Oh, okay. He's helping me out. Thank you. Uh, it's okay if I speak, Mr. Chair? It's yes. Not on. All right, thank you. Um, it's not on. Well, Mike's not on. There it is. Do I go up? Do oh, no. oh, now it's on. All right. Perfect. No, I seem to lean a little bit. Um, Two comments, uh, real quick. The first is, I'm, I'm, I'm a little confused in that we're debating a current rule. And I think we need to understand what we're debating. We're not debating necessarily, I mean, now there's an amendment strike reported, but we keep debating this idea of a reported rule, but yet it's already a rule. So if, if this resolution goes away, the rule still stands. Like, I just want to make sure everyone understands that that rule is in place. And, and we keep debating it. If it's in black, that's what currently is in the books. I just want to make sure that everyone understands that completely. Because we keep going back and debating a rule that actually this resolution doesn't really impact, or a part of the rule, rather. Um, so that's one. The second is on the, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, okay because we did talk about this at JPS, the uh, record retentions of seven years. It's a little vague that this would fall under that seven years. We would default to that, but it doesn't explicitly call it out. And from what I recall, there's work being done right now <clears throat> to address this issue because everyone's in the same boat. You know, when COVID hit, we, everyone was forced, slam forced into doing uh, more of a technology-based communication, right? And we're all kind of learning as we're going along. And so I think it's also good to understand that the seven-year figure may or may not actually be the figure that we are going to have to abide by. It's what we're defaulting to because we have no other information at this point, though the rule doesn't explicitly call out that, and we know that work is being done to address that, but we just don't know what that is at this point. And just to be clear, when I set an inquiry out to corp councils across the state regarding this, again, the consensus was, if you do not have anything in your record retention policy regarding videos, and we do not at this point, then the default is seven years. But yes, there is discussion. But the consensus was seven years, and I actually believe even Clerk Ertmer spoke with someone from elections. Wisconsin Historical Society. 
from the Wisconsin Historical Society who echoed that seven-year holding pattern if we don't have something on the books. So in, in that way, then the, the fix is a variety of areas. One would be that we would go back to our retention, right? I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I think it's important that people understand this, that we can go back to our retention document, the, policy. the title, but the, the document and explicitly call that out in the time frame in which we want to keep. Yes, the board could do that. The board could do that, and then we wouldn't be Dealing bound with seven to year. seven years. So I just think that it's important that people understand the complexity around the seven years, that it's not just a hard and fast item at this point. Well, since we don't have anything in the record retention policy, based on what I've seen, I would say seven years is the default, but you are absolutely right, Supervisor Stafford. If this board so chose to supplement the record retention policy to address video recordings, they could set a time shorter than seven years. And that's what we would be bound by at that point. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Are we discussing the, the amendment? Amendment yet. I'm just going to say that. I'm waiting for him to talk. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the seven years has to do with it. Would we end recording? Supervisor Hintz. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, again, uh, what uh, Supervisor Stafford was saying is that this original rule was passed with recording on it, and it was an, an effort for us to be more transparent. Um, I don't, I don't think we should get rid of the recorded part of that. That's, I mean, they went back to committee, they cleaned up the resolution through committee, got their, got all their ducks in a row, and it came back here. And now people want to take the recorded and recorded part out. It just seems like we're not dealing with what they actually presented us. All of a sudden, we're taking a different stand on this amendment. And I think if they want to talk about the recordings, I think that's something for at a future date where we have more information, perhaps that goes back to committee and they discuss it more and they get together with information services and they, and they talk more with the city of Oshkosh and other municipalities in the area. But I think it would be um, doing a disservice to what we intended to vote for removing and record it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Supervisor Foam. Mr. Chairman, I move to call the question on the Nichols Amendment. Second. Made and seconded to call the question. So that takes precedence, and this will be on the amendment. We're voting on the amendment. Unless you want to do it by voice, all those in favor of calling the question signify by saying aye. 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 Say nay. Nay. Carried. It's carried. Now that you got it in there. Now that you've got it in there. So hold on. I got to. That was the amendment. Now, now we'll go back on the. We'll be back on the original. Okay, so now that. Now we're on the amendment. Okay. <laughs> so we're ready to vote on it? We're voting on the amendment now. Do you want to read, read what the amendment is? So okay. Go ahead okay, and read it again. Do you want me to read it again? Okay. She's reading okay. it again right now. Okay. The amendment, do you want the whole um, the whole resolution or just the change? Okay, so the change is to on line 10, uh, well, line 9, live streamed or digitally broadcast, remove the words and recorded. The live stream platform must include an option for the public to make a video. So it removes the words and recorded on line 10 
and changes broadcasted to broadcast. That's your amendment you'll be voting on now. On the amendment. But you want it or you don't, A or nay. And this is just a majority, correct? And you'll Rachel. have to ask Mr. Stafford oh. his oh. vote oh. when it comes time. Nay. Nay. Okay. And then Supervisor Youngquist. Could Supervisor she? Youngquist, uh, she's not here. She's on Zoom. Oh, I'm sorry. Supervisor Youngquist? A or nay? Thumb down. Okay. okay. And Supervisor Gordon? Supervisor Gordon? Nay. I'm going to ask for Supervisor Eisen. I'm not he, sure if he's on or not. No. He's no, he's not. not. Okay. okay. Yes, 23 no, zero abstains. So that passes, right? No, that fails. Fails, I meant. That yes. fails. Mm -hmm. Right. So we'll go back to the original uh, amendment. A resolution because that failed mm -hmm. okay we got a few call-ins here supervisor powers thank you mr. chairman um, I would take issue with uh, two, two comments I would take issue with the idea that IS would have to follow around and record the parks tour uh, tomorrow they didn't do it on May 16th for the for the annual tour um, that we the bus tour that we took I, I thought that out that we were not going to do that the second point I was going to make was that guest speakers of commissions where there is sensitive information given and sensitive questions are asked are against being recorded um, one of my fellow supervisors publicly shared uh, comments made by a guest speaker at one of the commissions and the guest speaker is very leery about ever agreeing to be a guest speaker again if they're going to if she's going to be recorded this is a um, there are there are things that we do that have a sensitive nature that this shouldn't we shouldn't be doing this. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to let Supervisor Dowling speak next because she could probably answer that question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I did want to clarify, Supervisor Powers, uh, the tour that we had was just listed as a tour on the county board website with a possible quorum, so that would be different in definition. Um, whereas tomorrow morning our park board meeting is listed as a meeting with an agenda that we have to approve before the meeting starts. So that would be different. Um, and then I also wanted to jump back and address Supervisor Peschel's concerns over cost. Um, my full-time job is digital media. That's what I do. I've been doing it for the last 15 years. Just to give everyone an example, um, as far as digital file storage is concerned, I can go buy a $89 four terabyte hard drive right now at a big box store. That um, would cover, my math here scribbled on this piece of paper, we could fit about 222 meetings on that one device. I'd suggest that we purchase two of them so that we have an identical backup. So we'd be looking at about $180 worth of storage. I also like to use for my personal business, Online cloud storage, I use a service called Dropbox. I pay $19 a month for that. I think there's a quick, cheap, affordable solution for this. Supervisor Challenger. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'd like to offer an amendment um, on line nine to change the word shall to may and add uh, on line 11 at the end of uh, after comment add the Winnebago County Board strongly encourages meetings to be held in this hybrid manner whenever possible. Second. Motion made and seconded. Supervisor Bender on the amendment. Supervisor Cox on the amendment. No. Mm, let's see. Supervisor Perry on the amendment. No, sir. Thank you. Supervisor Hansen on the amendment. Yes, a question for Corporation Council. In making that amendment, 
um, of shall or may? What is the legal implication or difference between the two? Shall is a directive. May indicates you have discretion. And I, can you, who, can we just get the last, the person who made this amendment again, Winnebago County Supervisor Board? Challenger. Yeah. Guess, can we go? Uh, Strong. Strongly encourages meetings to be held in this hybrid mode okay. whenever possible. Thank you. Supervisor Norton on the amendment. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Let me, one reason that's brought forth, and I'm wrong again, Supervisor Dowling, you correct me, is that the Diversity Affairs Commission, which I used to be a member of, they have program meetings, and not every one of their program meetings is recorded. And if they're not recorded, you can't see them. So this would be a very murky thing. You're telling them that, well, you can record them if you want, you can, it's up to you. Well, I guess, you know, I can get some heat from some of those diversity first community members or staff people who help, but I think they should be recorded. I think you can limit what can be recorded, but I think they should be recorded because they are a business and or educational meeting of a commission board or committee of this county board. So I guess that's why I would speak against it because the way I read it, you're giving that individual committee, possibly the individual committee chairman, the right to say, well, this can be recorded, that can't be recorded. We can have hybrid, but I get to decide. No, I, I think you have to have unilaterally and you have to have it conformity and I think you have to say either record it or not and I think recording it is where I stand. Thank you. Supervisor Dowling. Thanks. I just wanted to address Supervisor Norton's concern. Um, yes, our Diversity Affairs Commission meetings were not being recorded, specifically the educational meetings. Um, so, for example, in the month of May, we did a talk on mental health awareness. Because the meeting went from 3 to about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, only 56 people attended the meeting, which to me is disgusting. Uh, we have 170,000 people or more living. Sorry. Okay. Just gotta go back to... Thank you. Um, we just, we have a huge amount of people in our county. So actually um, for June, the Diversity Affairs Commission hosted a new meeting um, around the, I guess, LGBTQIA+. We recorded the speaker and then stopped the recording so that questions could be asked privately. It worked very well. Supervisor Peschel. Sure, thank you, Chairman. And I, I guess my question is, you know, with Shell, we have some very strong direction of expectation of, of that meetings are going to be recorded. Um, how, how do we determine the, the, the May? And I guess that, that would be my, my question. And, you know, and, and for me, I would want there to be a certain process that, um, you know, uh, that boards, commissions, um, and such would, would have to follow, consistently follow, to determine uh, the, the May. So I would have some concerns in, in not having that, that created and going forward. I mean, obviously we can pass it tonight and uh, tomorrow our Corporation Council will have to start creating, working on the, uh, the May part of that. Uh, but um, but uh, I guess I would, would, prefer, would be much more comfortable providing that flexibility if we had some insight on what that would look like. So, and I don't, I don't know that we do in the room. Do you have any? Okay, <laughs> just was wondering. Okay, I see no one else, so, oh yes, you do. Supervisor Challenger. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think we have a lot of rules that offer, uh, that offer sort of latitude and direction to, to committees uh, and to this board about, about how it proceeds. Uh, I imagine that this would be one that, that, that uh, committees, boards, and commissions would be able to determine collectively the same way they determine uh, when a meeting is held, uh, for example. Um, I think what we, what this discussion today has illuminated is that our boards, committees, and commissions are 
very different. They have many unique aspects to them. Some of them are traipsing around a park. Some of them are held in, uh, in, in spaces with sensitive information uh, that has different levels uh, of, of what presenters and participants feel comfortable sharing in, in extremely public, uh, permanent recorded ways. Um, and, um, and then lastly, you know, I, I, I offered this amendment just to create some flexibility so that at the end of the day, if we have a computer that isn't, uh, isn't ready to record or isn't ready to broadcast or uh, we, have a, we have an issue with Zoom this morning, uh, many Zoom users, for example, were unable to log in between 8.30 and about 9.30 Central Time, um, uh, that we would continue to be allowed to proceed with our, with our, with our meetings in person uh, should we end up with some kind of a technology um, uh, deficit. I uh, hope we can pass this. I think it's important that we do continue to increase uh, access to our to our meetings, but I also uh, don't want that to come at the impediment of, of, of good work. Thank you. Supervisor Ponzer. Yes. Uh, as we were talking, and it came about the parks tour, and the other one said it's meeting on the notice of commission and board committee meetings, it's called a tour, and on the calendar, it's called a meeting. Now what? Thank the, you. All I can say is that there is a tour, but there's also a meeting along with it, so you've got them both. There's no meeting. The whole agenda is, is places we're visiting. So. There's a quorum of a committee. So there's, a, there's a quorum of a committee. Oh there's a meeting. <laughs> right. Anytime there's a quorum of a committee, it's a meeting. That's why it's got to be published that way. Supervisor Hintz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, first off, I just wanted to possibly answer the question that was just asked. One of the amendments that's on here says in buildings. The, obviously, a tour is not in a building. Right. That's an amendment that's on here in red. You can't look past that. And as chairman of the Planning and Zoning Committee, as you know, we have a Friday meeting mm -hmm. where we meet in the parking lot, and we are going to view a property out near the airport not in the building we don't have to record it it and on top of that the way our, our meetings with planning and zoning are set up on our middle meeting that's that's the that's the meeting where public input can come in that's the meeting that we would have to have zoom because we have to allow for public input now when we get to our deliberative meeting which is where we actually vote on everything that we discussed at that at that public meeting well, the public can't speak at that meeting, so maybe as chairman, I could suggest to our people, well, do we really need to even broadcast this? Because there's no public input allowed. But I would much, I, I, I'm saying I wouldn't do that, I'm, but that's what would be there for me if it was may instead of shall. And we could, if, and if you have the, the right mixture on a committee, they could say, you know what? Yeah, the public doesn't have any input on this, so we don't need to worry about broadcasting it. And there's less transparency. I just think it's a slippery slope and we need to think about that before we vote on this. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Supervisor Cox. Chair Mr. Chairman, you and Mr. Fari both had a significant amount of time with various committees. You've seen how Zoom works in various committees under various circumstances. We have not had an opportunity as individual chairman, Mr. Hintz, myself, haven't had an opportunity to sit down and hash out the individual circumstances that will give this a problem when you get ready to handle the recording later. And I'd like to say we table or set aside or postpone to a date certain and then take this on after we've had a chance to really sit down and get the wording right the way we want it. Well, we've got amendment on the table first, and then if you want to make one after that, but as of right now, you do have amendment on the table. And not seeing anyone else on the amendment, do you want to read that back, please, the amendment? On line nine, change the word shall to may, and on a line 11, after public comment, 
add the Winnebago County Board strongly encourages meeting to be held in this hybrid mode whenever possible. Okay. We'll vote, vote on that. Let me get it ready. Mm -hmm. So all in favor of that change signify by saying, not saying, punch on your boards either A or nay. Supervisor Gordon? Yay. Supervisor Youngwest? Youngwest? Can't sit. Can you see her? Thumbs down. Supervisor Youngwest? Thumbs down. No, thumbs down. Thumbs okay. Down. Okay. Can't see it on this side. Supervisor Stafford? Up oh, name. Okay. You can't log in? My, uh, my iPad broke. Oh, okay. Okay, all right, sorry. That That's fails. failed. Mm -hmm. That fails. So we're back again on the original. Supervisor Flom. Mr. Chairman, I move to call the question on the resolution as a whole. Motion is made and seconded to call the question. So I'm going to try and do it all. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Post say nay. Nay. Well, we better take a count okay. then to be sure. Yep. Okay. That's, that's two thirds, correct, Maria? Yeah. Two thirds. Okay. okay, they can vote now. Supervisor Youngquist? Youngquist? Thumbs up. Okay. And Supervisor Gordon? No. What was that? I think, was that nay? Nay, nay. Nay, nay. Okay. Okay. Nay. Okay. It passed. So now I'm going to try by voice. voice. Uh, all those in favor signify the whole thing, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. 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 Carried. Resolution number 61-062022, commendation for Dan Eberbeck. Supervisor Cox. I'd like to make a motion to accept the resolution 6106. Well, it's on here. It's on now. Okay, I'd like to make a motion that we accept the resolution 61062. 022, commendation for Dan Evercap. Motion made and seconded for the commendation for Dan Evercap. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Not hearing any, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Carried. Resolution number 6206 2022, amend the table of organization for Winnebago County Department of Human Services to eliminate two part-time administrative associate positions and add one full-time administrative associate for a position. Supervisor Harrison. Uh, I'll find you here now. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to introduce resolution 62-062022 to amend the table of organization for the Winnebago County Department of Human Services to eliminate two part-time administrative associate positions and add one full-time assist, uh, administrative assistant for position. Do I hear a second? Motion made and seconded. Discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? 
Not seeing any discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Carried. Resolution number 6306-2022 authorize a table of organization change of six certified nursing assistant full-time employment positions to six hospitality aid full-time employment positions for Parkview Health Center. Supervisor uh, Schallinger. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move for the approval of Resolution 63-06-2022, authorize a table of organization change of six certified nursing assistant full-time employment positions to six hospitality aid full-time employment positions for Parkview Health Center. Second. Second. Uh, this resolution and the next two seek to create some uh, uh, flexibility for our staffing at, uh, at Parkview. Uh, as Supervisor Binder alluded to earlier, uh, Parkview is is um, uh, not has not been able to to have all of its bed of it, beds available uh, for uh, for 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 residents. Um, and part of what this resolution is 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 seeking to do is create some flexibility amongst the positions that uh, that Parkview can hire. I also think it is complementary towards the new uh, soon to be opened uh, CNA training facility. Thank you. Advisor Ellenberger. I just want to make an um, amendment on this. Um, I was not there, so the 5 0 should be 4 0. Pass. Uh, oh, he was there? Okay, oh. never mind. Thank you. So you're talking about which thing you want to change? Oh, personal and fine. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yes, I did. Thank you. <laughs> Any other discussion? Any other discussion? Any other discussion? Not seeing all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. As opposed, aye. say nay. Carried. Item 64. 06 2022 authorize Parkview Health Center shift differential. Supervisor Challenger. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move for the approval of resolution 64 06 2022 authorize Parkview Health Center shift differentials. Uh, this resolution um, offers uh, what, what I think is both an industry standard for public nursing. Uh, homes as well as as well as private nursing facility uh, nur nursing in general. Um, uh, there, I think there's a sufficient amount of uh, uh, or, uh, additional information to to compare the the industries. Uh, but one thing I'll note with this is it's is this is you know this is really to help us get a little bit more uh, out of some of the staff that we already have um, uh, working working for us. One of the ways. That we uh, that that we make up gaps if we don't have them if we don't have the the right staff on a shift is by contracting out at much higher rates. Uh, so I also believe that part of uh, part of this resolution will close some of the contract contractual services uh, that the that the county has been paying. Thank you. Not seeing any other discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed aye. say nay. Carried. Resolution 6506-2022, authorize Parkview Health Center emergency staffing incentives. Supervisor Challenger. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move for the approval of Resolution 65-06-2022, authorize Parkview Health Center emergency staffing incentives. Uh, this resolution is, uh, is an opportunity for Parkview administration to offer shift incentives uh, when, when we have critical, critical needs. Um, again, similar to the last resolution, this is um, <clears throat> uh, th this is this is essentially going to be a cost savings uh, in a lot of ways, as uh, as as otherwise the county can, is going to need to provide uh, provide staff in these positions and has to go out to contractual services. Thank you, Supervisor Dowling. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a quick question: On line thirty, fiscal impact was left blank. Um, is that correct? Can you answer that? Or can anyone answer for me? Thank you. I, I'm not sure if uh, the finance director has a thought, but I think you know. I think the the uh, 
the, as, as we understood it, the fiscal impact is sort of neg uh, negated. The costs that the county incurs are negated by the, the contractual services that the county doesn't pay. I'm not sure that, I'm not sure if an like a one for one analysis was done for that because part of it is uh, it's a voluntary, it's a voluntary program. Nobody's getting forced to work extra hours. So uh, my understanding would be that as an employee accepts the, um, uh, additional staffing, you know, it is it is sort of paying a higher rate for labor than we would pay that person otherwise, but lower than what we would have to go out to, co to contract. Does our finance director have something? Will, will this one work now? Is this working? Yep. Yeah. Right, thank you. Um, no, I apologize for that. Thank you for pointing that out. I did write a fiscal impact note for this resolution, but um, I suspect uh, due to uh, administrative confusion uh, it didn't get included in the packet with the right version if you would permit me I will read the fiscal impact statement that I wrote which I have on another version of the document in front of me right now uh, the fiscal impact was that the cost of these incentives including wages and related fringes could be as much as thirty nine thousand forty three dollars in any given week when there was a statch, uh, a staffing emergency. This would of course only apply to weeks in which the administrator declared a staffing emergency. This figure assumes that all four incentives are used in every qualifying open shift for that week. Management would determine which if any incentives are actually in use for each staffing emergency uh, and no budget transfer is requested. Not seeing any other discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Carried. Resolution 6606-2022, authorizing capital project and funding of $1,068,427 from bond proceeds to design and construct a residential facility for release 980 violent sex offenders. Supervisor Wise. Find you here. <laughs> Where is he? In the back, up at the top. Oh, yeah. Right there. There you go. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move for the approval of resolution number 66 062022. This is the 980. Motion made and seconded. Supervisor Powers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm always confused when there's a when there's an either or. So this is going to be funded either with a transfer from the undesignated general fund balance or an advance from the general fund. I think we need to know which one it's going to be, don't we? Shouldn't this be clear that we know what we're voting on? Corporate counsel, finance director. I'd like to. Yeah. Um, I'd like to address that. Thank you very much for the question. Um, under our fund balance policy, so the way we've, we've started doing uh, um, bonding is we just want to issue one bond issue per year, of course. It's more efficient that way uh, rather than doing a separate bond for each particular project where we might want to do bonding because there's significant expense in issuing the bond, significant process that has to go through. It does require two different county board resolutions, for instance, to issue bonds. So what our investment policy or our fund balance policy now dictates is that after the uh, annual reports, the financial reports are done for the previous year, we're supposed to look at the fund balance in the undesignated general fund. And there's a target range at which we want to keep the fund balance to make sure we have sufficient to tide us over in the event of unforeseen uh, uh, financial situations, but not too much so that we're stockpiling money, if you will. Um, so there's a range that's been established by the county board. I think it was in 2019 um, when that policy was adopted. So after we look at that, I look at, at the fund balance. I look at the target range, which involves some calculations in terms of what our average monthly expenses are and determine if we're over or under the range or within the range. If we're over the range, as we usually have been, we are directed by the policy to develop a plan to address that either through the budget or through using fund balance uh, instead of in place of borrowing. 
So last year we used quite a bit of fund balance instead of borrowing because of this policy. So this language was developed with advice from our bonding advisors. So the way we do it now is we, uh, for capital projects, put in the resolution that it will be advanced from the general fund undesignated balance and then either we'll reduce the fund balance if we make the determination we need to reduce the fund balance or will be then replaced through a later bond issue. So we do our bond issue late in the year, normally November, once we know how many projects have been approved throughout the year, since we don't usually approve any in December, and uh, replace the money that way. So it's just not known yet whether we're going to want to bond for this or not, but we need that language in order for bond council to approve our use of bond proceeds for this purpose. So this comes from our bond attorneys that want to see that language in the resolutions. Otherwise, we would have to do the full bonding resolution, meaning we have to have a resolution to authorize a bond, uh, go through the administrative expense. We have to hire, um, you know, Baird or someone like them to, to actually prepare the bonds and market them. And, and then another resolution to accept the, the bond price that is bid. You know, so it's a fairly complicated process. Uh, we don't want to do that every time. So this is the procedure recommended by our, our, by our bond council. So it's not going to be my decision. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll prepare the numbers and sit down with the uh, county executive to develop a plan if we need to apply fund balance. But... Uh, if, if we are going to borrow, this won't be the last word. There will be a uh, resolution you know, authorizing the issuance of bonds and a sale of bonds. Then they'll actually you know, market the bonds, see what interest rate we can get, and then another resolution from the board to, to accept the interest rate bid and, and issue the bonds. So that will happen at the end of the year if it happens. Last year, because we applied a lot of fund balance, we only borrowed four million, but really kind of a pl as a placeholder and we paid it back quickly because we had the fund balance. So it's not at all sh sh certain that we'll have as much fund balance this year because we did reduce it quite a bit in the last year's borrowing cycle. So I know that's a little complicated, but I hope that helps the board understand the process. And why we really need the language in there that says it will be advanced from the general fund. We need that so that we can start bids for the project now and then it will be either stay in the general fund, in other words, reduce the fund balance, or be replaced by the borrowing proceeds. And that'll cover the next, the next number 67 as well. It'll, yeah, right. there are three yeah. that I, I believe okay. in the current agenda that, that will be handled that way, and uh, pretty much every large capital project. Okay, thank you. Yes. And just to avoid any further confusion, to follow bond council's recommendations and what um, um, Mr. Collard said, you will see there's going to be different language on, on this resolution that should have been provided to all of you at the start of this meeting. Uh, so there would be need to be an amendment um, that I believe um, Supervisor Wise was going to make to follow the recommendations of the language required via bond council. Supervisor Norton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a couple of questions. First, how many units will this be for? Six, we got that, okay. My second question is, um, will the state of Wisconsin pick up all the costs after they are built? I don't think so. Well, what they pick, well, do you know? Someone to answer that. Uh, if, would you like me? What, go ahead. Yeah, I'm sure Mary I can answer it too, but the six units for one thing is based on our current construction estimate. If the costs come in high, then, then we'll build a smaller um, building with four units. So there is a possibility of it being fewer than six if the costs are too high to build six because we want to limit it to this dollar amount. Well, but the other issue is on the state funding. There's no guarantee from the state that any of these will be filled with okay. 980 residents. When the state does have a 980 resident that we need to house, they've been paying fairly generous rental payments. Uh, so 
if one or two of these on average is occupied, it'll probably pay the expense, but we have no guarantee okay. of that. There are some other options we would follow if, if they're all left vacant and the state doesn't pay well, for them. Well, thank you for that answer. Mm -hmm. I was gonna vote for it before I heard that answer, and I'm gonna vote against it after that answer, because when I called the, the WCA offices, they told me the other counties that have the same problem, Brown, Racine County, they're not doing anything right now. And why should we flip the bill, build these units, and then you know what, I, I really fear this, that a couple of years from now, they're gonna say, hey, you did that, Winnebago County or whomever, you pay for everything. You pay for the, uh, the security, you pay for the housing, and I tell you, until we get some guarantee from the state, I really think they should pay, I think they should pay for building them in the first place. So and what I've been hearing, I heard that Brown County and Racine are not doing anything right now. That's why I'm voting for against it right now. Thank you. Supervisor Norton, I'd just like to throw a little bit in there. I don't know how many of the other counties you just mentioned has the possibility of having seven or eight of the sex offenders already being let loose, which we've already got our names on. And we've got three this year that we know for sure that's going to be coming well, out by December. It, it, it still won't defray me. Brown County, I, I, I named two of them, maybe more. When, they call, when I called on the WCA offices, I said, what's Brown County and Racine doing? They said, nothing. They're waiting for seeing something done. That's what they told me in the WCA office. Supervisor Gustafson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think ultimately the question we need to ask ourselves is, if we know that we have these individuals being released, do we want them even remotely close to any neighborhood, anyone where you've lived, or anywhere in these communities that have actually had to house them, like uh, Wolf River or uh, I know Supervisor Egan, Chairman Egan's uh, district as well? So ultimately, I'll, I will be voting in favor of this. Uh, I think it's going to be the best solution we have and uh, best utility of that space, too, that we have designated for this. Thank you. Supervisor Defferding. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I wholeheartedly support this uh, resolution, and uh, I clearly remember uh, this being dropped in our lap, um, you know, several years back. And I, and I know this is like one of the very first things that uh, Corporation Council had to take on upon getting this position, and it was just a, um, it was a, a very much a fire drill um, because uh, this was a, a bipartisan bill that uh, passed in the state legislature. And uh, they all agreed that this is now the county's responsibility. Um, and uh, that's per their legislation, they said that this is now the county's responsibility. So I certainly understand that uh, it would certainly be nice to have the state fund this, but uh, that's, not what, uh, that's not what the state said. They said that this is now the county's responsibility upon these 980 sex offenders being released. Um, and so, uh, we had to take it upon ourselves to uh, to figure out what to do, and uh, we found a perfect location that happens to be by the sheriff's office, and uh, um, and in in a way, these people are essentially going to be homeless anyway. So uh, you know, if this is something that we ask our residents: is you know, what uh, what al what alternative would you like to have? You know, it's either this or they could possibly be in your neighborhood, and uh, I think that this is a price that they would gladly pay. Um, to make sure that they're in a safe location, they're in a location that's uh, very, uh, very close to a sheriff's office, and uh, so we're essentially doing something about it. And uh, so I, I praise the county and I praise all of us for butting our heads together and figuring out a solution. And uh, we, we're doing it. Thank you, Supervisor Powers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would just remind of. Um, Supervisor Norton, this is something we really have to do. If we do not do it, we could be levied a fine of $1,000 a day. And that $1,000 a day goes to the sex offender, which means in the course of a year, he'd make more than a quarter million dollars off of us. We have to build these things. Thank you. Supervisor Wise. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was just re realized that I do have to make an amendment. I have to uh, ask for this amendment to be approved. Uh, the language in the very beginning of it and farther down the, the, the new language. So I would like to uh, put that on the table. This is on 66062022. And it is now, it is a... Uh, Are you talking into your mic, Supervisor Wise? Or? Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, it, is, uh, the, the, it is, it is what, 
that is something that was just given to us this, this afternoon when we came in here, the new language on it. So what was it again? Uh, excuse me, this? We, we couldn't hear you before in the beginning. Oh, okay. All right, this is on 66-062022. We were just given new language on this when we all came into the office here, or into the office, into the, this room. And I'm going to be uh, asking that we accept this amendment uh, to the, the uh, original resolution. I think you got a question. Okay, to clarify it, I'm gonna remove from line three the words bond proceeds. From bond proceeds. From bond proceeds. And replace it with the words. And replace it with the words to design and construct a residential facility for released 980 violent sexual offenders funded with either the transfer from the undersigned, undesignated general fund balance or an advance from the general fund to be reimbursed with a subsequent bond issue. And, and uh, also line, uh, line 20, 22, 22 take, out, take out from bonding, bonding pro proceeds and insert to be funded either from transfer of undesignated general fund balance or an advance from the general fund to be reimbursed with a subsequent bond issue. And then, and then also the physical impact. 1,068,427 will be funded with either a transfer from the undesignated general fund balance or an advance from the general fund to be reimbursed with a subsequent bond issue. Don't shoot the messenger. Is that your motion? <laughs> is that your motion? Thank you. Supervisor Wise, is that a motion? Is that a motion, Supervisor Wise? I'm sorry. Is that your motion? Yes, that's your motion. Thank you. Do I hear a second? Motion made and seconded. Okay, these here were lit up before, but Supervisor Hintz, on the motion that he's just added on to, or his amendment, I should say, his amendment that he added on to. So, so we're just going to speak on the amendment right now? We're just going to go on them because that has to I be voted on. I will come back up after we okay. take a vote on this. Supervisor Peschel on the amendment. He read that, they said. Yes. Okay, well, I, I, I must have been speaking. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, not seeing anyone else on here. All those in favor of the amendment signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed aye. say nay. Nay, nay. Carried. You hit your button too late, so. I'll get it on the next one. All right, now back to the rest of the vote here. Uh, Supervisor Hintz. I got it. Your light, come on. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as someone who served. Thank you. Um, as someone who served on the City of Oshkosh Plan Commission when this came through the City of Oshkosh, the fact that we actually found a place that the city of Oshkosh was amenable to allowing to have this built on it should speak volumes about how, good, how the appropriateness of this location. And for those of us who were on the tour, we saw just how quickly our county police officers can get there because it's right there in their backyard and there's nobody else around in that area. So I, I will wholeheartedly support this. Thank you. Supervisor Swan. Yeah, um, I really don't know why the county wouldn't want to control the development process on a project like this when they reimbursed rent and operating expenses, the capitalized, the capitalized value of which covers the cost. It covers the investment the county would make. So 
I don't see why we should be concerned about taking this on as a county when when substantial rent and reimbursement ex for rent and expenses is will be forwarded from the state for the residents. So I'm, so I'm in favor. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I so thought you're done. I'm, so I'm, I'm in favor. Supervisor Bender. I too will be supporting it, but I, I want to make sure that the state is on board with this. I know they don't like the buildings being attached. And before we stick a lot of money into this, I want to, Mr. Elders to make sure that the state will approve this and that we don't get these built and they say they don't comply. Like the trailer, they don't want two people in that trailer because of HIPAA laws. And when they're talking to their medical people, there, there is no privacy. So just for clarifications, we want to make sure that this is going to be acceptable to the state, that we're not going to build six units. And if we have to put two or three feet in between them, it may be added cost, but we want to make sure that these six units are going to be usable when they're complete. And that's my only concern. I, I, I don't want to spend a, over a million dollars of the taxpayer's money and then the state say, well, no, you can't put them next door to each other. They can hear through the walls. So we, we just got to make sure that the state is going to accept this as a viable plan and that this is going to go forward and be able to be used with six people in the buildings and not that we only can use three of them because of the, the HIPAA laws. Like the trailer, they don't want to put two in the trailer because it's not basically private. That trailer, they could have two in. The problem was what's happening with this one that was going back and forth. That person that's coming out now needs another person to help for whatever reason, so they couldn't put three in there. But that trailer was designed to have two people in there. Corporate counsel. If I can just respond, and I know Sheriff Montz is here and Mr. Elder is here, and they should feel free to supplement what I'm going to say. When we have been looking into this, we had reached out to the state, and I wanted a written guarantee that they would accept this housing. They refused to provide that to me. That is why, with the design that's been put together, if it would not be able to be used for six 980 sex offenders. I know Mr. Elder had indicated it could be used for different purposes. I also know that Sheriff Motts had spoken with the state, and Sheriff Motts, would you be willing to advise the board what you learned? But I will tell you, I specifically asked for a written document, and they would not give that to me. I'll tell you. Yeah, I, I did speak to the state. I spoke to the person who runs the 980 program. She said that she couldn't give a written guarantee that it would be for every offender because we have an offender now that is coming out that has some special needs, and they don't want that offender in with another one. But she said 99% of the offenders that come out will fit into this type of setting. It's just this one particular offender has some uh, issues that I can't discuss because there's HIPAA-related. However... Uh, I, you know, I feel confident that we are going to be able to put our offenders in this facility. And we have a court appearance on Friday, or Thursday, Thursday, and we have another meeting next week about offenders that are coming out. So we hope that by, uh, if you pass uh, this resolution tonight and the funding is available, that they will delay the, the release of those offenders until this is built. And then we'll have a spot for them. We don't have to uh, change the quality of life for all of our other neighborhoods. So I'm confident that this is the, the best solution for Winnebago County. And there are other counties that are doing that. There are other counties that have built facilities. So wherever you got your information from, I know that other counties have done it. Including, I would add, Door County is one of them. Um, and again, just to... Um, remind some of the board because I know not all of you were here when this all came up um, we have hundred and twenty days to find housing when we are notified of um, a potential release of a 980 serious sex offender and per statute we could face up to eleven $1 hundred dollars per day for uh, fines if we do not come up with this housing um, so and you never know when uh, someone is going to be released. 
we routinely ask, I know Sheriff Motz's people routinely ask, we have been dealing with this one person and um, then we found out when we were in court for this, this person that, oh, by the way, there's another person coming out and there's probably gonna be a third one coming out this summer. So realize if that were to be the case and we were not able to find housing within 120 days, we could be facing $3,300 in fines per day per offender. So it is critical to try to, to you know, make efforts. I understand it. And like I say, my concern is that when we build these, I want to make sure they're usable. I don't want to spend a million dollars of the taxpayers' money and the state says, well, no, they ain't going to basically meet their, their needs. And they won't give you a written guarantee, so we're taking their word that this is going to work. So hopefully, you know, we, we don't end up with a, we have a trailer that could hold two, that we have one in, and then they, they've tried to put two out in Rushford, you know. So it, it's like, I, I want this, but I want to make sure it's going to work. And, and, and actually, the state doesn't get to determine that. The legislation is very clear that the county determines where these individuals go, and the court is the one that decides whether or not it's appropriate. So for the state to say that they won't go there, that actually they don't have that, the legislation doesn't allow it. So as long as our judges are convinced that this is what's best for Winnebago County and the offender, that's where they go. Sounds good. Supervisor Gabbard. Just a quick question for Sheriff Motz. So if we have 120 days to place someone, we're not gonna get this done in 120 days because government doesn't move that fast. So what could happen with this special needs inmate when we're given 120 days, where do we go with that person? There, there's one of three things that can happen. Number one, the court can say he's not ready for release. He's got so many issues that he's not ready to be released. Number two, he could be placed in the trailer. They, the court could say, well, the state of Wisconsin is going to have to make it work. Okay. Uh, and the third option is, yeah, they start over and we look for another facility. And that's where this facility comes in if, we see, if the funding is, is uh, given. Yes, it won't, it'll take longer than 120 days, but there are some that are being delayed in the county of Racine that have gone on for a year where they're looking for housing. And so um, hopefully the court will see that the good faith effort is being made by Winnebago County and the facility will be, be will be built. Now, you, most of these offenders have been in there for years. This particular particular one with special needs was 19 years. And I think our first one was in 20, and then went back for three more before that. Do you happen to know the status of the person that's in the trailer right now on when they will be evaluated to to be released out of there? The, the typical time frame is two, a year, two and a quarter years that they spend. Now, some spend um, longer than that. Some uh, spend a little less than that. I think he's going to be coming up on a year and a half if I'm just by memory. Uh, so we have more than about nine months un, under typical circumstances, and then he uh, would be released. But he's evaluated. I don't know what his status is. And, again, that's... Uh, uh, based on his counseling rehabilitation, which I don't have any knowledge of. So when we first started this gig, back in 2017, we were told they stay in a, I'll say county provided, um, because the city can't provide it, so we are. For a year, under supervision, and then they're evaled, and then they can go out and live anywhere as long as they register as a sexual predator. Now you're telling me it's more like two years. The average is two and a quarter years for a 980 sex offender. Okay. Correct. Okay, thank you. Supervisor Horan. Uh, don't leave yet. I, as as y'all were speaking about this when we first came on board, I understood that there was going to be a 24-hour supervisor on each one of these uh, sexual offenders. Is that correct? Just the offender who has special needs. The, the state has determined his rehabilitation plan uh, would require 24-hour supervision. That's part of the concern about placing him with another sex offender, is that two sex offenders and one person uh, supervising the one with two sex offenders in the trailer. So that's part of the concern. 
No, we don't provide that. That's provided by the no, state. Uh, yes, and uh, I understand that. I was just looking at the at the housing and saying, oh, there's one bedroom. Where is that person who's watching over them sleeping? Yeah, well, they don't do a 24-hour shift. Obviously, there's different shifts, but it is 24-hour supervision for that. That's so the that, only offender that I uh, have ever heard of that has had that intense of supervision, which maybe the court decides they're not ready for release. Yeah. Um, so the supervision that goes on with any of the other ones is determined as an eight hour, uh, you know, somebody watching over them for eight hours or it's strictly no. done by the, brace, uh, the bracelet on their ankle? Yes, the bracelet on their ankle and any time they leave the residence, they have to be accompanied by uh, a chaperone that is paid for by the state to go to medical appointments, go to uh, counseling, et cetera. Okay, thank yep. you. Thank you. Okay, not seeing any other questions. Uh, this will call for a two-thirds membership vote, so we'll have to vote on our iPads. Supervisor Youngquist? Aye. And Supervisor Gordon? And that passed. Next, number 6706-2022, authorize a revised capital project for the Winnebago County Facilities Department to build a sheriff's office evidence storage and coroner's office slash morgue building at the additional cost of $1,524,580, funded with either a transfer from the undesignated general balance or an advance from the general fund to be reimbursed with a subsequent bond issue. Supervisor Wise. Hold on here a minute. Uh, there you go. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move for the approval of resolution 67 062022. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Any discussion? Not seeing. Oops. Supervisor Gustafson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm just looking at the committee vote here, and I'm just a little curious about how the personnel and finance uh, came to that kind of almost split decision if anyone is willing to speak up on that. What was this question? Just uh, with the personnel and finance uh, committee vote, it's a 3-2 vote and I was wondering if the dissent would be willing to share their point of why they might have voted against this. Supervisor Nussbaum. Yes, I was one that voted no, and the reason I did was I'm convinced we need the evidence garage. I'm almost completely convinced that we need the cooler, but I'm not convinced we need the coroner's office. That's why I voted no. And Steve Binder can also speak on this. Supervisor Binder. I too. I, I, right now, all our autopsies are, are done in Fond du Lac County. So we, we basically do no autopsies here. The examination room right now, it's, it's done at a hospital, which is basically, it's a sterile environment. I would hate to see us do that in-house and then basically have a contaminated piece of, of skin and it uh, gets thrown out of evidence because it wasn't sterile. We just gave our facilities six more units to, to maintain you know, this isn't the cost of this. this. This building has to be basically maintained. You know, it's got to be heated. It's got to be cooled. You know, we pass this stuff like millions of dollars, like there's a checkbook that it doesn't have any end to it. You know, I mean, Final Act County, I think, has 24 coolers. Outagamie County is bigger than ours. They don't have a morgue. You know, I'm willing to go along with adding some storage for, for the, the bodies, but the rest of it, I, I think, is, is more of a want than a need. We, we basically do our autopsies in, in Fond du Lac. We do the, the tissue sampling and everything at a hospital. You know, we, we built a Uber Center. We tore it down. Three years ago, we were going to build two more pods on the jail for $19 million. We, we didn't build them. Now we got two empty. 
You know, right now we got a, a crisis maybe with the, the opioids, and in a year from now it might be done. So now we're going to have a 12, basically, person cooler and examining room and all this for the facilities to maintain. And I listened to the facilities. Mike Elder already said he's understaffed, that he needs more people. So, you know, in the future he's going to be coming to us and asking for more people because we just gave him six more buildings to maintain. <laughs> you know, how can you do that with the existing staff? So before we keep spending money, I, I think we have to look, is it a need or a want? And this here is a want, it's not a need. We, we basically got by with the storage we had through the pandemic when people were using semi-trailers. Out of Gamey County still doesn't have this looking for a morgue. I, I just, I can't support it. I will support the, if they wanna put some coolers onto that building, they're, they're minimal, you don't have to clean them. But if you're gonna add an examining room, an office, a bathroom, a, a lunch room, Who's going to maintain it? Who's going to pay all that? I mean, the taxpayers were looking at inflation this year at over 8%. You know, how are they supposed to, you know, we gave last year the whole net property tax levy to the deputies, basically, to give them a, a, a raise so we could get some deputies and, and 911 dispatchers. We are, basically, our labor pool is short. We can't even staff Parkview at 100%. We got 36 empty beds. We need to pay our workers more. We, we can't just keep building buildings and, and think, well, we don't have to worry about the workers. The next budget, we got to pay the workers or we won't have any. So that's why I voted no. I see the corner in back if she'd like to come up and say anything or you can come right up here, right up in front if you'd like. Brian, if you want to go ahead while she's coming up, Supervisor Defferding. Oh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, in my personal opinion, I think this is, this is very much a need, not a want. Um, yeah, we're using uh, Fond du Lac, um, uh, their morgue, but that's really just to get by. Um, and uh, I, for me, as a person that votes no on a lot of spending bills, I find that uh, uh, the coroner's office is uh, 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 one of the most basic services that the county will, uh, should provide. And uh, so it's, uh, I, I think that this is something that uh, um, is a necessary role for Winnebago County uh, to have. Um, now, I personally, you know, my, my opinion of what is considered a want and need is probably gonna be very different from a lot of supervisors here. Um, but I think this is uh, considered to be um, not just a need, but one of the biggest needs. And uh, we have to make sure that we have, uh, that our uh, coroner's office has all the facilities needed to do their job correctly. Thank you. Come right up. This one was amended earlier than the last one. Okay, you want to introduce yourself? Some probably don't even know you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Cheryl Bramer. I'm the Winnebago County Coroner. Um, part of the issues that we're running into on why get we closer were... to your mic, please. Oh, I'm too short. <laughs> Part of the issues that, that we're running into on why we were asking for a, a morgue or a cooling facility is that um, Fond du Lac County right now does do all of our autopsies. There is a very limited a shortage of pathologists right now. So they are being utilized um, greatly by a lot of different counties and they do not have the capacity to store our bodies that are going down for autopsy. So any, at any given point, we are holding the bodies for anywhere between five and 12 days. Yeah, um, I'm sorry, I'm nervous here. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> uh, Another thing that we were running into was the amount of bodies that, that we were having to store due to an increase in overdoses and everything else. We were in certain cases, especially those that are being autopsied, have a criminal component to it, majority of the cases that we do. In that case, they have to be in a secured location for their storage. Technically, sadly, they're considered evidence. 
um, in the beginning when we first got hit with everything and Fond du Lac stopped allowing us to bring our bodies straight from the scene right down to, to their facility, these bodies were going to funeral homes all over the county. They were not considered um, secured. They were not in our care, custody, and control. We, at that point too, we were on scene calling funeral homes to find out, do you have room? Can you help us out? We had, like I said, nine bodies all over the county and weren't sure where to go with them. Realized that we can't continue doing this. Did end up um, borrowing a mobile morgue, a trailer from Clark County. Did that in November. We still have that trailer. We are still putting bodies in that trailer. Twice we've had um, situations where the trailer was going to be recalled from us. Um, so we were scrambling to find out once again, now where are we going to go with, with these bodies that have to be secure. Um, another issue I ran into last Thursday, um, I went to release the body and the internal temp of the trailer was 87.9. Um, it had failed. There was a leak somewhere. So once again, I was scrambling to try to find. Fond du Lac did make an exception this weekend. They, they accepted um, two bodies on Friday night um, when I called in a panic, not knowing where I was going to go. But that's not something that they can continue to do. Um, their autopsies are completed and they're wanting us to, to you know, get them out of there right away again. Uh, that's the main thing here. We did have contingencies set in place um, where if we did fall into some type of emergency um, that we could call upon um, a facility that would, would help us out. And when it came time to call upon them, um, they refused. Even though it was in writing, everything was there, they, they, re, they refused, um, which left us scrambling as far as things went. Um, in speaking of the exam room that is, is there, or that we're looking to have put in there, it is the minimum that is asked for the room to also be utilized by different agencies. Yes, it would be wonderful for us to be able to do better examinations, um, clean people up, especially when we're looking at um, gunshot suicides that were not necessarily autopsy, better photographic. Um, drawing toxicology, so we're not doing it on scene. We have a, a clean environment to be able to do that. But not only that, um, different agencies that do recovery of tissue or the cornea from the eye, right now what we're doing is we're making arrangements to have those bodies from, go from our scenes to a hospital so that stuff can be recovered at the hospital. In turn, the hospital is the one that gets that revenue for the use of their room. If we were to transport, we'd be able to take that body right back to our facility. They would be in, that, in, the, in the cooler until everything could be arranged. Those agencies would come to our morgue. They'd be able to utilize that exam room. That is revenue that would be brought to the county for the use of the room. Same with if families chose to do a private autopsy, um, there is one, pretty much one agent, one person right now that does them. She would be able to come to our facility and do that autopsy. In the future, it would be set up 17 by 17 is large enough if we were to have a pathologist come to us. Um, to be able, you know, to do autopsies. Having the offices added on to the morgue, uh, one, it would be a convenience, but it also would put us where we work. Right now we're making several trips sometimes a day, going back and forth between uh, the administrative building to the trailer and then back, being able to, you know, to do things. 
there are times I am in a meeting or I'm on a scene. Maybe my, I have a deputy that's also on a scene. So that's leaving it to our administrative assistant to run and do that intake or release. Does she mind doing it? Absolutely not. She doesn't mind at all. But that's taking her away from the office. It's taking her away from the desk. When families call in and they have questions, in their mind, it's urgent. And they, they want answers. So the first thing they're going to do is page that person that's on call. So versus having her at her desk to be able to talk to the families and answer that question, now the, we're on scene, but we're getting paged to step aside to talk to the families, not that we don't want to, because we do, but it's something that could be handled you know, by her there, and it wouldn't pull her away from her, from her duties that she has. Also with having um, morgue and cooling facilities, we do have a Ford Explorer that we are planning on um, outfitting. Um, kind of got some, some quotes on that. We're probably looking at somewhere around $800. But that would allow us to transport the bodies from the scene as well to our own facility. So then we would be cutting out the transportation cost of the livery service that we use because we'd be transporting ourselves. In addition to that, when we call the livery service and we were waiting for them to come, they're on the east side of, of Appleton. So sometimes we are looking at an hour to an hour and a half before they get to us. Not only are we there for that amount of time, but we are holding up law enforcement. So we are, are taking up their time while they are at the scene with us, waiting for that, that transport to come. I might have some questions here for you. Supervisor Gustafsson. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, so to start off, what's our current capacity uh, to for like the morgue for the amount of bodies, I guess, currently? The trailer? Sure, yeah. Um, the capacity of the trailer is 16. We can only utilize eight. We don't have a lift. Okay. And with this potential um, addition, um, what, what would our capacity be bumped up to? It would be 12. 12, okay. We'd be able to hold 12. Okay. And in the, I know there's kind of a comment about, we don't know if this uh, crisis of overdoses is going to just stop next year. Do you have a rough estimate right now of, uh, let's just say last month, how many overdoses uh, we had to deal with as a county? Are you talking fatal or are you talking non-fatal? Fatal. Fatal overdoses, I believe, as of right now, we are at, I think we have five pending okay. just from, um, well, middle of May till now. Um, I am able to state uh, we are also involved in last year when we had, you know, a great amount of, um, of overdoses in a short period of time. Members of um, Overdose Fatality Review and myself had got together and started kind of an overdose spike team to kind of let you know different agencies know what, what's going on and, and what we're seeing, which led to a pilot program as well with UW-Madison. All of the hospitals are involved, the emergency rooms from Winnebago County are involved in this pilot program as well. Every overdose, non-fatal, that comes into an emergency room is reported real time to this program. We get an alert every time we have more than three overdoses um, in a day, we get an alert that comes out, what they call a box alert. They also give us a monthly recap on overdoses. And I would say since the beginning of the year until just recently, we were somewhere between 32 and it was 49, somewhere between there on a monthly basis of what we were seeing for overdoses. The number for May was 59. With that number being 59, it does not include 
um, anybody who was treated unseen by EMS but refused transport, so they never made it to the ER, or those that are being treated by, you know, Narcan or whatnot by friends where EMS is never called. It is not, it, it, it's not slowing down. And I was gonna ask you, so how long have you been in the corner? Forgive me for not knowing that. <laughs> I have been the coroner since the end of 2019. Okay. I've been with the coroner's office since the beginning of 2012. Okay, and you would say there's a pretty good uh, indication that there's been a trend that continues to uptick with uh, this issue. Absolutely, and there's other trends that are coming. We've seen, we've seen it go from you know, heroin to heroin and fentanyl, then it was meth and fentanyl. They just keep coming. There's new products that are coming. There's a new benzo dope, which is benzodiazepines with fentanyl, which we are starting to see some of those come through. People are, are, are they're trying to find, in my opinion, they're trying to find a safer drug, so they switch to something else, and now fentanyl's making its way in that. People, you know, they quit doing heroin and went to meth because, her, you know, Heroin was where the fentanyl was being put in. Now meth is our biggest. Thank you very much. If you could get close to the mic, please. Some of them can't hear you. I'm you sorry. So soft. <laughs> Supervisor Dowling. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I actually had the pleasure of meeting our coroner on Monday. Um, so it's nice to see you again <laughs> so soon. Um, do you know the cost to transport the deceased to Fond du Lac currently? What we're paying per? 225. Pot? 225. Okay, perfect. And then um, do you know the cost for our hospital use of their facility? I believe the hospitals, it's somewhere between 350 and 400 is what I'm being told, but I haven't. Per use? Per use. Wonderful, thank you so much. Yep. Supervisor Plome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I just kinda wanna recap on the conversation. Relying on goodwill from Fond du Lac County and on a I guess a busted trailer from Clark County, plus the transportation costs down there, that's not sound fiscal logic. None of that is. And if we're seeing the overdose trends continue to go up, we're gonna have to future-proof ourselves. And I don't think anybody really enjoys spending money on things like this, but the fact of the matter is, it's better to be ahead of the curve than behind the curve. And there are certain things on this agenda tonight that are wants and not needs, and I think this is one of those needs. There are certainly other items that we could categorize as wants, but in the grand scheme of things, we only have, you said, eight units right now. I mean, heaven forbid that Sam Kaufman over in Fond du Lac says, nope, can't, can't use this. So, and then we're kind of SOL. So I'm gonna support this for that measure. <clears throat> uh, it's, it's sad that you know we're seeing more and more overdose deaths. Sheriff said we had 59 last month, fatal and non-fatal. Uh, so this is something that, in my opinion, I think is, is necessary, uh, heaven forbid, we have something bad happen in the future. Supervisor Bender. I would support the coolers, and uh, I, I just can't see supporting the rest of it. I, I don't think it's necessary. I mean, we just got a $10.3 million grant for a day-by-day -day warming shelter or sober living. We got a new program with the DA. If none of this stuff is gonna work, why do we, are we wasting the money? I mean, the DA took over half the Lauren King building to basically try to rehabilitate these people. I mean, if we're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars a year to, to educate and rehabilitate these people and it's not working, well then why are we wasting the money? You know, I mean, apparently what we're trying to do isn't working, but the day-by-day -day warmer shelter and, and the sober living hasn't even been built yet. So, you know, by saying that this is gonna get to be a bigger problem, I would like to think that the problem is gonna get better because we're spending money and, and resources to educate people, you know, and I would rather spend more money on education than see people die using drugs. You know, I, I'm all for the coolers. You know, it, it, that's, I have no problem with that. It's the rest of it. And then we have to think, we got a highway department that's gonna need a, probably 10 to, to $15 million worth of renovation. We got a lot of projects in the pipeline and if you can figure out how to pay for all this stuff, I'm on board, I'd love to have you have this. You know, if it's just a matter of, you know, me saying, yeah, go ahead. But in November, we gotta figure out how to pay for it. You know, and we, we gotta bond, and, and sometimes it's hard decisions, you gotta say no. What do you say, every project that came by here, I don't think we voted one thing down. 
But in November, when this board comes to basically figure out how we're going to pay for it all, I, I hope that we can figure it out because we keep spending money and I don't know where it's coming from. Supervisor Nussbaum. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I would probably be voting for this if the offices that weren't attached to this, but I don't see that as a need at all. A need at all. Supervisor Dowling. I, actually, it's me. Oops. I get so you I get right here. You can talk on your own. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I just want to reiterate, um, I also believe this is a need. Um, we are on a hope and a prayer for a trailer for Clark County that could call any day and say, we need it. They want it back. They want it back, and, and we're without a trailer. Like, I, like, literally, we're without a trailer. We're the eighth largest county in the state, and we're pleading with people to get the trailer from Clark County. Uh, hopefully, Fond du Lac will help us out, or another county will help us out. Smaller counties, for goodness sake, are helping us out here. And then we're hoping that the hospitals, and I just learned a few months ago that hospitals capacity are only about two. I mean, do the math. We only have a few hospitals in Winnebago. There's not a lot of capacity out there. So, you know, and the other thing is, is that it's beyond uh, the coroner's office. This impacts law enforcement, services to the community just in general, and one that hasn't been brought up that was discussed um, at JPS was there's also an element of servicing the families of the descendants here. You know, th there is no privacy for these people. I, I can't imagine being in that situation and, and having to go into a trailer or having to, you know, say, oh, hold on, we have to find a place for this person first. So I think there's a lot of other implications here beyond just this very narrow scope of even the coroner's office. And, uh, and so for that reason, I am also 100% uh, in support of this. Thank you. Supervisor Hintz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I also want you know, to piggyback off of uh, what uh, Brian was saying right there. The other thing that seems to be getting lost in, in this is that you're talking about how to pay for this. Well, we aren't paying for storage at the hospitals anymore, three to $400 a body. We have, we have private entities coming in and using our facility and paying us to use our facility for autopsies. Am I correct? The path, in the pathologists. Um, transportation time, hourly time, going back and forth. You know, if, you, if you're using Fond du Lac's facilities, that's an hour travel you know, that we're paying for, not to mention the gas, not to mention the vehicles, not you know, the whole nine yards. And I think as far as, as far as the cost on this goes, I don't think it's actually gonna take that long for us to recoup the cost on this just because of the money we're not gonna be spending by running all over trying to find places for people where we can put bodies and where we can do autopsies and who we can get to help us doing it. And if we're gonna pay for Fond du Lac to do our autopsies because it's all down there, well, we aren't gonna have to pay for that because it's here. So. And correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not saying it's yeah, going to I be self-sustaining, I'm just saying we're going to incur a lot of savings because of this. We can, we can recoup from revenue, but I just wanted to make you aware that we will still be doing our autopsies in Fond du Lac. Um, they, these autopsies require a forensic pathologist. Where we, where we could, you know, get revenue from would be from families wanting private autopsies mm -hmm. or tissue and I, you know, recovery, they would be able to essentially rent our room okay. is what, what it would be versus that revenue going to the hospital. I just didn't want you to think that we were. No, I, thank you for clarifying that because no, I think that's for, information we all need. Right, so thank you very much right, for clarifying right. that. Right. There are other opportunities but, as well that we're that we need to be looking into. We do already bring in revenue from our cremation permits. Um, once we change to an ME office, that is something that we're looking into. You know, what what do we set that permit at? It hasn't been changed since before I started in you know 2012. That and the addition of um, we're one of the few counties that does not have a death certificate signing fee. Um, we signed, was it 386 death certificates last year? 
where other counties actually have a revenue that comes in from that, we don't. We couldn't because of a moratorium that was put on that we could only increase it by the um, consumer price index while one year you know, cost is zero, zero times anything you zero. can't raise. But we do have the opportunity then to possibly set one in January when we change over to the medical examiner system. Okay. Thank so you. there are opportunities for revenue. Supervisor Horan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I've got, I've got a few things written down here and you, you've basically answered them. I'm gonna follow up on, on what uh, Supervisor Hint said and that is there's a savings of dollars because of your location you're not going to be driving all over Hell's Half Acre and staying there until somebody comes down from East Appleton to, to relieve you. So there is, and, and that's also for the Sheriff's Department as well. And uh, there is a dollar value to time. And that's what my point is there. And you just answered, I was wondering about the pathologist. Was a pathologist going to come in? And you've just answered that too. No, you've got to have a forensic pathologist. And so those bodies still go down to Fond du Lac. Do you take those bodies or are they taken for you down to Fond du Lac? We use the livery service to take them down. So right now, essentially, we are, um, we're getting double charged. So where they used to go straight from the scene to Fond du Lac because they don't have the capability to, to take our cases right away, um, the livery service comes to the scene, does the removal, they drive our body to our trailer where we secure them in there, but then on the day of the autopsy, which could be five days, 11 days, whatnot, then they come back to the cooler, pick them up, and take them down to Fond du Lac. So essentially, we have two charges. So where it used to be just the one to take them down, now instead of 225, it's 450 per. Okay. okay. Per. Now, with with your office, would you be able to have family come in there and and just have the ability to uh, decompress? Absolutely. Yeah, yes. that's that's kind of a nice thing to do as well. Um, and I think I've got, you know, I remember, who was the last coroner? I remember him. Barry Busby. Busby, that's exactly right. And I remember him back then talking about the overdoses that were happening. Mm -hmm. And they're not getting any less. They're not getting any fewer. And for us hoping that we're helping with mental health, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Thank you. Supervisor Fari. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, at what point are these uh, persons that have deceased, are they embalmed? They're embalmed once they're released to the funeral home. The funeral home will. So that's before we take them for, quote, storage? No. So that's the importance. So we provide that's the cold import storage. Yes, that's the importance of having them, the cooler, to having that morgue okay, is being able this, to take them. The trailer and, from Columbia County is a uh, cooled trailer? It is. Have we looked into buying our own trailer? We have. And why isn't that being proposed? The cost of the trailer is roughly, roughly 121000 mm -hmm. But it's still the fact that we'll be bringing them back and continuing to just put them in a trailer. I, don't, I do not tell families. Um, I don't feel like I'm lying to them, but I omit when I do talk to them. I let them know that we will be taking their loved one back to our facility. I don't tell them I'm going to have that's... livery take your loved one back and put him in our trailer. Ethically, it's just not, in my opinion, it, it's not right. But, but we've right been now, doing it for quite some time. Since November, because it's all we have. Thank you. 
Not seeing any other lights. Takes a two-thirds vote. We'll be voting on resolution 6706 2022. All those in favor vote A. If you're against it, you vote nay. Supervisor Youngquist? Aye. Supervisor Gordon? Aye. I have to tell you while the fe you finish voting here, if you're ever looking for me in my office, I'm right inside the coroner's office. So I got to go in the coroner's office and visit it, and it's, I wasn't sure what was in there. It's all dark windows and that you don't know, so I got to go in there and look. Uh. And that passes. Resolution 6806-2022 authorize a capital project and funding of $259,900 from bond proceeds to designate, to design and construct and remodel of the USDA office suite to confirm to General Services Administration lease requirements. Supervisor Wise. Move for approval of resolution 68-062022 with an amendment. Did you say amendment? With an amendment. With amendment, we have to go through the amendment then Correct. afterwards, yes. okay. Motion made and seconded. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The amendment I'd like to, from what was sent to uh, all of us, uh, there's three sections that have to be corrected. Uh, line number three, after the number 259-900, remove the words from bond proceeds. The second item is on line 20, and it's at the conclusion of uh, initially advanced from the general fund put a period right there, and then remove what is after that period. Then re, it says, then replaced with funds from subsequent bond issue. Re, remove all of that. And the third item is on the vote required for passage. Uh, I've been informed that it's not three-fourths of membership in this case. It is a, the majority present because there's no bonding. Motion is made and second on the amendment. Discussion on the amendment. Supervisor Powers? No. Supervisor Flom? Yeah, I have a quick question, I guess, if, if corporal, corporate counsel can cover this. So did we go to bonding for this or not? So, so we didn't. So this is just going to come out of the general fund then. So, th so we were, were we thinking this was going to go to bonding or? Yes. If you want to come up here, I can't turn on Paul's microphone because it's marked absent. So I don't know if they can hear you. Three years. Anything else? Uh, Supervisor Fari. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, a clarification on uh, Resolution 67, that was a two-thirds of membership. Yes. So why would this differ from that and only require a majority? Uh, yeah. This is, this is a, um, no, it's either a bond issue or, or um, being that was the same language on the last one. No, it isn't. No, it isn't because there is no. Yeah, there, there is no, there is no money involved in terms of outlay here. Supervisor Wise's 
Uh, Mike's on if you want to talk on that one. If you look at 67, the fiscal impact talks about that amount being advanced from the general fund and would either reduce the undesignated fund balance or would be reimbursed from a subsequent bond issue. This, 68. Well, this is just from the general fund. Yes. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry. Sorry, 68. <laughs> Not seeing any other discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Nay. Carried. Resolution 6906-2022. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Now on the re resolution. Right, I skipped it. I think Karen Powers has something. Karen, did you have something? I missed you there before. No, I thought, are we on, are we on the resolution now? Right. Yes, I do have something. Okay, the, the um, picture shows the highlighted areas are the new construction, but nothing in the highlighted area is labeled. So I'm gonna ask my same old question. Um, is there a mother's room? We're, we're mandated by the federal ACA to have a mother's room in any new construction. Is there a mother's room designated in this new, this shaded area? Vice Chairman Fares got an answer, he said. Uh, thank you for asking that question, Kara. I had the same issue when I was looking at that. The part that's gonna be remodeled is the area that is not shaded. If you go to the Kaufman Center, that area that's shaded, that is actually occupied by the Ladwater Conservation Department. The unshaded area is the one that would be remodeled. That's currently occupied by the Farm Service Agency and NRCS. Uh, I, I'll allow Mr. Elders to respond to that, but I don't know that it's a federal requirement, apparently, so. He can answer that better than I. I believe there's one already existing in the facility. There is? Yep. Oh. Because it's not in that area. That's the area that the USDA is going to be using. So it's there's one generic one for the entire facility. <laughs> Supervisor Defferding. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm going to be voting against this resolution simply for the fact that I feel the USDA should be abolished. Thank you. Don't see any other lights in. So all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. 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 Well, we can vote. I think it's three nays, but we can vote. Let's see if you get it up. We don't need to, we don't need to be three quarters. Just majority. Just majority. Okay, that passed. No, it's passed. Okay, resolution 69. 6906-2022, creating a Department of Administration amending tables of organization for administration, finance, and human resource uh, departments and transferring budget to departments of administration. Supervisor Cox. I got to get rid of, just hold on, I got to get rid of that there. Oops. Mr. Chairman, can I call for a five minute recess, please? Well, in a minute here. <laughs> I got to figure out here what I can get rid of. Well, I can't get rid of that, so. Yes, we'll recess for five minutes. Recessing for five minutes, but I, you did I, I can't get rid of this. The Winnebago County Board is currently in a break. For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. 
This is GovTV, opening accessibility and understanding of local government, helping you to be informed and involved. Also streaming live and on demand at oshkoshmedia.org and radio simulcast on Oshkosh FM 101.9. Like us on Facebook at our Oshkosh Media page. For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. Please stay with us. Coverage will resume shortly. County Board is currently in a break. For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. This is GovTV, opening accessibility and understanding of local government, helping you to be informed and involved. Also streaming live and on demand at oshkoshmedia.org and radio simulcast on Oshkosh FM 101.9. Like us on Facebook at our Oshkosh Media page. For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. Please stay with us. Coverage will resume shortly. For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. This is GovTV, opening accessibility and understanding of local government, helping you to be informed and involved. Also streaming live and on demand at oshkoshmedia.org and radio simulcast on Oshkosh FM 101.9. Like us on Facebook at our Oshkosh Media page. For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. Please stay with us. Coverage will resume shortly. Board is currently in a break. For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. This is GovTV, opening accessibility and understanding of local government, helping you to be informed and involved. Also streaming live and on demand at oshkoshmedia.org and radio simulcast on Oshkosh FM 101.9. Like us on Facebook at our Oshkosh Media page. For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. Please stay with us. Coverage will resume shortly. County Board is currently in a break. For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. This is GovTV, opening accessibility and understanding of local government, helping you to be informed and involved. Also streaming live and on demand at oshkoshmedia.org and radio simulcast on Oshkosh FM 101.9. Like us on Facebook at our Oshkosh Media page. For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. Please stay with us. Coverage will resume shortly.
the Winnebago County Board is currently in a break. For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. This is GovTV, opening accessibility and understanding of local government, helping you to be informed and involved. Also streaming live and on demand at oshkoshmedia.org and radio simulcast on Oshkosh FM 101.9. Like us on Facebook at our Oshkosh Media page. For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. Please stay with us. Coverage will resume shortly. Recording in progress. I'll read it again here. Resolution number 6906, 2022, creating a Department of Administration, amending table of organization for administration, finance, and human resource department, and transferring budgets to Department of Administration. Supervisor Cox. Let me get you there. Make a motion. Make a motion to accept 6906. 2022, creating a Department of Administration, amending table, uh, the tables of organization for administration, finance, human services, the departments and res human, human resources departments and transferring budgets to the Department of Mi Administration. Motion been made and seconded. Supervisor Powers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm just wondering, uh, since it was a vote of three to two, why did the two vote against this? If they'd be willing to share. Thank you. Uh, that's up to them if they do or not. I don't see any hands up. Um, Supervisor Eisen. He's here? He is, just listen. Go ahead, Supervisor Eisen. Supervisor Eisen. We're going to move on. Paul, are you there? I can't push my finger in the Supervisor Fari, Vice Chairman Fari. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, there's a couple of resolutions I, I intended to speak quite kind of vigorously about tonight, and this is one of them. A uh, little history, our county executive has been requesting uh, administrative changes uh, for quite some time now. And as you're aware, the previous board, certain members uh, had quite a few concerns about that. However, I think we should note that uh, Personnel have changed, people have left, like our finance director. Circumstances have changed, as I think our county exec elaborated quite well tonight. So this is one of those uh, where I've been back and forth here, but based on what I can find out, uh, talking to administration, directors, of this county, I think it's going to be in our best interest to establish this position. So, uh, this supervisor will be supporting it. So, that's my thoughts on it, and I welcome the conversation to come forward. Thank you. Supervis supervisor Zesteria. Thank you, Mr. Oh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was uh, I would like to hear from any department heads on how they feel about this resolution. We can't just have them come up and start talking. No, no they should have done that ahead of time. That's why I told you before. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Supervisor Dowling. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm just curious to know uh, if this goes through. Will we still be keeping the executive assistant position? I'm just going to say I did not hear him say that he was taking that position out. Supervisor, 
Super Supervisor Cox. I thought that we'd have this kind of a conversation and it would be confusing because it really looks as if we're changing the form of government, which is not the, not the case. We're actually putting an individual into the administration okay. Hold on. of our form of government as it sits. I wish to amend this resolution to require a master's in public administration with a CPA. Second. For requirements of the administrator, whoever it might be. We need somebody with a CPA to run the operation that we can't seem to run in finance. There's a motion made and seconded. You want to read back what? I didn't. I didn't. Oh, was there a second? Yes, it was second. If you could get to one more um, time. Yes. Okay. Um, before we get too far into a debate on this, I guess I'd like some clarification as to whether um, that is an element that we have the authority over to change. Whoa, 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 whoa. Um, because my understanding is that the job description is not part of our our decision making tonight, and that that's an element that is in the job description. Right. So, is there is there clarification? Is that can we be provided some some direction on that? Your mic's on. Your mic's on. Oh, well. The county human resources policy, which is part of the policy passed by the board, does provide that job descriptions are subject to approval by the human resources director only. Okay. So they are not normally submitted to the board. Uh, perhaps uh, Marianne would like to address the question of whether the board could even amend that policy if it chose to and, and take that away from the county executive. And it is pretty clear when you look at the statute that the, that the county executive has all administrative power. In other words, the board, as we've heard, holds the power of the purse and policy. And you know what? Let me even reference. Don't go away your mic when you're talking. The statute, because it's very clear. Um, under the statute 5917, it says the county executive shall be the chief executive officer of the county. And the duties and powers of the county executive shall be without limitation, because of enumeration, to coordinate and direct all administrative and management functions of the county gover government, not, other not otherwise vested by law and other elected officials. So it is, it is clear that essentially the county executive is the CEO, but again, the checks and balances are you as the board hold the power of the purse and set the policy. Right. So, just, so just to clarify, I, I think you've answered my question. I think what I've heard is that if we wish to add this requirement as part of that, is that that needs to go back to a committee for determination. Um, actually, based on what Mr. Collar just said, mm -hmm. if, and I know he's, semi pretty familiar with the HR policy, I believe it goes back to the HR director. Is that correct? Well, the current policy just says it's up to the HR director. So okay, I think right. the board so, would have to okay. either waive or amend that policy. But then also there would have to be determination made about the statutory issue of whether it's within the board's powers compared to the executives. Mm -hmm. right. Thank you for the clarification. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I have to ask then, is that in the role or can they not make that motion that they have, the amendment? Um, currently, since the policy says this rests with the HR director, you can't make that. Okay, that's why I need to know. So we cannot make that. 
according to corporate counsel. I'm going to go to Mr. Eisen. He's on the phone here waiting. So, Mr. Eisen, you are on. Say again. Can you hear me, Mr. Chairman? Yes, I can, Supervisor Eisen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is uh, resolution number 69. Listen up, people. If I were half my age, I'd apply for the job. I am a student of public administration. I respectfully request that this board approve the county executive's creation of a department of administration. Since his election in 2020, this elected county executive slash hospitality restauranteur has tried to find a way to make the gobbledygook of government manageable. He has been twice denied by a recalcitrant personnel and finance committee to establish a span of control to the complexity of county government. I support this third attempt and solicit your vote too. This county board must provide him the means to efficiently execute his responsibilities. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Supervisor uh, Binder. The last two times I, I voted no against this, but I, I'm going to vote for it this time. You know, when he came into office, there was nobody to get him on board. It'd be like if Mark Harris went to run Zeroni's. Mark Harris don't know the first thing about a restaurant. He would have a very hard time getting up to pace. He, he, he wouldn't know how to make the macaroni and cheese. He wouldn't know how to make the pizzas. And it's the same for John. John's trying hard. He, he's learning, you know. But I, I think we need to give him somebody with some more expertise to help this county. We got a labor crisis, if we want to admit it or not, but we, we can't afford to lose any more residents at Parkview. That has sunk down to the, to the bare minimum, and we got to step up and, and get that nursing home back up, fully staffed, so we can basically serve the residents of Winnebago County. So I will be supporting this, and I give John a lot of credit. He's came a long ways in, the, in this last year, and I wanted him to learn you know, the, the job. I didn't want somebody else to come in but for the next person that gets elected, have it be him or somebody else, I would like to have somebody in there that can walk him through the system so that he doesn't come into a job where he knows nothing about, no more than if we would have had Mark take over his restaurant and they had to switch jobs. They would have both struggled. Thanks. Supervisor Cox. Am I allowed to make an amendment? Well, it depends upon what it is. <laughs> Well, I think it needs it needs a requirement of a master's and a CPA in some way. If if we could if we could find some way to review the people that are being brought in to give him the help. Yes. If I may. So if you're concerned about the review of right. people, if you go to line 35, um, it specifically says um, requiring appointment by the county executive and confirmation by the county board. So it's not as if the county board would be left in the wings here. The county board has to confirm the selection. That's on 36. Do we have a way of setting up a review committee that can review that and bring it to the county board? No, because it essentially it's talking about, yeah, the county board confirming it. Yeah. Supervisor Gabbert. So Supervisor Binder voted against us, he just said. Who's the other person on the committee? We never got that Dave question. Waldron. 
Okay. I will report. I voted yes. Okay. And if we are setting up a Department of Administration, how many other people are going to be in that department? Or is he going to go somewhere in the hallway outside the county executive's office? Or where are we putting, where are we putting this person? Are we remodeling something? To be determined. <laughs> well, uh, there's more than one question. The first question, how many people will be in the department? And there would be a total of four FT in the department being the purchasing manager, the risk manager, and the, uh, uh, I'm trying to remember the exact title of the general services person that's but essentially in the print shop. But we have those people already. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it would just, so it would be just a reorganization. And, and, and in where, terms of- where is the, this person going then? The most, the most likely place is there's a uh, conference room in the back hallway behind the executive main conference room. That could be turned into an office space. There's also an area between that room and the current finance director's office that could be very easily turned into another office space. And everybody's in that, will be in that area, in that building. Somewhere. Yes. Okay. All right, thank you. Supervisor Horan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a couple of things that I just want to reiterate, and that is that we were told with the conversation earlier this evening that the savings that is made by this position will be more than enough to compensate this person. I have to tell you that in my newness to this, I've been over to the highway department and there are issues that were a problem 25 years ago. I have been over to UW Fox Cities and there, are there was an issue the day it was put in and it was not rectified. I would like to think that this person who takes this position would be able to address those issues so that 25 years later some person isn't trying to say, you know, they screwed it up again. Thank you. Thank you. Supervisor Norton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a couple questions or, and a comment. Uh, the county executive gave a number of examples of the other counties that have such positions. C could you, why weren't we given any details of what these positions do in those counties? thing I can say is probably because no one asked. Well, I mean, I guess that a little disturbs me because I understand the Brown County may have one, but it's not as detailed as this, but that's, <clears throat> you know, I'll, I'll go, go to that. But I'm probably going to support this, but I do want to bring up one point I, I can't get on my mind. You know, we keep on hearing from my colleagues and from the county executive, well, this person will be in place for the next uh, county executive. Well, I kind of disagree because if I'm, unless I'm wrong, this position will serve at the will of whomever is the county executive. So all this talk is that, oh, we'll have someone in place if and when we have another county executive is not really a benefit. I mean, because that county executive, whoever that could be, could get rid of that person. So it's somewhat of a political appointment, but I guess I will support that. I guess I'm a little disturbed that, oh, we heard that Dane County and Brown County and, and Fond du Lac County have all these similar positions, but what are their exact duties they do in that county? What are they paying in those counties? And I wasn't given that. Like I say, I'm gonna lean probably, Bobby support this, but I'm very disappointed I didn't get that. Thank you. Supervisor Wise. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I wholly support this resolution. Looking at the uh, resolutions, the 23 resolutions that we're considering this evening, there are six of these that are staffing issue resolutions. S six of them. Over there. This jumps out to me that there are, these are the reasons that we probably should be taking, uh, taking a very hard look at this and getting this approved just as soon as possible. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Supervisor Stafford. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I will also be supporting this uh, for a variety of additional reasons. Uh, the first is, is that I'm, I'm actually really pl 
pleasantly surprised that we're talking more about process than a person. Um, you know, I spent a fair amount of my time in org design, and one of the biggest lessons I got from McKenzie was focus on the process, not the people. And as I think about the process, I really do feel like there's a significant level of benefit here. Um, a person to coordinate amongst all of the de amongst the board and, and uh, department heads, I think, would be really useful. Uh, I think all of us can look at it and say that it's a bit scattered sometimes, and there's a lot of ineffectiveness. Having someone to kind of help shepherd that across, I think, would um, really help the speed and, and efficiency of, of county government. And uh, one that I know has uh, been spoken about already, but the rough transition that the county had when John, uh, I'm sorry, Executive uh, Damel uh, took over, and even in thinking about succession planning with you know, what happens if the executive um, isn't able to perform their duty uh, or uh, transition of power, um, we need to figure out a way to, to help speed that process up so we don't sit here for months and months trying to figure out who does what and when and, and how. And uh, I think this would be a first step in that direction. And th I think the other thing, too, that we've been hearing a lot about over the last year, year and a half, well, at least as long as I've been on the board, is the need for a strategic plan. And it's, it's obvious that we don't have the, the, the infrastructure in place right now to really shepherd that through. And, and the last, which I always thought was quite interesting, in, in organizational design, there's this thing called span of control. And that means that a person can effectively only manage a certain amount of people before it becomes an ineffective. And depending on who you talk to, you know, McKinsey would say it's something like five or six people per supervisor, especially at a CEO level, which is what this would be. And so when I hear that there's, you know, what was it again, 11, 12, uh, 18, was it 18? Oh, that's right, 18 going on to 19, possibly. That's too much. That's too much for anyone, to do it effectively at least. And, uh, and then thinking about the organization as a whole of 11, 1,200 people, to think about what we have for a management structure, it's rather lean and mean. And I'm actually kind of surprised that, you know, we, we have a, a county of, you know, the size that we have uh, with, with such a, a small support system. Uh, boy, thank God we're getting done what we're getting done. Um, and so for all of those reasons, uh, I think it's, this is something that everyone uh, should support. And I will be supporting. Thank you. Supervisor Ellenberger. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I don't want to repeat any things I've said earlier when I was asking him questions, um, because I think he did a great job on answering earlier. Thank you. Um, but um, I wrote some notes here. Um, you know, government, the, um, the voters want their government to be more effective and efficient. And I think this is a, the step, the next step to try to do that. Um, and, and I know a lot of people have said, you know, he owns his own business and he does something totally different than being here and that he's doing a great job since. But I go back to when we were, um, when we had the meeting with the attorney that came and explained to us what our roles are and, and, and so forth. And I think to myself, wow, um, he came here, he's done an amazing job since, um, but a lot of this stuff that this person's going to be doing is not really in the lane that he should be doing right now. Does that make sense? For example, the attorney said, what, you have to be 18 years of, old, uh, of age, you have to live in your district, and you can't be a felon. That's the only requirements we have. I look at the requirements down here for education, experience, training, and certification, I'm like, he doesn't have a lot of those, and he, he doesn't have to have a lot of those, and we need someone in there that could do those, that can work with him. And I'm excited to support this resolution tonight. I don't want to keep going on because I know we've already talked about this earlier, so, um, so I'll just stop with that and say 100% support this. Thank you. Thank you. Supervisor Nicholson. Nichols, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my, direct, my questions are for Director Collard. This resolution is requesting a budget transfer of roughly uh, $91,000. Uh, 
and does that fund the position from July 1st of this year to December 31st? Yes, that's the intent of the, uh, the budget transfer for 2022. Okay, so then what is the annual cost of the position? $176,000. If you just look at the position alone, in the budget transfers we took into account, you know, possible personnel moves and there were some transfers from other departments that had already budgeted certain mm -hmm. things. And then um, is there a salary range associated with that? County policy provides that the salary range or grade in our compensation plan is set by the HR director after the position is approved by the board. But logically, there's really only one place it could go. The, the top range in our compensation plan is grade 31. The current uh, positions in that grade are corporation counsel and director of human services, uh, the finance director, human resources director, Parkview administrator, and highway commissioner are all currently in grade 30. So this position, the director of administration position, since it would be supervising two of those grade 30 positions would almost necessarily need to be in grade 31. And so what's the range for that? I'll tell you in a minute. Okay. Starting pay in grade, 30, in grade 31 currently is 109,230. The control point is 120,426. And the maximum is 150,738. For grade 31? Correct. Okay, the maximum is 150. And you previously stated there would be an annual cost of 176,000 for this director of administration position? It's an estimate. It really does depend, of course, on who's selected and what, uh, what pay range is negotiated, okay. what actual pay rate is negotiated. Okay, do we have an idea of what the levy impact will be for next year? The levy impact mm -hmm. would, would be that cost. There wouldn't be a direct revenue source associated with it. Okay. Um, and I think therein lies my issue with the resolution, the creation of the position, is that the resolution funds it for just six months. Um, the annual cost is not discussed, nor is the fact that there will be an impact to the levy for this new position. And as stated by another supervisor earlier today, when every department is being asked to come in with a flat budget, here we are creating a new position, um, the highest, what would be the highest paid position in the county, without our eyes wide open to the annual costs and what the impact on the levy would be. So I think something like this, I, while I'm not completely opposed to the, to the idea, I'm open to learning more about it, it should be introduced through the budget process. Thank you. Supervisor Nelson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I don't want to an echo all the other sentiments that are out there, but the one thing I am a little bit familiar with is the morale of the 1,100 people that are out there that are working for us. I. And maybe I've only heard from a few that are totally disgruntled, but you talk about how to get new employees. I'm concerned how we keep the ones that we have. And I believe this position would help show that we are more organized and we're getting stuff done and we're, we're on top of it. Right now, there's a lot of employees that don't see much direction coming from the county board or from the county and the directors, at least that's my opinion. I think this position is necessary and I think it will help us be better organized and it will in the long run help us retain a lot of the employees that we have now because we can't 
can't stand to lose any more of them, I don't believe. Thank you. Thank you. Supervisor Robert. Does this new position have a job description of what he's supposed to do and stuff, or, or just at the will of the executive, whatever he wants him to do? Do there is a draft a job, job description, description in the packet. Individual? Pardon? There is a draft job description in the packet. Oh, I got it. Well, I also feel as though our county operated very well without an individual assistant like this, and I think that uh, we should continue like we are. Supervisor Dowling. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want a clarification. Um, Mr. Collard had talked about our pay range, and on page five of our packet, it says wages at 66,000. Does the pay range that you gave include benefits and um, I guess everything else that goes along with that? Is that like a lump sum or is the position getting a check for a hundred and something thousand dollars a year? The, the budget transfer for the rest of 2022 mm -hmm. Since we want to make sure there's adequate budget, you know, includes essentially the highest pay that would be likely to be given to someone in that position. Mm -hmm. So that's what the sixty-six thousand is. It's essentially half of that, which would be one hundred thirty-two, which is not the maximum, but is near the top of range C. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Supervisor Bender. I'd just like to say we talked about a strategic plan for the last two years. We, we've never even started it. If we don't get some more help in there, we're never going to get a strategic plan. You know, the, the wage study, we'd like to have that by November. You know, the highway department just lost two more employees, a mechanic and a class one. We underpay. You know, when you can go and get basically 2 or $3 more an hour, people aren't loyal anymore like they used to be years ago. You know, if you've got three, four weeks of vacation, you might stick around. But if you only got a year or two, you're going to jump ship and go where you can get more money, you know. This is basically a position we, we have to move forward on it. We have to get a strategic plan. We have to get a wage study. And we don't have the manpower right now to do it. So I, I don't know how we can just keep pushing it down the road and say, well, we'll take care of it next year. Well, eventually next year's got to come. Supervisor Norton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You kind of answered my question before, Mr. Collard. If we didn't get a description of what the other positions, similar positions are doing in this county, I guess you don't have what these positions get paid in other counties neither. And I guess I wonder why we don't get that because when we consider other pay increases for elected officials and such and such, you've given us that information. So why didn't you give it to what these individuals get paid in similar positions in other counties? Well, the county policy provides, as I said, that the HR director places the position in the correct grade after the board approves the position. So the board isn't determining the wage rate for the position. You know, so that's why we don't normally, for these kind of positions, include comparable wage information like we do for elected officials, because for elected officials, the board does determine the wage rate for the position. So. That, that's, that's why we didn't include the wage information. We can obviously obtain that, and I would expect the HR director might very well look at that in determining what grade the position needs to be in. Uh, we did look at uh, job descriptions from other counties. I've got four job descriptions from other counties, directors of administrations in my folder. Ethan probably has a few additional beyond that. Uh, so we weren't provided those, right? But we did Why were we? That's my question. That's one of my questions. It's just a matter of not wanting to, uh, you know, uh, it, I know at other times when, when things have been proposed by the executive, there he's actually been criticized for relying too much on, on what other counties are doing. So I think it was just a matter of selecting the things that would be most important for the board in his opinion. And uh, that's all it was. If, if you'd like copies of those job descriptions, I'd have no problem getting them to you tomorrow. But... Uh, um, I could call them up on my computer right now, probably. So are we locked into whatever salary we're going to give this individual now for future years? And how could we, no. could we possibly, how could we possibly uh, 
change that come budget time? That's another question I'd have. Well, the salary would just be determined in accordance with our normal compensation policy. That, that has been approved by the board, but the board would have budgetary authority if there was a perceived uh, absence of value from the position in the future, the board could eliminate it or remove the budget for it entirely. Supervisor Harrison, I was just going to call on him first. And I got another one ahead of you yet. So Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I have listened to this, and I think the executive did a great example or answering all our questions earlier, which is great. And I think it's about time to let him do his job. And I've seen some other supervisors that were in the past, and there was a little conflict there. But it's time for him to do it, because organization is important. I, th I think a five-year plan here, you can see if there's Things haven't been great. Things have been running down. We went to tours of places that are falling apart and need stuff. I don't know how they got missed in all this time. And a lot of stuff, as a new supervisor, just opened up my eyes, like, what's been going on? So I think it's important to let him do his job, and this is a good point to get organized. In business, when I was there, we always got the right people around us, and we got it organized so that everything gets done and it's getting handled. And I know the executive has worked real hard with employees. If you can see some of his notes and stuff he sent out, there's a lot of things that he's working with employees. As for increases, that's going to come all across the board because I hear from every meeting I go in that that's a conversation. But it has to kind of end now, and we have to give him the confidence to push him along and give him the tools to do it. And I think it's important, and I'm going to support this 100 percent. Supervisor Powers. Yes. Um, thank you, Mr. Who, who's the Human Resources Director? I suppose technically I am right now, but Mark Habeck is the Acting Human Resources Director, okay, so doing most the, of that in my if place If the Human right Resources now. Director is going to make the decision of, who, of, of this person's salary range, and you are the Human Resources Director, and you are the foregone conclusion probably who's going to get this job, isn't there a little bit of a conflict of interest here? Well, I would certainly, uh, if I were personally involved, not, not make that decision, but defer it to Mr. Habeck, who's acting in my place as HR director currently. You know. But as I said, I, my comments about the pay grade were just fairly obviously in our current system, there's only one place, one grade that would make any sense because of the internal relationships. Supervisor Gustafson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would call the question. Second. Motion is made and seconded for the question. Any discussion on it? Not seeing. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Nay. Carried. Now we'll go on resolution. No, this will require three. Mr. Chair, do we still need to vote on the resolution? That's what we're doing. Because we're going to call the question. Right. Okay. Yes, he's bringing it up now. He's bringing it up right now. Just hold on. There it is. So. Supervisor Youngquist. Aye. Supervisor Gordon? Aye. And that is passed. All right, now we'll go back on the resolution. Resolution 69062022. That's now we're on 79. We 70, I'm sorry, 70. 70, I, I apologize. That one passed, right. Now we're on 70. Number 70, 06, 2022, authorize a capital project for Whitman Regional Airport to construct T hangar facilities in the amount of $4.3 million, funded with $3 million of bond proceeds and $1.3 million to be provided by the Wisconsin Bureau of Aeronautics through grant assistance. Supervisor Gabbert. I would like to move for the acceptance of resolution 70-062022. Second. 
Motion is made and seconded. Now can I do Supervisor my... Supervisor Gabbert. Okay. Um, thank you, Chairman Egan. I'm starting on line five. Uh, if you step back to four, it says with three million dollars from, we would like to change that from either a transfer from the undesignated general fund balance or an advance from the general fund balance to be reimbursed with a subs subsequent bond issue. Then we go down to line 25 where it ends with three million from, we would like to put in there either a transfer from the undesignated general fund balance or an advance from the general fund balance to be reimbursed with a subsequent bond. Then we go down to line 29 and after from, we would like either a transfer from the undesignated general fund balance or an advance from the general fund to be reimbursed with a subs subsequent bond issue. And then down on line 42, vote required for passage would be two thirds of members elect. And you've done a couple of these tonight before this one, so I can explain why we did that, but we're letting our option be open for either from the general fund balance or from a bond issue. And that's why we're changing the wording. Do I hear a second for the amendment? The motion is made and seconded. Um, I do not see any discussion on, oops. Supervisor Norton. I have a question for the finance director act. What's the status of our general fund reserve at this point? Uh, undesignated fund balance is about 24 million currently. Yeah, that's based on our, our calculation. We're waiting on the final numbers to come from the auditor next month. Not seeing anything else from anyone on the amendment. Uh, Supervisor Horan. No, I'm sorry, not the amendment. I'm sorry. Okay, all those in favor of the amendment signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Carried. Now we're on the original resolution. Supervisor Horan, did you want to speak on this? Yes, sir, please. Um, I. I have a, a very dear friend who is a pilot and goes to the EAA, and I spoke with him about this. Um, he's also a, a, a mechanic with airplanes, and I spoke with him about this because I had some concerns about it, and he said, hey, I can't tell you how needed it is in Oshkosh that they make these new hangers. It's Thank you. Supervisor Dowling. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'd like to start by saying that I technically do work in the aviation industry. Um, so typically the aviation community is very near and dear to my heart. Um, however, I just, I can't get over that this proposal only seems to serve the elite in our community. Um, not everyone owns airplanes. <laughs> um, we're also just as far as families go, specifically in our communities, people are having to cut their budgets on groceries, where they're driving to. I get that this will in 30 years bring revenue back. Um, my last concern is that during the initial presentation of this, it was very much stressed that the airport hangars were only to be used for airport things, which is regulated by the FAA. They're very strict. I went on a tour of the airport recently um, with Supervisor Swan, actually, um, and I was surprised to see in one of the hangars a motorcycle. Definitely not an airplane. And then also what appeared to be a sailboat. 
So I'm just curious to know, are these items going to be, our new hangers, will they be regulated in the same way that these are? Thank you. Thank you. Supervisor Ellenberger. Hi, thank you, Chairman. Um, first, um, elite, um, that's a strong word because um, a lot of these airplanes, these Cessna 152s or what have you, um, having a husband that is a pilot, um, they spend close to, I don't know, 15 to 30,000 for one of these airplanes. This is not, uh, it's not an elite sport. I mean, you, you can obviously go up higher and get a bigger aircraft, but what would fit in this T hangar is not a large aircraft. Um, these are enthusiasts that um, they, they love flying. And the reason why a lot of these have a car in them or a motorcycle in them a lot, I don't know about the, the sailboat, but they fly out, they come back, and they get in their, their vehicle to go back home. I mean, they do that a lot. They do breakfast fly-ins, they do tons of stuff. Um, I, I, I was just surprised, um, you know, and a lot of them in these old hangars that they're gonna actually take out, they're only spending 160 to 170 a rent a month. Um, once again, these are not, I mean, if you go out and get an air, uh, a boat, or if you drive a vehicle that's, say, a new Tahoe, it's more than almost triple the amount of what these people are paying for an airplane. Um, so I don't see the, um, the elite comment, um, but um, I'm 100% supporting this because I think in also that we're losing sight of is that this will pay itself back because you gain rent. It's one of the few things that we will be We'll, we'll be in the green with at one point, or in the black, sorry, not the green. Um, kind of the same thing, but you know what I mean. But um, anyway, that's, that's my point. And the sailboat, yeah, I don't know why. I mean, we can individually talk to that person, but you don't take away doing something for a lot of people just because of one individual, so. <clears throat> Supervisor Gabbard. I'm gonna stay focused here. Um, on what we're trying to accomplish. Um, we are getting revenue from these hangers immediately. There's a 50 year depreciation. We have made presentations to all the committees that we, the former aviation committee, the present aviation committee, PNF facilities. We did a um, special orders presentation to the county board. We've done everything we can to be transparent. As to the hangers, uh, Cameron Halleck, our deputy director is here. I spoke with him during our break about the situation with the sailboat and the car. And he told me, and maybe he should tell you what he told me because I'm not, I'm not gonna disagree with Supervisor Dowling. So when a person goes out to the airport to get in their airplane, Usually they're a middle class working person, just like most of us, and they drive a vehicle and they don't leave it parked outside the hangar, they put it in the hangar. So could there be some bad eggs out there? There could be, but I don't think the rules say other than you have to have a plane you're working on or one that's flyable, according to FAA. But I'd like uh, Deputy Director Halleck to uh, clarify that. I'm asking for your vote to support this tonight. We've got money from BOA. I think that's pretty important. 1.3 million that Jim applied for and we have it on the docket that they will help us pay for this project. So to me, 1.3 million is a lot of money. We're gonna build 20 hangars. We have a waiting list of 56 people that want those hangars or people in existing hangars that will be moving to the new hangars and that will open up spaces for people that have been on the list for sometimes 10 years. That's all I'm gonna say for right now. And if you'd let Cameron explain, I'd appreciate it. If you'd like to say a few words and maybe explain the picture she has there to show you or? Thank you, I'm Cameron Halleck, Deputy Director uh, at Whitman Airport. I've been uh, here for about a year um, and this FAA policy on non-aeronautical hangar use uh, was a really big deal about five to ten years ago. 
Uh, in fact, the FAA created a policy in 2016 outlining what could be stored in hangars, what is considered aeronautical and what is considered non-aeronautical. And so the rule is, and we follow this um, through our grant assurances, we have to follow the FAA's policy on this. Um, there has to be an airplane in there as the primary use of the hangar. And the way we define that is that it's an airworthy condition or it's actively being worked on and you don't have to move anything out of the way to get the airplane. The airplane is the first thing that can come in and out and then we don't care what's stored in there as long as the primary use of that hangar is an airplane. And the way we address that is we do annual inspections. We had not been doing them before I started here um, that detailed and now we do a very detailed inspection. We just finished a few weeks ago and we found two hangars that may not meet the FAA policy on hangar use. And so we're writing letters to them and we'll be discussing with, that, with those two tenants here shortly. Thank you. There might be a few more questions, so don't run away. Supervisor Swan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, in the committee meeting, I did ask a question to the airport representative, and that's the response I got, that it was non-aircraft non hangar occupancy was very limited um, and not really an issue and that there was ability to enforce already already on the books basically and for many violations so I was satisfied by that initially when I <clears throat> when I made comments on this project I was concerned about the rent levels and um, you know I've I've had I've taken a close look at this and I've come around to the idea that this project is necessary and I think it will there's a social benefit to this it may we may f attract tenants that would decide to bring their business to Oshkosh put use um, use lands in the in the business park we have out there um, they're heated spaces so you may be able to attract tenants from EAA you got a 52 tenant waiting list I just want to you know point out that maybe maybe if we don't before we know what our costs are going to be our final costs on this project we don't want to get in our get it in our head that that the rents projected are necessarily going to be you know what we'll need to have as asking rent to support the investment in the facility until we know what the final costs are um, you know, maybe Mike Collard would, Collard would want to speak to that. I know he's done a cash flow analysis on, on the project, um, but I'm basically I'm decided I'm going to support this. Um, I've come around on it. Supervisor Stafford, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I go back to an earlier conversation mm -hmm. about wants versus needs, and. Um, Listen, I, I think the airport's fantastic. And I'm also a, a private pilot. And so aviation to me is, is near and dear. And it's a great, great hobby and, and I would recommend it to anyone. But as I consider the environment we're in right now, the priorities of the, of the county, and with the economic situation we're in, I, I have a hard time supporting it right now. If this, you know, if things were better and we were just, you know, cash everywhere, I think it'd be a different situation. And I, I just, I just have some serious concerns about that. So I, I really do feel like this is a want. And then I also counter, if I can find a Cessna, like I, I flew, my, my favorite one was a Skyhawk 172. There's no way you can get a Skyhawk 172 for $30,000. I mean, they, these are expensive vehicles. Even kit vehicles are expensive. So to say that this is, this is something that anyone and everyone can do, I, I just have a hard time with that. And, and then I do look at the rent. You know, on average, you know, Cessnas or Diamonds or, you know, anything of that nature, you know, you're, you're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars, and that's why a lot of people share these. And most, most Planes like this are not owned by one person. They're owned by a company or a variety of people. So you have that. Gas is quite expensive for these. Um, you have an annual that you have to do, right? That's two to $4,000. And then you have rent. Rent is, is literally a fraction of even the annual. So I, I do feel like there's a little, 
there's a little inequity in this. And, um, and so for that reason, I, I just, at this point, uh, I don't know if I can support it at this point. Again, if, if the situation was different and we had different priorities and, and a different uh, economic environment, I, I think it would have a, a definite different opinion. So thank you. Supervisor Christofferson. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I echo a lot of what Supervisor Stafford had just said. I think really evaluating the time that we're asking for this fund as we uh, pro projected to slip into a recession here, as well as asking the question, what is a want, what is a need? And as I said, based off a lot of the funding that we had already proved earlier, I think that was a lot of needs. Um, looking at this, I, I still believe this is a want, and I still have a very hard time um, looking at the $3 million being uh, paid back in 30 years, uh, especially in the sense of w what it would take to, obviously, as I said, if the economic state was in a better spot, uh, we can maybe slip by with that. But I think at this time, um, I think it's inappropriate to uh, approve these funds at this time. Thank you very much. Supervisor Hansen. Thank you, Mr. Mm -hmm. Chairman. Um, I did take a tour of the airport and we did visit two hangars and in one of the hangars that we were in it was an early 70s two-seater plane I specifically asked the cost and the only thing that um, they could offer what was what was comparable and it was low three figures so over a hundred thousand dollars for a 1970s plane so I have to admit I'm not understanding the thirty fifty thousand dollars for unless it's an ultralight or something. Um, in that particular hangar as well where I made that question, there was some lumber, there was an automobile as well as that plane. Um, so I do question that. Um, timing, I think, is very important when we talk about wants and needs. And personally, I cannot see adequately representing District 26 right now voting in favor for this. Thank you. Supervisor Flom. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I echo the same concerns as uh, Supervisor Stafford and Supervisor Hansen. Uh, if the times were different, I would happily take a look at this a bit more closely to support it. I also toured the airport, and I echo the same concerns of previous supervisors uh, about other miscellaneous things being stored in there. And I understand we can't necessarily control that. It's a very loose definition. Uh, but in terms of the rent, my family's background is in commercial real estate, and in commercial real estate, you try to raise rent as high as you can until the demand tapers off. And we have a very high demand because our rent is so low. We've been able to offer lower rates uh, in comparison. I understand that the comp rates for other hangars around Wisconsin, that number that the airport department eventually came up with, is relatively similar to that number. I just think right now, where we should be investing is to make sure that county operations run better. And I can't in good faith support this given the current circumstances. So thank you. Supervisor Dowling. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just wanted to reiterate really quickly, um, on the tour, we also stopped by Myers Aviation. And the mechanic there who is in charge of the facility explained the cost of airplanes has gone through the roof, similarly to cars. So while five, 10 years ago, a $30,000 airplane might have been worth 30,000, it's now worth 60. So similarly to cars. Um, and then I also appreciate Supervisor Hansen also sharing his experience on a tour, um, finding other items inside the hangars that probably shouldn't be there. Um, I really appreciate that as well. Thank you. Supervisor Hans. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, First off, I want to just put it out there because this is my district. Airport's right in the heart of, of my district, District 21. I voted for this on the Aviation Committee. I also raised concerns about the over, taking it over 30 years to break even. And I still, to this day, believe that we can actually get, get that down to 25 years. I believe that we can actually charge a higher rate for this. And part of the reason I believe that is we talk, I talked to some people who uh, were EA employees um, this last weekend. And it just happened to run into him when, uh, when I was playing trivia with a friend of mine at, at a local establishment. And they said that they would upgrade immediately. They say they pay, they pay in the $400 range. 
They also said that they know other people who would get out of their hangars and move up. And they also agreed that out of that waiting list of 50 some people, there are people who are gonna pay for the nicer hangars or pay more for the nicer hangars. And I do think that's something that needs to definitely be looked at by the airport. Because yes, you can, you can sit there and say, we wanna be with, with the price range of everybody, but all of a sudden you're bringing out basically nice hangars that have a climate control um, environment that, by the way, the person renting pays for that, um, pays for the, the whatever cost is to heat that hangar. It's not paid, it's not covered in their rent, so don't, so we're not, we're not saying that, but it's also at the premier general aviation airport in the world. This is where people come in the hundreds of thousands every year to celebrate aviation. That has a price on it as well. So I really think that I, while, while I am going to support this, I really sincerely hope that our staff at the airport goes back and looks harder at the rent on this and doesn't say it 325. Because I, I think waiting for 30 years to break even, if a tornado comes through in that 30 years and destroys it, we're never going to break even on it. We need to get the money back as soon as we can. And it's an opportunity, it's a, it's a unique opportunity to actually charge more because of what we have to offer in Oshkosh. People want to be in Oshkosh. People don't want to be in Appleton. They don't want to deal with, with uh, all the commercial air traffic up there. I remember when I used to work at our airport when we had commercial air traffic. I worked for United Express Airlines. I remember what a pain it was for people getting in and out, especially during EA and our planes getting in. So I, I just, I, I really think that we have this unique opportunity and I, I know it keeps getting kind of dismissed by our air, airport staff. I really hope you look into that a little deeper because I know from just the two people I ran into, they said, oh yeah, we know people that would pay for those in a heartbeat. So, thank you. Supervisor Bender. I'd just like to say, if we don't build this, a private builder can't go in there and build them. You know, we can give them a land lease, but they have to pay property taxes. The city charges, I, I believe, 21 or 27.91 per thousand. So these hangars, if I was to build them at that airport, I'd have to lease the land from the county, and I would pay over $4,000, around $4,000 in property tax. So I would have to rent you that hangar for about $700. We don't pay property tax. So we can rent that hangar for $325. Like we lease land, the next to our, our land leases, when they build those buildings, they get taxed, just like we get taxed on our houses. But we don't pay tax, so we can build that hangar and rent it for $325. If we don't build them, nobody's gonna build them. So basically we got an infrastructure in the airport that's, that's basically deteriorating. And I'd like to ask Mike, how much of that $33 million do you think we can put in our reserve fund? I, I believe we probably can take the whole $33 million for lost revenue, correct or no? On the ARPA funds, <clears throat> I believe we will be able to eventually use all the ARPA funds as, uh, and treat it as lost revenue. So we add that to the $24 yeah. million we have, we have $57 million in our reserve fund. We have a, a $1.3 million bond that we're gonna get from the aviation I, I think why wouldn't we do it? We're going to have basically fifty-seven million dollars. We're getting one point three million dollars from the Bureau of Aeronautics. We're the only ones that can build them hangars. Nobody else can build them. A private contractor can't build them. They get taxed. You know, it's not feasible. Like we, the, the Hilton, that's on a ninety-nine-year lease. They pay tax on the Hilton. It's not tax-free just because they leased the land from us. So I, I, I'm going to vote for it. I, I, I think that we just built a, a, a new business park out there we got a business park we need to fill we, we got to grow that airport we want to get them off the tax levy they're an enterprise fund they're supposed to support themselves so we have to give them the tools to try to help them to, to get the hangars to get some revenue to get that business park up and running and get them off the, the tax basically levy that's an enterprise fund they should be making money supervisor harrison thank you mr chairman um in the last uh since the last presentation um, I know quite a few people that have hangers out there, and Ms. what uh, Supervisor Dowling said, there is a lot of that, but there is a rule, like he said, that as long as the plane is in there and you can get in and out, they're not bothering them. So I know that's, that's true. There's there. I don't know if those had airplanes in there or not, but I've seen them and, I, and I've been there, so I know that's true. Also, in talking to everyone, 
they're all excited about doing this because there's 52 people that have been talking about it want it. So there's a big demand. They're going to make the revenue back. The only concern that I had in talking to everybody was, you know, you almost pay $1,000 in other places. And I was kind of giving them a range because I didn't know where we would end up setting. But they were at three to four hundred dollars. They seemed that was cheap compared to what they have to pay at other places. So they said from the people that come here for air show and that they probably will pay more. So it can pay back quicker, like some of the other concerns we were talking about. But it can be quicker. But it's a great idea. And if you see some some other ones we're going to look at here, they're investing in the airport a lot. I mean, people are wanting to build you know hangars out there. They want to invest. And in the tours that I got and the meetings that I've been out there, it's amazing what they're doing with that airport. I came here back in college way back and I flew in here and it's so different. It looks so different. Uh, and, and again, we talked about this before. There's so many things in our county that are running bad or have issues or need repairs. So we're going to be talking about spending money because I don't know how they got so far behind on stuff. But it's important we have a vision, a plan so that maybe some of these things we can look at and say, yeah, it was a great decision. But this will make us the money back, and that's important, and I'm voting for it, and so are the people that I talked to. They're all for it, so thank you. Thank you. Supervisor Schellinger. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so I wanted to talk about two things, I think. First, uh, the, I wanted to just let everybody know the rates at the airport are set by ordinance. So when we, when we have this discussion about what are the roles of the county board and what are the roles of administration, this is actually one of the roles the county board has. Section 21.05 of, of our general code details precisely what the rates are for all rentals at the county, uh, at the county airport, um, from, from non-aeronautical uses to tea hangers to any other kind of facility uh, that, that, that we have out there. Um, I know that one thing that's in the works at the at the airport with staff is re is revisiting uh, all of those costs uh, and 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 providing a, a complete update uh, or proposed update uh, for this board to review. But I just wanted to let let folks know if you're curious about what those rates are or how this board could affect that. Uh, that is fair game for this board to look at section 21.05 or chapter 21.05 of our ordinances. Um, I think in general this. The, the 325 rate seems in the ballpark, maybe maybe not the highest, but slightly on the higher end of what relatively comparable Wisconsin based uh, based airports offer. I think one note that I found is is the the rates on the on these things dr uh, vary dramatically based on what state you're in. Um, this, the exact same facility in like Colorado or Wyoming um, would absolutely command a thousand or more dollars uh, a month, but sort of, you know, based on uh, what our um, uh, other general aviation airports in Wisconsin are, this is relatively, uh, relatively in, in the in the ballpark. And then the other thing I wanted to address is I think we so rarely, as a county, have an opportunity to affect economic development. Most of the economic development things that come through here are not driven by. Uh, by the county. This is an opportunity for us to listen to the Greater Oshkosh Economic Development Corporation, a key partner that this county funds, uh, to, to tell us what we need to, to cash in to develop uh, what, we've, what we've already invested in at the airport. Uh, given, that, uh, given that we so rarely hear uh, GoEDC make an ask of this county board for economic development, um, I think uh, I think it is worth this board uh, supporting uh, supporting this request and voting yes. Thank you. Supervisor Gabbert. One more time, thank you all for your comments tonight. I appreciate them. The 325 rent I want to clarify is a number, just a number. Are we low? Are we are we terribly low? Uh, Supervisor Schellinger put it in a in a good perspective we have an ordinance with this county and Jim follows the ordinance on how much we can raise rent how much we can charge I go that's too cheap somebody just rented one of the dumpiest hangers out there and what they're paying per month I wouldn't touch it for that but he wanted a hanger so he's paying in, in the A section of the T hangers behind C.R. Meyer, paying 200 bucks a month for a hanger. 
just a hanger. It has a little light bulb in it, but just a hanger. So these will have heat in them, but you have to pay extra for the heat. The first people that are going to be asked are the people getting out of the ones that are going to be demolished and then the current tenants. So there should be a move because I've talked to over 20 pilots who I happen to know because I've lived here all my life. And they are waiting for the chance to either get a hangar or move to the new ones. I think you could get 400. That, that is to be determined. We had to put a number on the paper to present to you so you knew what was going on. Am I concerned that somebody has a muscle car and a sailboat and an airplane and a hangar? I'm not. Because he met the criteria to put an airplane in there. Is that terrible? I don't think so. Um, but if you think it's terrible and that's enough to make you not want to vote for this tonight, I understand. I'm going to move on from all of this tonight and say we gave it our best try. I appreciate all your comments. I always appreciate yays and nays because I'm trying to still learn after all these years. So those of you that vote for it tonight, I thank you. Those of you that don't vote for it, we'll bring it back. It's coming back. It's not going away. We can make revenue. We are supposed to be self-sustaining out there. And the only way we can do it is to get rent off of facilities. We have people building big hangars. There's two on the agenda tonight because they prefer to build their own hangar for their own big airplane. That's all I've got to say. So thank you for your comments tonight. Supervisor Ponzer. Yes, thank you for this moment to speak. I, when I ran for this position, I had, in my mind, I had a fiduciary responsibility, a safety responsibility, and a service responsibility. And when it comes to service, I feel that the, anyone in Winnebago County is eligible for that. With this, only 20 people are eligible, and that's a lot of money, so I don't believe I'm doing what I promised the people, so I'm voting this down. Thank you. Okay, not seeing anyone else wishing to speak. We'll vote on resolution number 7006-2022. And this is a two-thirds vote on this here because it was changed with the resolution. So. Supervisor Gordon. Aye. Supervisor Youngquist. Aye. Passed 24 to 10 to two abstain. Two 24. 24. Okay. No Resolution 7106 2022 approved ground lease between Felix Auto and Tire LLC and Winnebago. No. The amendment changed it. All okay with that now? Okay. Uh, resolution 7106 2022 approved ground lease between Felix Auto and Tire LLC and Winnebago County. Supervisor Gabbert. has been made and seconded. Supervisor Powers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted, I had two questions. How, how many bids went out for this? Um, a 20 year commitment is pretty long for a company that's only been in business for seven years. Um, and how many bids went out for this? Thank you. Uh, okay, we'll go to Supervisor Gabbert. She can answer it. He's building his own hangar, so he took bids on his own, we're not building that hangar. He's just leasing the land. This is a different kind of a, a, a hangar build out. We've had these before. But it's got a 20 year lease for what? For 
He for the land underneath the hangar. For the land underneath the hangar. He owns the hangar. Supervisor Dowling. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, resolution 71 as well as 72, I'm really not on board with these. Um, one of the other things I learned during my airport tour was that the rate we're charging per square foot of land is 16 cents. That just seems very low to me and I cannot support this. Thank you. Supervisor Schellinger. Uh, supporting this resolution and the rate are two separate items. Again, section or chapter 21.05 of the county uh, ordinance is, is what governs what this rate is. This is whether or not we want to allow Felix Auto and Tire to, uh, to, cons to construct a private, private hangar. I think the option the, before the board really is, do you want to make revenue or do you want to have empty land sitting there that doesn't make any money? If we want to make more money, all it does is take any supervisor to bring forward a resolution changing 21.05, uh, which would increase what the uh, subsequent rents would be. Thank you. Supervisor Gabbert. Just a side note, Jim Shell is working on increases for the ordinance to bring before the county board. And Felix Auto and Tire already rents a hangar from us. They want a bigger hangar for their bigger airplane. So at least we'll get something off of this empty land and yes the ordinance changes are going to come before this board we know we're low so we're working on it but jim has started on it but this will lock us into 20 years at that rate no you can oh. raise you can raise it every year okay thank you supervisor Flom. just out of curiosity uh supervisor gabbard do you know what kind of aircraft we're bringing in i'm just kind of an aviation geek i don't but oh. it's big <laughs> It won't fit in the T hanger. <laughs> Not seeing anything else. Uh, majority present. So, resolution 7106 2022. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Nay. Carried. Resolution number 72 06 2022 approved ground lease between Yankee slash November LLC and Winnebago County. Supervisor Gabbert. I, promise this is the last one. Uh, I move for approval of resolution 72 06 2022. Second. Motion made and seconded. I don't see anybody with any questions. So, in the majority vote, all those in favor of resolution number 7206 2022 signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Nay. Carried. Resolution number 73 06 2022 authorize a capital project for the Winnebago County Information Systems Department to provide a redundant fiber loop and appropriate $75,000 for engineer costs for undesignated fund balance. Supervisor Gustafsson. Uh, right there it is. I move to approve resolution 7306-2022. Motion made and seconded. I don't see anyone on. So there's no one to ask questions. So all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Carried. Resolution 7406 2022 authorize an increase in shift premiums for highway employees performing night work on state highway systems to $12 per hour. Supervisor Albert. I move for resolution 7406 2022. Motions made and seconded. Do you want to tell them a little bit about that so they understand it, David? Pardon? Where that $12 was coming from? It's going to be paid from by the state. So it's not coming just out of us. The, the state's coming up with that. That's when they're on the state roads for a night shift. Supervisor Faria. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, being on the Highway Committee, I'm certainly going to support this, but I do have an objection to the process that was used, and I'll explain this to the board. The Highway Committee addressed this concern and voted by majority, no dissent, to approve $6 per hour. Then it gets sent to PNF. And it was amended. They're amending a committee's, uh, a committee's vote. The PNF is amending the highway committee's vote and raising it to $12 an hour. I don't object to the 12, but I do object to that process. That PNF has got too much power, and that needs to be reined in. You cannot overrule an existing committee. If you do, why even bring it to highway? We'll bring everything to PNF, right? You guys will have the show. So I think you did wrong, Mr. Chairman. I ask you to not do that again. You do not have that authority, sir. That's my little spiel. That's the one, the other one I talked about previously that I had major concerns about, and this is it. So I will support it, but hopefully you don't do that again. In fact, let me go a little farther. I would ask court counsel to look into that process and see if that committee has that authority and give us a report back if you would. Thank you. Supervisor Flom. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I will be supporting this resolution in light of what happened uh, on Highway 45 uh, the other day. And uh, this is, these are not easy jobs and whatnot, and we're losing staff. So I think this is appropriate and germane, and uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Supervisor Bender. I would just like to say I, I'm going to be supporting it too. Most of our counties surrounding us pay time and a half for night work. So basically, when I worked for the highway department eight years ago, I got time and a half. When Act 10 came, they took it away. So when I worked for the highway department, I was making $22 an hour at that time, so I, I was getting $33 an hour. These guys were getting $2 an hour for working nights. And then they were going to make it $6 an hour. Well, the counterparts in Audi Gaming are getting time and a half. Why, why don't we have any workers? Because we don't take care of them. You know, the state's paying for this. You know, our computer system supposedly won't put time and a half in. It used to be anything outside your normal work hours, which in the, in the winter is 7 to 3, and in the, the summer is six to four was time and a half. Now, when these guys plow snow in, in the winter and they call them in at 12.30, they get straight time till seven o'clock. You know, so they gave up a whole night's sleep, ran that snow plow all night for straight time. Other counties get time and a half, but our computer system supposedly doesn't work that way. You know, if, if we're going to keep our employees, we need to take care of our employees. And I apologize for maybe not doing it the right way, but I, I'm just, I see these em employees getting what I think is, is mistreated. Basically, eight years ago, I got time and a half for doing this work, and now we're going to give them $2. You know, it's a slap in the face. And we need to take care of these people if we want them to continue to work for us. And if we don't want any employees, just keep on doing what we're doing, because they'll keep leaving. Mr. Benner, the proper procedure is to approve or disapprove the Highway Committee's recommendation. You make your amendments on the floor tonight. And we got not, stuff to learn there. Uh, you know, like we got a new chairman. If, if Joe was there, he may have known that. But you know, uh, we're, we're doing I, Supervisor Gabbard. Overstepping our boundaries, but I, I think these guys deserve this, huh. and I, I, I really just think. Brenda Graymar, just Supervisor Gabbard. Oh boy. Yeah, but we have to explain it to the other. Supervisor Gabbard's got uh, the floor. Uh, I have a question for Bob Damo. <laughs> So the state is going to pay us for this. You have to track all this and send it in. Is that correct? Tell me the process that you go go through. The state is really us anyway, but whatever. So basically, this is going to be just for our night work, scheduled night work. Mm -hmm. um, everything that gets tracked is directly to the state of Wisconsin for this, for any and, of that work. And how soon do they pay you? Um, we just a monthly billing. Okay. Every month we submit bills to the DOT. Okay. So we pay and then we get reimbursed. Correct. Yes. Okay. That's yep. all I had. Thank you. Yep. Supervisor Hintz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, while we have you here, um, 
with what happened with the committees where it was at six and went to 12, I mean, is there a limit to what the state's going to cut us off on reimbursement? I'm just curious about that because. I mean, other counties are paying time and a half. Steve's exactly right. Other, you know, that was one of my first thoughts is, is to go time and a half. Um, like I said, there was rules we couldn't do that. So, you know, we came up with what was the best thing for $2. We, don't, we have a hard time finding people. Um, and, you know, I mean, exactly what Steve says. I mean, you know, we're, we're losing, we look, one week we lost two people um, a couple weeks ago. Um, we got a couple other that are, I'm assuming in the next couple weeks we're going to lose more people. Um, you know, this is something, you know, we don't schedule this night work all the time. This is probably three, four weeks out of the year that we're going to do this. Um, and instead of just assigning people, we will ask volunteers. Um, kind of gives us, uh, you know, instead of going in there and saying, hey, you will work. Um, most of the time it's, it's the, the new employees um, that end up, you know, getting assigned to this. Um, you know, this is one where, you know, what is the correct amount? You know, we didn't know, you know, I worked with Mike Collard with this. You know, what, from the $2, it wasn't enough. You know, we came up with the $6, you know, and, you know, next thing you know, it got amended. Um, but it was amended based upon it was equivalent to the time and a half. So I think this is, a, a, you know, for our crews, I mean, you know, uh, last week, Tuesday, I mean, when our crews are out there, I mean, I, I've, I've been on that crew with the concrete crew. It, it, it's not fun being out there on a center line of a highway um, with there. And I mean, you know, the little bit that these guys are going to get, you know, with this, I mean, we're still cheaper than the private sector to do this work. So, I mean, the, the DOT, I mean, we just had the DOT come to our highway committee this week and, uh, you know, they praise the work we do out there. Um, you know, when, you know, the blow ups with this heat, um, you know, a phone call, we're the easy button. We're, we're right there to get, uh, take care of the situations out there. So, I mean, uh, this still is not, going to break the bank out there. So still a, a good deal for the DOT and the uh, taxpayers for us to be out there. So, okay. Thank you. Supervisor Nussbaum. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I apologize to, um, I, if I would have thought of the, that amendment at highway, I would have brought it up, but I didn't think of it until P and F. So, and I didn't know, I didn't know it wasn't appropriate. Okay, so all those in favor of resolution number 7406-2022 signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Carried. Resolution number 7506-2022, vacating remnants parcels on County Highway P, which is in the city of Menasha. Supervisor Albert. Second. Supervisor Powers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was just—it says we're just vacating it. Are we selling it or just giving it away? And I was also wondering, did we pay anything for the Finch property that we got from DOT? The Finch Park. I mean, if we if we had to pay if we had to buy that from the DOT, it seems like we should be selling this instead of just vacating it. Um. This remnant was left over from when uh, the, new, the roundabout was constructed with this project. Um, basically what happened was there was a road shift. So this was a remnant from the road being shifted over. Um, typically in these situations like this, um, you know, it comes back to the county. When we look at it is, you know, how, how we're going to maintain it. Um, you know, it's, it's our property. We go look at this. Originally with this property, uh, they came forward and I believe there was like a, originally it was a, a, a mini or a, a strip mall that they were potentially looking at this. Um, so when we look at these, the landowner that is abutting this property pays for this, the certified survey map and all the legal description and it is just deeded back to them. Um, this property was deeded a quick claim deed but it was just never approved by the county board. 
So the quick claim deed has already been done. This is just the formality now of the county board approving this. Okay. Exactly. Yep, and that's all it. I mean, there is a, a potential. I mean, there's a, a potential owner that's going to come in here, and it sounds like it's kind of a done deal that um, as far as development, this parcel is getting no revenue back from the tax roll. By doing this, it's going to be put back on the tax roll. This property is going to be developed. Um, so it's a, okay. a good deal. All right. All those in favor of resolution number 7506 2022 signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Carried. Resolution number 7606 2022 request authority to enter into sponsorship contract with Cumulus Broadcasting. Supervisor Norton. Hey, Mr. Chairman, I move to adopt and the resolution. 0620222 request authority to enter into a sponsored contract with Cumulus Broadcasting. Uh, this is very basically it's the same contract. I think Adam told me it's sort of a five year to three year contract. Seconded, and I see no one with the light on, so all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Period. Resolution 7706 2022 authorized the Sheriff's Office to accept a donation valued at $14,700 for the purchase of an additional K9 unit along with equipment and training for the unit from Thomas and Penny Herrenberg. Uh, Supervisor Safford. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move uh, for passage of resolution. 77-062022. Uh, Motion made and seconded. Supervisor Swan. Yeah, just one comment on, on this. Uh, I had a discussion regarding this resolution. And I, I, how much does it cost us to accept donations like this um, from private parties? Wait a minute. I am I am on the wrong resolution for that question. Okay, I withdraw. Okay, not seeing any other questions. All those in favor of resolution seventy-seven zero six twenty twenty-two signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Carried. Resolution number 7806 2022 authorizes the Sheriff's Office to accept a donation of one fire technology knockout fire suspension tool valued at $1,041 from the Oshkosh chapter of the Wisconsin Freemasons. Supervisor Stafford. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I move for the passage of resolution 78 062022. Second. Made and seconded. Supervisor Swan. This is the resolution where if we accept a donation, does it cost us more to accept the donation than the acceptance of it itself? You're going to come up here, Sheriff Motz. Question is, does it cost more to accept it than donation? No, it, it doesn't cost anything to accept it. It just goes through committee then goes through uh, PNF. That's a process that's hopefully being worked out soon because when you look at, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, we're gonna hold a committee meeting to accept money. Right. Uh, are we just spending money to accept money? But in this case, there are other things on the agenda. So no, it costs nothing. Okay, thank you. Seeing no other questions, all those in favor of 7806-2022 signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Resolution number 7906 2022 request sheriff to read the declaration of independence on the courthouse steps on July 4th of each year. Supervisor Stafford. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move for passage of resolution 79-062022. Motion made and seconded. Supervisor Powers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the last couple of years, um, Supervisor Wingren, out of his own pocket, bought a, several dozen, I don't remember how many, uh, little American flags that, we, that I've handed out 
for him, um, for people who gathered for this. Um, would it be possible for, I don't know how to do this, is it possible to add um, a small outlay of money to, to purchase handheld American flags for people who show up for this? Um, what? You've got requests all over, so um, He's Mr. Voluntary. Robinson You'll said buy that he would take care of it, so if you want to talk to him. Thank you. Okay. There you go. So you two I would together. also encourage, Thank you. I would encourage as many, <laughs> I would encourage as many, as many supervisors as possibly can to go to this. It's, it's a fun event and people stand around and, and listening to the sheriff read the declaration, it's a great way to start the 4th of July. Supervisor Gabbert. Just a little light and fluffy. Um, Bill Wengren was a good friend of mine besides a colleague. Got a letter from a relative. Would we be sure that we make this happen every year in memory of Bill Wengren? I called Sheriff Motz to ask if he would read it again this year, and he told me he'd read it as long as he's sheriff. I called Executive Damel, and he said, we're working on something with judiciary. So I appreciate the fact that you brought this forward in memory of Bill Wengren. And I was going to buy the flags, but I'll let you do it this year. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll catch it next year. So thank you, everybody. All those in favor of Resolution 7906-2022, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Carried. Resolution number 8006-2022, urging state elected officials to use anticipated 2021-2023 budget surplus to fund rural fire and ambulance emergency services. Uh, Vice Chairman Fari. Thank you, Mr. Uh, here we go. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move for approval of Resolution 8006-2022. Motion made and seconded. Is there any questions about this? I think this came from, uh, was it Polk County? Do you remember? And we got one right now. Supervisor uh, Defferding. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm, uh, um, uh, I'm going to be voting against this simply because I'm a little concerned about uh, setting the precedent that uh, you know local rural f uh, fire and ambulance emergency services would then have to be dependent on the state. That's all, thank you. Supervisor Wise. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I also support this, uh, Supervisor Deverding, uh, the same, same way. I will not support this because I'm concerned about what's going to happen after the money is spent out of the, uh, uh, the 3.8 billion or whatever it is there and what's gonna happen in the future years. I will not be supporting it. Supervisor Miller. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I also will be voting against this. Uh, I think it's a very worthwhile cause. However, I want to caution everybody that the state works on a two-year budget, and there's still a year left. There's no guarantee there's going to be this kind of a surplus, especially with the, uh, with the way energy prices are going up. Um, that's a killer for an economy. So there's no guarantee there's going to be a surplus. Um, and also, this type of spending, if there is a surplus, it means that the state overtaxed people. And that money needs to go back to the people. If you want this kind of funding, it should go this, through the state budgeting process. You know, it's not something that should be divvied out when they overtax. That's additional spending for the state. It needs to go through the state budgeting process. So I'll be voting against this as well. Thank you. Supervisor Powers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I appreciate the, the um, comments made about why they would prefer not to do this because it doesn't have legs. But if they get a year of funding, and that's you know a year of houses that don't burn down and a year of grandmas that make it to the hospital in time to save her life in an ambulance, so it doesn't, so it doesn't last forever. I think it's important if there's money that it could be going for that. I'm gonna vote for it. Supervisor Dowling. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I request a roll call vote. Supervisor Nelson. Yeah, having served 20 years on a volunteer fire department myself and 
living in Winnie County where we don't have paid fire departments like you have in Oshkosh, we're kind of desperate for any funding we can get. I mean, we can only take brat fries and, and chicken fun night just so far, and I guess I'm shocked that there's going to be people voting against this. This isn't a guarantee. This is just, hey, let's think about us a little bit. Um, we've got rescue boats all paid for in Oshkosh and Nina. We only got half a boat in Winnie County. Um, we got a heck of a lot of water there too. So um, I'm certainly going to support it and I'm surprised that it's not totally supported. Thank you. Vice Chairman Fiery. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, let me explain a little bit. This comes from a rural county uh, and it was uh, supported at the legislative committee in this county to bring it forward. What we're talking about is funding for rural towns, town uh, that are strapped for funds. I mean, all of them don't have net new construction. They're, they're rural. They don't have a lot of extra revenue. So when it comes to buying new fire trucks, supporting their fire departments, they are seeking more revenue. The governor sitting down here with $3.8 billion, the towns of this state are simply saying, hey, give us a few bucks to help us with our fire department. That's what it's all about. And, and I really think it's a very warranted request. I mean, it's... You know, if he's got all that money to throw around, help the towns out a little bit so they can uh, provide a little more for the fire department. Thank you. Okay, we'll do a roll call vote here. So, Supervisor Youngquist? Aye. Supervisor Gordon? Aye. I wanted to do this because I heard a comment that, well, just because he's the chair, well, this isn't why I was doing this. This started out back when uh, we went and had the pandemic or whatever, and so we went down and we, we didn't, um, we went on Zoom and everything else, uh, so you didn't have to be in your chairs and all this and that to vote. And I'm, first off, I don't want to take anything away from anybody. The only thing, every time I come and I sign everyone's papers, you are uh, getting paid by the county and you are, so that means that you're a member of the staff of the county. And I know some of you say, well, how come this one or that one didn't work before? Not necessarily you ones that were uh, elected in April, but the ones before said, well, how come this one isn't at work? How come that one isn't at work? I'm not saying that you shouldn't be able to still uh, come on Zoom and all this and that and pay, take part in the meeting. But what I am asking uh, of myself, as Supervisor District 33, I think in order to make your votes count that you should be, have to be set in your seats, your permanent seats that you all, all have. And I just, that's just my whole feelings. And it's right in the book here from before the pandemic started. It read, it was 11.16, uh, all votes cast shall be cast only if the supervisor is present at his or her desk. So it was one until this come out. I can't say, I'm not saying. How any of you believe, if you believe the pandemic's gone, whether you got your shots, you didn't get your shots or anything like that, I'm just, I'm not gonna hold up the whole night and, and debate it neither, but I, that's just how I personally feel, is that it's time that we get back to somewhat order here and that that's one of the things that we should do for those of all the people that's put us in these seats. They put us in these seats to go ahead and vote and to do that. 
And so. Time, I want to read approval of the resolution. Yes, I suppose I should have done that first. Um, it was re resolution number 8106 2022, amend rule 11.6 and 9.15 of the Winnebago County Board of Supervisors to require the physical presence of supervisors in officially designated county board committees meetings physical space to cast votes. Second. Now, Second. You, you heard my big speech already, so I don't have to go into that. I believe Mr. Fari wants to come down here now. Yeah, and then turn me on, so I, uh, I think you are on to call for a different one here. You'll know shortly why. <laughs> Vice Chair, well, let's see, we've got some other ones here first. Supervisor Powers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I like actually being, in, being present to vote, but I recognize that there, that may not always be possible. Um, I remember when Supervisor Norton had a, I don't remember the whole story, he had a horrible accident, shattered his leg. He was at, at Parkview for quite a while recuperating. The nurses were pushing him to, around to, to get to meetings. Uh, remotely. I'm glad it was available for him. He couldn't get out. He could not come to a meeting and he wanted to participate. Um, if we had not been able to do this during the pandemic, we would have had two years of, the, of no business being done um, on the county level. And June 11th of 2004, there was a big flood in, in Oshkosh. My daughter was like an island surrounded by water, nine months pregnant. I was freaking out. Four days later, fortunately, the baby came and the waters had receded, but there are times when, when you just can't make it here. Ideally, yeah, we should be here in our seats and making our votes, but there are, and I understand we've always had a thing, if you, if you have a telephone, if it's a telephone, we were never able to vote. If you can see a person's face on Zoom or whatever, we're use, whatever mechanism we're using, if they just can't get here, I think we should still allow those people to vote. The other thing is if they, if they are, coming in remotely and they're listed as present but then they don't but then they can't vote then all their votes then all of them turn out to be a no vote you may not want them to be a no vote so I'm against this for all those reasons Supervisor Plum. Thank you Mr. Chairman uh, I want to commend you for presenting this resolution to the county board we have a problem in my opinion with absentee government uh, you see it on the House level. You still have dozens of members of the United States House taking votes by proxy, my mic's not on, while still making a six-figure salary. And I understand that that's not the case here, but like you said, you got those signatures to show up, to make your $75, and to sit down and take your votes. I understand that there may be some situations that, you know, people may not be able to make it or whatnot. But at the same time, the measures put in during the pandemic were meant to be temporary. And largely, for most people, the pandemic is over. So I support that for this reason. Uh, I do think it does need to end somewhere. Where do you draw the line? And that's why I support it today, sir. Thank you. Supervisor Norton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, in line 22, you say there's been significant controversy. Is that what you just, the controversy we're referring to is what you just stated to us? Which controversy? Well, you said, you, you say in 20, line 22, um, this, this has created significant controversy. You're letting people um, um, participate remotely. Is that is that what you're alluding? I, what you're alluding to is what you talked to to I us just before. I don't think I said that, or if I did, I it, well, well that then good. I email. Let me ask you, what's the controversy over the change? Because I, you know, supervisor power is kind of so some my thunder. But you're right. When I had my broken ankle. Um, a couple of years ago, I tell you, I was all for remote option before we became popular because um, I could not participate. I could participate over the phone, but the Corporation Council said I could not vote. So I could talk on the phone to at the Human Services Board meeting or the ADRs meeting, but I could not vote. And I thought that was kind of wrong. And the reason, the reason I think it's kind of wrong, Mr. Chairman, why I think this should be defeated, I'm in the Housing Authority. At the Housing Authority, we had this for a couple of years. Me and Supervisor Keller were at a NACO conference, and we couldn't make, obviously we couldn't come to Washington, D.C. We participated over the phone remotely. You know, I was able to participate fully remotely at my, my, my system, recuperating from the ankle injury. So 
I don't think, unless you have not told me a specific controversy, is there some incon inconveniences? Yes. I mean, I think at best, and I talked to a couple of people about this, if the problem is maybe noise or whatever, maybe we could look at maybe uh, tighten up the rules that maybe people should be at their iPad or computer and should be in a quiet spot all to themselves. But I don't see the kind of controversy. You know, Supervisor Reform said it correct. Congress does this all the time. They do it not just in the House of Representatives, they also do it at committee meetings. I don't see what's a big, if it's not a big problem for them, why is it a big problem with us? I ask you to please defeat this resolution. I will answer your question if you're asking that of me. Yeah. There's nothing worse when you're sitting at the iPad, of course I don't have that one here now, but when I was, and you see someone going by with their animals, or you see someone get up and get a sandwich and they're eating on their sandwich or taking a drink when you're sitting there, we're supposed to be professionals in then, these meetings. Uh, let me finish. Okay, we're what? supposed to be professionals in these meetings. And we get paid to be professionals in these meetings. I totally agree. Then why don't we tighten up the rules and say that? You don't well, do that. You want to cut out totally. That's where I have a problem with. Okay. Um, let's see. Supervisor Zelmer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And all due respect to you, Mr. Egan, I do believe we should reject this resolution. Um, I believe it's authoritarian on your part. Uh, we as supervisors need the option of virtual in case we, for some reason, can't physically be here. That's another option that we have. It's, it's the modern times right now, so please vote no. Thank you. And just so you know, Supervisor Zelmer, that's why I stepped down. I didn't want him to think that it was because of the chair. I stepped down there to have it done that way. Check. Supervisor Swan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Personally, my, <clears throat> my heart says I agree with you, and I want to try and be here in person as much as I can possibly be. I know that's what I'm going to do, being elected this April, um, representing my district. I'm going to try to be here in person, but you know, it may not be a pandemic. It may be something else where, where maybe the entire board can't meet. What if we're on complete lockdown for whatever reason? As a city, as a country even. It can be changed and just like we did with the pandemic, that's how this got started. Okay. It can be changed. So you're saying let's get rid of it and then we may need to bring it back in. No, what I said is maybe we should move on, but that's just me now. I just, that was a personal one. As you notice, I didn't even ask oh, anybody I, else. I'm to totally move with you in terms of moving on. I agree with you. Okay. It's just, you know, I understand. Maybe we so. need a stop gap where people just absolutely can't be at a meeting. I don't think their vote should be, should be taken away from them just for that. Well, I had a stroke here last fall and then I got COVID and I couldn't even tell you what I voted on, but I was sitting in on the meetings and I was voting. Okay. Okay. All right. I just Supervisor Gustafson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I will be voting in favor of this resolution. I think when running for office, running for this position, we had to stop and evaluate, are we going to prioritize this office that we're elected to if, if elected? And so I understand, I mean, Th there's circumstances that come up, but ultimately when we run, you should be at full force trying to get to every single meeting that you can in person and be voting in person because that's what you're elected to do by your constituents. Thank you very much. Vice Chairman Fari. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And obviously Tom and I have talked and uh, I've known Tom for 16 years now. Great respect for Tom. He's a good man. But on this issue, I must disagree. Zoom works. Starting in 2020, we had to use it because of COVID, quarantines, the danger of picking up the disease. So now that is somewhat alleviated. However, the system that we have become accustomed to works very well. Tonight, as we sit here, I believe we have two people on Zoom. Am I correct? Yes. Uh, a member of my committee on land conservation, 
attends almost every meeting we have by Zoom. She has, uh, and she's a, a great member of the committee, uh, but she has uh, issues, work issues and that, but she still takes time from work to attend using Zoom. It works well. So I, I would ask you not to support Tom's resolution. I, I'm going to vote against it. And I remind you that we all sit here tonight well, uh, not ill, but we don't know what next month's going to bring. And we don't know what could happen to any one of us at any given time. Having the option to attend the meeting by Zoom, representing your district, and casting votes, and sometimes they're very important votes, such as the vote tonight uh, that uh, created this new position. I mean, I, I certainly would hate to be home sick or ill and not be able to vote for that. It's critical sometimes that you have that option. So I would agree if it's abused, uh, maybe we should look at it, but right now I, I just can't support this. So uh, I won't be voting for it either. Thank you. Supervisor Zestirio. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I will be supporting uh, this resolution. Um, I think that if I were to miss a meeting, I would be okay forfeiting my vote. I think it's important to be in my seat. It's reasonable service. Um, I did not uh, ask my constituents to vote for me. Um, not intending to be present and accounted for. I think this is a, a very good resolution and I, again, will be supporting it. Thank you. Supervisor Hintz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I have a question for you. Um, um, I have a question for you and I was wondering if we do, pay, if we were to pass this today, um, would we have the ability to suspend the, this particular rule for extenuating circumstances as, as has been discussed here? Yes, you could. That's, like I said, that's just like what we did with the pandemic. That's where these all come into play. And that's where it come in. And, you know, at one time we didn't even have the meetings here. It was just before uh, April election that we just had our first meeting back here. Otherwise, we were going to the uh, fairgrounds, expo center, and this and that. We didn't have them. a lot of them were on Zoom at that time. So it already was starting. Mm -hmm. So yes, and if the pandemic comes back or some polio or whatever, if anything major happens, a flood or whatever that some of you have said, yes, there's no reason that it can't be. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Supervisor Challenger. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I feel uh, feel very pulled by this by this resolution. I think like on the one hand, we need our full board participating for a lot of important discussions. Uh, um, although it seems less and less anymore, uh, it used to be that a lot of our major projects, our capital projects, required three quarters of the membership, uh, and so losing one or two people, or as 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 uh, I think we've seen, you know, over the last decade, sometimes it'd be normal to have three, four, five people who are who are absent from a meeting, and sometimes that can make it difficult uh, for this for this board to. To, to address all the types of resolutions um, uh, that come that come before it, but I also think we need functioning meetings. And while Zoom gives us some connection points and brings some things together, it also wasn't the easiest to participate and have robust conversations. Uh, I think it was necessary, but I do think that you know it elongated the meetings. It made for uh, you know made for situations where I think it was harder for supervisors to really listen uh, and hear what others were saying. I think it um, you know and and so I would worry that if we uh, you know I I I, I would I would worry if we were seeing nine, ten, fifteen supervisors at our at our county board meetings participating remotely. Um, uh, and I guess what I'm gonna, what I, where I'm kind of getting at is I kind of feel like for the for our board meetings as a whole, it is very helpful to have people in this space. It facilitates a speedier meeting. I think in many in many cases, uh, every time you've called for a vote, it has taken a little extra time to get the to get two people on Zoom. Um, but what I am concerned about is is how it comes down to our committee meetings. 
Um, and uh, I think this board, I think the folks on this board in particular have been very, uh, very diligent about attending their meetings um, and things like that. But I also know that part of that has been aided by, by the ability to participate remotely. I think often in those generally five person um, spaces, facilitating discussion and uh, and keeping people talking to each other is, is a little bit easier than in the, in the larger setting. I certainly share the concerns about what it looks like to have uh, a meeting of mostly people on Zoom and you know doesn't look much different than if we were hanging out watching the football game on, on Zoom or something like that. Um, so I'm hope, I was hoping more people would chime in uh, <laughs> uh, and, and we could continue this conversation. I still, feel, I still feel like I'm unsure about which direction to go on this. Thank you. Supervisor Dowling. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, if we would have been talking about this a week and a half ago, I would have probably voted against it. However, I recently attended in person the judiciary meeting where a supervisor tried to tune in via Zoom, and it was horrible. Um, we got about every other word. The supervisor couldn't hear us to talk. They were in the car during the time. Um, so they weren't devoted to the meeting. And I worry about that in the future. I appreciate the supervisors that are on Zoom tonight um, and how great this has gone so far, but that's not the case for every meeting. Um, having a uh, autoimmune disease myself, I kind of worry about this, um, not being able to attend via Zoom. However, on days when we do have meetings, I take extra steps to make sure I'm ready to be here. So for example, I didn't cook dinner for my kids tonight, I ordered pizzas. Um, <laughs> just to make sure I would be able to function. I'm not doing great right now, but I'm here. Um, and the last thing I'd like to request is a roll call vote. Thank you. Uh, Supervisor, Supervisor Powers, can you shut your light off? Okay. Supervisor Stafford. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I would actually like to comment um, on the last two uh, comments around committees. And uh, I will say from my experience, actually, as uh, Supervisor Dowling mentioned, um, it's a little, it can be a little challenging in a small group uh, managing committees when you have that technology issue. You know, here you have people who can handle technology and help you with votes and everything else, but when you're managing a small committee, you're the person. So you have a lot of things that you have to kind of manage. And especially in my case, I'll just say in my case for JPS. So I actually would appreciate um, this type of rule. I am gonna be supporting it um, for that reason, because I think when it is remote, in the case that we had, we had a supervisor call in, he was in a car, he wasn't driving, so that's good. But he was in a car, and it was extremely disruptive. You, you really couldn't have the conversation. He couldn't hear you. Um, you couldn't interact. And it, just, it, it was very challenging and, and very disrupting to the conversation itself. And um, I've noticed that a few times just as, even as a committee member. Um, and the other thing is this doesn't preclude someone from participating in the meeting. So you could still call in, listen, as uh, Supervisor Eisen did, you know, point of privilege. You still have those options to get your voice heard. But I do think there is a, a certain level of expectation when you do vote that you have deliberated and been able to benefit from the conversation. And I believe it's really difficult to do so remotely. And there is also the option of suspending rules. It's within the county board rules that we can suspend. So if there is another issue, you know, I think most experts now are kind of seeing that we're, we're moving from the pandemic to an endemic. Um, and, and so hopefully that's a, a good sign, but who knows? Who knows what's gonna happen in the future? But we have that option and we have options. But at the same time, we now have to get to a point where we have to be focusing back less so on ourselves and more so on those that we represent. 
and what is in the best interest of every single citizen of Winnebago County and how we can help them. And I do believe that this is one thing that we, one small thing that we can do and, and recommit ourselves in, in doing. So from a committee point of view, I think it'd be a good thing. And from a board perspective, I think it would be a good thing. Thank you. <laughs> Supervisor Gordon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I did want to point out that we are still in a pandemic. Um, my last notification email from the Winnebago County Health Department informed me that there's an 11.9% positivity rate in the county. That means that yes, COVID is still there. I, for one, take a medication that could make catching COVID extremely hazardous for myself. If the level goes down below 3%, I'll be happy to be in my seat. But until then, I really do need to attend via Zoom. So I, I don't understand why you feel that by participating via Zoom, you aren't involved in the meeting. I hear every conversation except when the mics went out. There's no reason why we can't attend remotely. I will be voting no. Thank you. Vice Chairman Fari. Uh, I, I just had a comment on uh, Supervisor Stafford's. Uh, this phone call that you got from a person that was in the car, you, was that a Zoom issue or a telephone issue? Because obviously, I, I believe Corp Council's ruled you have to have visual and auto to, to vote. It was. So the person wasn't voting, they were just commenting. Was. I mean, you're using that for an example of why we shouldn't support this, but I'm, I'm, I don't think it's a Zoom issue that you're referring to. I think it's simply an issue of a conversation over a phone. And the person happened to be in the car when they were calling. Right, this person was attempting to vote and after the fact wanted to change the record of a vote record where we couldn't hear him. And I would say that the issue was technology in, in nature. So it was Zoom, but in order for you to use Zoom remotely, you have to have some sort of coverage, either Wi-Fi or mobile. At times, but not, they would come in and it would knock out come back in, knock out. But the way that we have it presented now, I think this would help clear that up. Supervisor Horan. I, I would just like to say that we have become extremely dependent upon our devices. Zoom being one of those things. I was at a swimming pool the other day, watched teenagers. They played in the pool when they got out and sat down to have something to drink. Every one of them sitting at the same table were on their devices. I believe we depend upon our devices too much and it causes us to become isolated. I am going to be voting for this. I like seeing the people who are around me. I like to see the expression on their face. I like to see them without a mask on. I am delighted to sit next to two striking men who are different than my husband. You're, all I can see is the back of your head, Brian. So I will be voting for this. Okay. Not seeing anything, uh, this will take a two-thirds because there'll be a change in the rules. So it'll be take a two-thirds vote. So Does it have we are ready to you? vote. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Two-thirds, just take a two-thirds vote because we'll be changing a, a rule. So uh, as soon as Sue's ready, we can vote. So if you're in favor of the resolution, you push A. If you're not, you push nay. Supervisor Gordon? Nay. Supervisor Youngwest? Aye. Passes. Okay. 
And last one is 8206-2022, requesting the state of Wisconsin revise the current real estate ta uh, transfer fee revenue sharing formula. Uh, this one is by Legislative Supervisor Fari, Vice Chairman Fari. I'm sorry. Resolution for this <laughs> evening. Uh, once again, this is a re resolutions that were brought forward by rural counties. Uh, they're simply seeking a uh, better cut on the revenue that is sent to the state of, of Wisconsin. And this deals with real estate transfer fees. As the document reads, uh, years ago, they used to collect half of the fees. Now they take 80% leaving only 20% to the counties. So uh, this resolution basically says that the legislature should review that and revert it back to the 50-50 split, giving the rural counties more revenue. I'll, I'll, I move for approval of 8206-2022. Excuse me. Motion made and seconded. I don't feel bad now. Well, ahead of it. Supervisor Challenger. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just I believe that this should be a majority vote. I I could be wrong, but when I when I tried to look it up, I didn't see any pending res uh, pending legislation. I saw some that had been closed out. I could be wrong, uh, but that was what I what I saw. Seven point seven. It says any resolution that is presented for the purpose of expressing support, opposition, or the desire for the initiation of any state or federal legislation shall require a three-quarters vote of those members present for passage. During the last term, the word desire was put in for this very purpose. Okay. And the, the, uh, so that so can you uh, well I don't want to belabor the point I'll talk to you later thank you Supervisor Flom thank you Mr Chairman um, I just kind of want to give some background about this we got a bunch of resolutions from I think it was one was Jefferson County and a couple other counties it's late I don't remember exactly which ones uh, but we decided to go with the one from Jefferson County at JPS given that that was the county that was closest in size to ours. Um, and I don't quite know the history of the reasoning behind why this was changed in 81. I asked corporate counsel, and I don't know if you haven't, if you found an answer on that, um, but if you did, is there any reasoning as to why the state changed it? Was it just pure money grab or whatnot? I know I asked you at JPS. Sorry if you don't have an updated answer. I'll be honest with you. I know that was a three and a half or four hour meeting, and I do not remember you asking me that, but I do know that it came in as the last item on the agenda. Um, I did speak with Natalie Strohmeyer, um, and she gave me some information. Uh, it says when the, but again, it, it really wasn't substantive. She did say the Wisconsin Register of Deeds Association will maintain a neutral position regarding these resolutions. Mm -hmm. So I don't have an answer for sure. you. Sure. Yeah. Okay. No worries, thanks. Supervisor Stafford. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Just to elaborate on uh, the comment from uh, Natalie Strohmeyer, who I also had a conversation with, um, she had just cautioned us uh, in consideration of this as the reason why the Association for uh, Registrars are looking at this in a neutral uh, way is because they are concerned that if the state opens this up again, that that will actually um, have a broader conversation of, well, maybe it should be a, a even better split for the state. So her point is, is that it's a double-edged sword. We bring up this conversation, yeah, okay, we want the 50 and 50, um, but that doesn't mean that's where we're gonna end and we could actually end in, in, in less favorable terms than we are now, um, and that there's more risk than reward, especially for counties of our size. Um, the smaller counties who are looking for any way to uh, generate revenue, that's a different situation. Uh, we're in a different situation. Um, and the other piece is 
um, we are kind of um, hamstrung a little bit on what we can and cannot um, uh, charge for and this would also bring up some complexities in this this new split so there are a lot of questions and a lot of desire I think on on her side to tread carefully with this one and uh, unfortunately she she wanted to come tonight and she couldn't uh, to speak on this matter but uh, I said that I would uh, relate that and because of that conversation uh, originally I did vote for this uh, at JPS but because of that conversation I am actually going to vote against it at least for now thank you not seeing anything else Two, th three, fours, three, fours votes we have to have, so we'll have to vote. <laughs> Supervisor Youngquist? Aye. Supervisor Gordon? Aye. And it failed. 25 9, 2 abstain. All right. Okay, Chairman Albrecht. Three quarters. So it failed. Chairman Albrecht. I hope we stop breaking records when I move to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> Do I get two per diems now? You'll get two per diems tonight, folks, so put them on if you want. We'll, we'll give them to the county executive. <laughs> All those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, thank you much. But you do get two pre-DMs. Just put on.